All right, here we go. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Let's get this started. Sorry about that. Wait, guys. Uh, started it as soon as I could. Okay. Let me pop out this chat. And I almost canceled this, not because I was running late, but I just was, I was just getting a migraine, man. I just took some ibuprofen, though, so should be good. Should be good here. How's everyone doing today? All right. Ah, whoa, all right, what is up with this here? Uh, sorry, guys, I'm not risking it. I am putting on the shades to prevent, at least till this migraine settles down. And yeah, so don't worry, I'm not being a goofball wearing sunglasses at night. I'm not trying to get this migraine any worse. All right. Uh, Frank Warren, Larry Liston, salute. My man, what's going on? So Frank Warren just stated that he's in doubt if Dillian will even show up for the fight. <clears throat> Fury may have to face another opponent as a result of a breached contract. Maybe Otto Waylin, Alanius, Joyce. Wow, is the people they mentioned. Wow, fuck. Oh, man. That, dude, look, Hearn, I get it. You're mad. You're mad you lost the purse bid. You weren't expecting it. You weren't expecting it. You wanted to have control, you know, possibly get that belt back and give it to AJ. But come on, man. You're not screwing over Aram or Warren. You're screwing over us, the fight fans. That's who Hearn is screwing over, us. Come on, man. Suffice says, apparently Canelo declined a catchweight and rehydration clause against Bivol. Think it's just publicity. Who would have offered it? Who would have? Uh, Bivol is going to be like, hey, man, I'd really like to do a catchweight and a rehydration clause. Uh, who would have offered it? Who? Like, what? That don't even make sense. So, no, I think that's bullshit, Suffice. I think that's bullshit. What up, Tony? Salute, my man. So much respect. Thunderdome in the chat. Stopped in to show support and hit the like button. Salute. Yeah, hit the likes, guys. Hit the likes. That'll be what's up. I appreciate it. Get them likes up. MMA, what's going on, man? What's this? <laughs> ODBC's having a marathon today, hating on Jermel, calling him a coon. Because he said they hate him in his interview with ES. What? what? Uh, them fucking people are mental, man. They are mental. What's that, Hawker? You start getting a migraine every time you have to debate some liberals. Oh, Jesus. Uh... There's no reason for my. I was just doing so great, like the last, you know, six months or whatever. And I talked about it on here, how I wasn't getting uh, migraines. Boom. Then they came right back. And remember, I was talking about how all of a sudden, you know, like in your dreams, you punch, like, ah, oh. I was talking about how I now like hit like hard in my dreams. Well, I've had like four dreams since that. I just had one the other day where I was. Punching like a little bitch again, man. <laughs> it's like I gotta start stop talking about things I don't wish to become a reality on here, man. Oh, jeez. And yo, um, fight film precise. Are you listening? If so, let me know, please. I gotta ask you a question. What up, Paja? Rapax, Nordic, God bless. Yeah, that's what I got to ask. I got to ask Nordic about that video that Paja found. The Cunningham, Nazim cheating video. Paja says he found it. But I got to, I just got to ask um, Precise if it's okay if I uh, upload it. You're still a blue wrench over there. <laughs> yeah, for real, Aldo. Um, hasn't been quite five years, I don't think. Well... I haven't watched one of their videos since 2018. So, yeah. 18, 19, 20. It's four years, you know, about four years for me. 
I haven't watched shit to do with them. I might watch, I've watched like five minutes, like five times. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, wow, though, man. Yo, Fury and White, that fight better not fall through. Oh, oh man. Because I'm really interested in seeing Fury against a legit top 10 heavyweight outside of Klitschko and Wilder. The dude ain't fought nobody. You know, I'd like to see him actually stack up some names. And then with Aram talking about after this fight, because, you know, if he doesn't get AJ or Usyk, there's a very good chance he retires. And I don't think he wants Usyk. I think he wants only AJ. You know, I'm thinking, I think, well, I know he's hoping AJ wins. <clears throat> then him and AJ can fight for Undisputed in England, and then he would retire. So if Usyk wins, this is probably going to be the last fight we fucking see of the dude. Or, you know, not probably, but maybe like 50-50 that we see of Fury. So if there's a chance that this is going to be his last fight, I would like for it to be somebody solid. Now, Joyce, hey, if Joyce steps in, I'm happy with that too. I'm happy with Joyce. I, I'd actually probably prefer, I would prefer Joyce over White. But I don't want to see the Waylon um, rematch. So I, I get it. He gave Fury a tough fight last time, but I'm not interested in seeing it. Waylon ain't looked good. Um, you know, since then, it was kind of his Buster Douglas moment, I guess. Unless he just lines up good with Fury. Who knows, right? Um, and who else? Hellenius. I ain't trying to see Hellenius. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, gotcha, Tony. Gotcha, gotcha. What happened to White? Says Chain with Ice. Uh, well, apparently, Aram and Frank Warren aren't sure that he's even going to show up for the fight with Fury. They're thinking he might breach the contract. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is it, Alonzo, right here. So, so Parker, Ruiz, Wilder, White, you know, all not fighting anyone, just taking time off. No, looks like they will all fight bums in their comeback. Yeah, probably. It's pronounced with a V. Sound like Vladimir, Vladimir. What? Yeah, <clears throat> I I agree, Boogie. I would. Uh, he goes. Boogie says I'd rather see Joe Joyce go in there and fight against Tyson Fury. That would be a good fight. Yeah, I'd much rather see Joe Joyce too. Plus. You know, Joe Joyce deserves a big fight. You know, he deserves a big fight, not just to go in there and beat up on some fucking top 25 type guy. No, he, he deserves a title shot as far as I'm concerned. We know he's one of the top, you know, what, five, six heavyweights in the world? Shit, as far as I'm concerned, he deserves it more than White. Now, I get it, White got, like, you know, legally he deserves it through the Mando with the WBC, but on a purely, you know, skill wise, it's Joyce. Yeah, he didn't show up for the press conference. Yeah, I know that. And, and <clears throat> you know, that was just Harn being a dick again, being bitter that he lost the press conference. So he, you know, told White don't show up. And his excuse was, well, White isn't going to make any more money for the fight uh, by showing up to these press conferences. So, you know, so screw the fans, right? Screw the fans because he ain't going to make any more money. I mean, he's getting eight fucking million dollars. I think that's plenty. You could show up for one hour and give us a little entertainment. Not, not that I'm paying a dollar for the fight anyway, but still. <laughs> Didn't yeah, yeah. Joyce is up there in age too, man. He's up there in age. 36 years old, which is crazy, right? At least he's a heavyweight, though, because heavyweights have a, a longer shelf life. But he's past his prime, unfortunately. Physical prime. You know, mentally, he's probably the best he's ever been, but you know, physicality, yeah, he's he's up there, man. 
<laughs> White should get 500K and Fury 3 million. I agree with that. Yeah. Screw this 8 million and 23 or 28, whatever it was, million. That's just nuts, man. Nuts. Doesn't even – it doesn't even compute. Like, how are these guys getting that, uh, you know – when again, this this would be his what set third legit opponent, and is how how legit was Wilder anyway, right? How how can I? It's hard for me to even call legit or Wilder legit when for years I was you know saying what a scrub he is, and he was. It was proven. You know we were all right about that one. It wasn't hard to see. I mean, you just watch the guy box when you're getting outboxed by fucking C level guys. And losing round after round after round. Yeah, you're a fucking scrub. So, you know, what was that even a legit um, opponent that Fury beat? Just because Fury went life and death with him twice doesn't mean Wilder was the shit. It's a, it's just means Fury probably ain't as good as people think he is. Hey, what up, monkey? Salute, my man. If you want, um, if you want intelligent conversation, facts, and solid insight on boxing, then you should definitely pay attention to the LDBC channels and think the exact opposite of what they say. I wasn't sure where you were going with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you want to know? Um, you want to develop uh, a good understanding of the sweet science and the sport of boxing? Watch them and just think exactly the opposite of what they say. <laughs> uh, why, Hawker? They want to kill, oh, man. Why? Because you criticize their bum ass heroes. They want to kill you because you criticize their bum ass heroes. The only time, Fury. What up, Anderson? How you doing, my man? Hope all is well. The only time Fury has the right body and game plan. Wait, what's this? The only time Fury has the right body and game plan, he destroyed Wilder. Oh, yeah, like the right physical body. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it tells you more about Fury than Wilder, in your opinion. It's, I agree. Same here. It tells me more about Fury than Wilder. No shit. And, and think about it. Um. <clears throat> You know, even, you know, the first one, he outboxes him. Second one, he outfights him. And third one, uh, you know, I, I think Wilder got in Fury's head a bit. I really do. I really do. Which is why, you know, remember even his father, um, Big John, was saying he don't think his son should take the fight. He hasn't been training. He's in shit shape. And we all saw him. He was in shit shape. And we know, you know, this is what fighters do, man. Whenever they're worried that they might lose, they give themselves like a built-in excuse. A lot of guys will like go out and, you know, party, fight week. They'll be partying all fight week or go out and at least get drunk as shit one night, even just one night. That way, if they lose, they can be like, oh, I shouldn't have drank that night. That's what did me. That's what did it in. Or I didn't train properly. That's what did it in. I really think, you know, Wilder was in his fucking head because he knew Wilder wasn't playing any games. He knew Wilder was coming to fucking fight. And he did. So props to Wilder for, for coming to fight. He just don't got any like skills. <laughs> you know? But he still struggled with them. Yeah, he was a fat slob in the third. And a bum plan in the first. What's this, Hawker? Dillian hopes that his own fight flops. Again, you know, because he talked all that shit for years, right? And this goes for both guys. Um, look, when you have that kind of rivalry, and especially in country rivalry, like with the uh, with the British public, that again, forgive me for wearing the glasses, guys, and not being a goofball wearing sunglasses at night. <laughs> I have a legit ass migraine. Uh, I just took some ibuprofen, so hopefully it fades, but. Yeah. Um, you know, when you talk that kind of shit, that much shit, talking about how you could easily beat this guy, beat that guy, and then the fight is on, 
You know, you both of them guys, they put way too much additional pressure on their back. And I think White is a bit fucking scared. Like, a bit scared. Not scared of Fury, but scared of losing. The embarrassment, you know, the embarrassment factor. Am I going to go out there and get embarrassed in front of all my, you know, the British public? And then get, you know, slammed on the internet for a month? You know, at least there's a lot of fights. So maybe it might not last. It might just be a week for him, but yeah, yeah. What up, London? London Shaft. Considering he went 50 50 with Chisora, I think Chisora won and got mm-hmm. slept by Povetkin. Dillian's victim mindset is embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thurman was gambling on fight night. Um, on other sports or like gaming tables or whatever, or just on his own fight. I know he tried laying money on his own fight, but either way, staying up all night, all that kind of shit, you know. Um, and you know, that's actually a really bad one. Look, that's a really bad one, guys. Gambling, um, like a day or two before your fight, because you know, it's you really release you know so many. Hormones, you know, the, the, that shit releases a lot of hormones, gambling, winning and losing, the serotonin. That's all shit you don't want to um, empty, right? Because a lot of the, like, pent up aggression, emotion, hormones, that's all pent up. And you want to release it during the fight, not a day or two before the fight. 30% chance that Dillian wins that fight. I haven't been impressed with his uh, latest performances. Joyce would be a harder opponent for Tyson Fury. Yeah, I agree. Oh, fuck it. Like, yeah, for sure. It, he just would be. Come on, man. You know, it's um, Corey Hart. I don't even know who that is, but yeah. <laughs> Sunglasses at night is ridiculous. Man. Who is Dillian White actually beat worth noting? Best win, Parker. Um, huh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Broner said that about Pacquiao, or said that about Thurman versus Pacquiao. You believe what the gambling thing? The undercard is an absolute joke. Frank Warren had the nerve to say it was because there was no purse money left. Oh, my God. Really? Really? I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. So, (laughs) oh, my God. What an asshole. What an asshole. (laughs) So, yeah, we're giving all the money to these two fucking assholes. So, Hey, no money for anyone else. <laughs> but you know what? Like, it's it's screwed up that they don't have any money left. When you have thirty million dollars, I think you should be able to put on an amazing fucking card, right? Um, really, like what forty million actually? But um, you know, with a a card like that that'll have that many eyeballs on it. Young fighters should be dying to get on that card, even if it's for, you know, quarters on the dollar compared to what they usually get, just because so many people are going to see you. When I was coming up, like, you know, dudes would jump on a pay-per-view undercard for like 25 grand, you know, someone like Oscar De La Hoya or Mike Tyson, you know, he'd be getting 20 million and whatnot. And Zeb Judah would jump on for fucking five grand, you know, just like whatever. Throw me up on that card because I want people to see me. But nobody gives a shit about anything but fucking money in this sport now. There is no, no one cares about legacy. They throw that word around so loosely, but they don't really give a shit about it. You know, they want their legacy to be, I made a lot of money. Oh, shit. Where's my phone? Oh, man. Hang on, guys. Sorry about that. Hang on.
Alright, sorry about that, sorry about that. Alright. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Hawker. I'll jump on that on the car real quick. I get the eyes on me. Sports going broke. Person, ah, uh, reverse, you're right. No, the purses will be lowering soon because, look, you know, you had fighters are spoiled right now. And, you know, good for them. They're getting their money. But, you know, it's uh, – they're going to have to realize what their worth is actually, like, truly is soon enough because – when PBC and Heyman, you know, when they came in with that Wad Ellen Reed money, they were being overpaid. Like Heyman was allowed to overpay them or could overpay them and was overpaying them in an attempt to lure every other fighter to his stable. Then that Wad Ellen Reed money ran out. They ain't getting paid big money anymore. Uh, then DAZN and you know, ESPN Plus, these streaming services, wanted to start up. Uh, and especially DAZN in this case started throwing money around to get as many people to their stable as possible. They were overpaying to lure fighters. That that's not what these guys are actually worth, though. You know, like <sighs> yeah. And then sadly, there's guys like Chocolatito and Estrada and, and all these little guys really that are. Even in Nui and all these guys that are like cream of the crop will, will fight anybody. Um, skill sets out of you know out of this world, true pound for pound talent, and willing to fight anybody, and they're getting fucking five hundred thousand dollars for uh to fight another pound for pound guy in, in their prime. You know, they're lucky to get a million. It's disgusting. And then you got uh, B level guy fighting a fucking bum getting 15 million, you know, or, or more. But yeah, once once all this settles down, the zone gets their stable built up, ESPN, everyone gets their little stables. The, the money ain't going to be flowing like that anymore. All of a sudden, there's not going to be, you know, $300 million contracts. Um, it is what it is, man. Well, they they are overpaid right now, factually. Like it's not even a, a debate, just because you know they're over. Look at Devin Haney for a, an example, right? Clearly overpaid. He thinks that's what he's actually worth. But how you get in you know, three, four million to fight a bum, and you can't even sell fucking four thousand tickets? Like clearly, you're not bringing in that money. Your viewership ain't high. But I get it. It's the zone trying to build up a stable and lure fighters in by saying, look at what we paid him. Come to us. Come to us. But that don't last. You know, that's not it's not going to last. So all this money will lower real soon. Let's see. Whoa. Whoa. What did I just do? All right. Um. What's this? If Warren was smart, he would announce that every press conference missed is retroactively being fined a mill now. Mill uh, I don't. How could they do that though? How could he do that? Uh, Ray Hefner, uh, how's it going, my man? Hef, big Hef. The LDBC. You don't even think. Half of them will watch boxing, and they don't even know what they're looking at. They would never do a film study. No, they, their their film study would be jab, left hook. He goes forward, jab. He goes back. He goes back again. He goes back again. Look how smart he is. Jab. He. Goes... <laughs> nah, you know what I realized today? I was watching um. So bullshit, right? You know what I realized? Like, and you only hear this with a marrow bums, right? When a guy is like running, you know, running, he's not trying to engage, you're just trying to run, circle the ring, and pot shot. What do they always say? 
He's just too smart for him. Oh, I, I, I mean, I thought of this because I saw Devin Haney talk about Shakur and Valdez. He was breaking that down, and he goes, Shakur's just too smart for him. Translation, he won't, he won't engage. Translation, he's going to run, all right? So he's just too smart means he's pussy. That's what it means. He's pussy. That's what it means. So ne next time you hear a commentator, a fighter, anyone say he's just too smart for him, see if that if it um I got you, Anderson. I got you. Um, see if that you know aligns to what, what I'm saying. <clears throat> as soon as they they never call like you know an, a, a a pressure fighter smart, right? Even though oh they can be. You're going to tell me Roberto Duran wasn't smart? You're going to tell me, like, Lomo, when he's coming for it, he isn't still smart? Like, Golovkin, he ain't smart? You know, oh, Floyd's only smart when he goes back? What about when Floyd's pressing the action versus, like, a bum, right? He's he's still smart, right? But they don't say it. it it's He's only smart when they run. So Devin Haney's saying he's too smart for him. What's that? What's that mean? That means when he fights Cambosos, it's going to be – I was too smart. I'm too smart. Watch. You'll see it. You'll see it. Shoulder roll. Wow. <laughs> IQ rises. <laughs> IQ rises once pot shot is landed. <laughs> exactly, man. A triple G. Or wait. Canelo only sold a mil pay-per-views versus Floyd and Golovkin. And Chavez, yeah. So the other guy is just as important as him, and that's crazy, right? So think about it: getting a three hundred million dollar contract, and you can't—you're not even a big fucking seller. Like he is a big seller. Like don't get me wrong, but he's not so big that it would justify like thirty million a fight. You know, being that like. It, I mean, you you need another big time guy across the ring from you, and it's not like Chavez Jr. is a big time guy, but name wise, amongst the Mexican fan base, he is. <laughs> yeah, it's only smart when you backpedal and run. <laughs> Back in your day, that was called fear for real. I know when did. When did fear become intelligence? Like running uh, was always called fear. If a dude was running throughout a fight and yes, circling the ring, jumping in with pot shots is fucking running. Okay. When you're running throughout a fight, historically, it has been called cowardice, stinking the joint out, fear. <laughs> All of a sudden, it changes because Amaro Bums can't fucking step it up. Haney also said that he'll try and make it look easy and neutralize Cambosos. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know what that means. Run and pot shot. Clinch. Rinse, repeat. Run. Pot shot. Run. Oh, he's caught me. He's cornered me. Clinch. Help. Separate. Run. Pot shot. Clinch. Like, come on, man. Fury. Aldo says, Fury has bigger potential fights right now than Canelo. Triple G3 is not bigger than Undisputed or AJ. No, it's not. It's not. Even though Triple G3 is Undisputed at 68, it still ain't bigger than um, AJ. You know, it's certainly not. It might sell better than Fury Usyk, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah, exactly, Alan. Then uh, the guardian, you know, let's say he does run, pot shot, clinch. 
jab and grab, run, jab and grab, run, jab and grab. Boom, and gets a decision. He'll claim he fucking dominated. And all his fans will say, domination, domination. What's my prediction for... Well, how you doing, PDA? What's going on, my man? So what's... Uh, everyone go subscribe, BDA. What's your prediction for Golovkin Marata? Man. <laughs> Man, I don't know, dude. It's like 50-50. It's a fucking shootout. It's a shootout to me, man. Um, I guess I would I, you, I guess I would give the edge to Golovkin cuz in a shootout, you know, you got to look at okay, who who has the better chin and better power. Both of those go to Golovkin. Golovkin has a better better power and a better chin. Then you got to go who has better defense? I doubt, I still say it's also Golovkin. You know, Morata has very, very leaky defense. Um, so everything that is needed, you know, to win a shootout or or that would be an advantage to have in a shootout, Golovkin has it all. Um, Morata doesn't really have the edge in any of those regards. Uh, and Morata himself has stated that he doesn't think he, he can outbox Golovkin. So he's going to be going there to bang it out. And that's, you know, that's what he does. And Marata's a dirty fighter, man. Marata loves a rabbit punch. He really, he's like Wilder in that regard with his big right hand. He'll throw it and club. And, you know, if you duck down, he's clubbing you on the back of the head. He never tries to like slip it in or, get it between the guard or nothing. He's always clubbing it right on the back of your head. What if you're like in tight, he'll he'll loop it around and smack you in the back of the head. Now, Golovkin may have a granite chin or whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, an iron chin. Well, no one got a granite brain stem. No one has an iron brain stem. You know, it is what it is, man. So, um, uh, you look at, you look at Golovkin, like, yeah, he has these advantages, but are they going to be not neutralized, but are they going to be evened out by the rabbit punching? And will he be allowed to get away with the rabbit punching? He probably will be because he, he does it in every fight. Uh, you can go watch any fucking Marata fight you want, and you'll see rabbit punches immediately. And nasty ones, too. Um... So, a prediction, man, man. Now, if I was, if I was Marata, I would still try to box this guy for the first six. You're, you know, you got, you got some youth on him. You, you got the tall. You're long. Use that. You got a great one too. Use that one, too. Use your feet. He got fast feet. Use that. You know, Golovkin, he's old, so he probably won't have a good second-half gas tank. You know, try to. He's going to be the most dangerous in the first half, that's for sure. So, you know, let him, let him, uh, you know, empty some of that. You know, let him use up some of that giant power in the first six then take it to him and get into your little shootout. But I wouldn't do it right off the bat. If he does go right at Golovkin, I would have to favor Golovkin um, by a stoppage. But it's I, – I really have a hard then, – then I also say to myself, I don't know, man. I, I find it hard to, to think that Golovkin will stop him. Um if he does, maybe, you know, rounds like seven, eight, nine, ten, a little later, a little later, because um, Murata's tough as shit. He's tough as hell, and you know he's not coming there to to just like you know see how he does. He's coming there to fucking win or die. I mean, he's made this clear. Uh, so Glovkin's gonna have to destroy this guy, or it's going to the cards. 
then it's like, oh, uh, man, I don't really, I don't know, man. I don't really have a, a clear cut prediction. Um, to, it's really like a 50 50 fight, man. I see, I see, um, Maratha being extremely dangerous and having just as good of a shot as anybody because stylistically. Stylistically, Maratha has everything it takes to, to, to defeat Golovkin. Um, and again, the rabbit punches. I can see, I can really see him hurting Golovkin with a rabbit punch and then maybe finishing him off however, right? But, you know, you we all know Golovkin, he really likes to jab and then weave down. You know, jab, slip down. You know, he, he changes the level, boom, jab, slip down. Now, Maratha just, boom, coming right over the top, banging him right in the back of the head. Brainstem shot. I mean, how, you, how do you defend a fucking brainstem shot? Like this? Like, you can't, you know? So... They either have to make this very clear in the locker room, and if if they do make it very clear about the rabbit punches, is it going to even matter? Will the ref actually be like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to help out this guy over my, you know, over the the hometown guy"? Now let me go check real quick. I want to go see who is refing this fight. All right, where are we? Where are we? Here we go. Who's ref in this fight? Oh, it doesn't even say right now. Does anyone know who the referee and judges are for this fight? You go see if it has it back. No, I still don't have it here. Uh, has anyone seen the announcement of the referee and judges in the Golovkin Maratha fight? Now, Murata is not a young guy. Triple G just needs to Lemieux him all night with that jab. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yep. Keep your distance. Keep that distance. And just keep keep jabbing them, keep jabbing them. And look, the one thing you know, Golovkin won't be the taller guy. You know, a lot of his fights, he's the taller guy, or they're about equal. You know, with, with Canelo, Canelo was the shorter guy, and you know, shorter arms. So on the inside, the shorter guy with the shorter arms is going to be able to do body work better. That is Golovkin. This fight, he's the shorter guy with the shorter arms. So now Maratha's for a tall, lanky guy, he still can actually place body shots really well. He can still dig in really nicely for a tall, lanky guy. But this would actually be a fight where Golovkin's body work should be a priority and it should be um, effective. You know, um, Maratha, you know, being tall, being lanky, he can't cover up his whole body, um, so he has a lot of openings. Uh, and just when he does shell up, there still are a lot of openings. So Glovkin really should be jabbing him, and when the guy does get inside, bang the body, then come back up top, finish it off with the jab. Very simple. Very simple. And this is a good point by Marat uh, or by Monkey here as well. I, I, you know, everyone got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Hit the likes, guys. Hit the likes. Appreciate it. Get them likes up. Morata is going to get stung, and once that happens, he's going to try and brawl, and Gennady is going to sleep him. And uh, yeah, I mean that's always a possibility, right? He goes in. Tries doing his thing and boom, fills the power and he's like, "Shit, you know this ain't gonna, ain't gonna work." My plan goes out the window. I gotta try and sleep this fool, and then he starts 
getting a little reckless, and that's when Golovkin can capitalize. Very possible, you know, very possible. Beat the what's that? Beat the farm out of Marata. Beat the form, maybe. Beat the farm. What up, Ryan Hong? How you doing, man? What time's the Triple G fight? It's way early in the morning, man. Like, for me, on the East Coast of the States, it's going to be, like, the main event is something like 8 a.m., 8 in the morning. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really early, man. It's real early in the morning. Not <laughs> – they didn't schedule this fight to be, um, you know, to benefit us. It's to benefit the Japanese. So, yeah, it's – you know, you could search it on Dizel, but I, I believe main event. Oh, bet the farm. I'm sorry. I see. Bet the farm on Golovkin. I got it. I got it. Um, or you said bet the farm on Murata. Uh, I lost that comment. Bet the farm on Murata. Okay, I got you, Ryan Hong. I got you. I got you. Um, yeah, I think the fight's going to be something like. You know, 6 a.m. for you, 5 a.m. for you, which, you know, that's very unique. Okay, I missed a bunch of comments here. Juliet's man, what do you think Marata would accomplish against Canelo? Um... Um, hmm. again, Murata really likes to just bring it right to you. He, again, this guy's a gold medalist, you know, in the Olympics. He can fucking box. Like, he can. He can box. He's a good, you know, point fighter. You know, good old one-two, move. One-two, boom, 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 just flurry. But in the pros, he doesn't really use it. He doesn't. He, he walks straight in, high guard. And just boom, boom, just flurries on you, bombs on you. He's not a, you know, he's not, uh, he's not a, let me try and win on the decision at all. He's looking for the knockout. He like, he's so fucking tough, right? He, he kind of bets the farm that he'll break you before you can break him. And that's just what he does. He goes out there really trying to fuck you up. Break you before you can break him. And it works. It, it works. You know, he's tough as nails. And he can take a punch. He can take a good body shot. But now, and then, look. Also, Murata, you know, Golovkin was a better amateur. You know, um, he beat way better opposition in the amateurs than Murata. He's just a better amateur than Murata. And he fought... Far better opposition in the pros. Far better opposition in the pros. He has a ton more experience than Marata in the pros. The only thing Marata got going for him is Golovkin aging overnight and rabbit punches. I'm dead serious. That, that, that's really all he got going for him. Um. You know, a prime Golovkin, the Golovkin that fought Lemieux, this guy probably don't go eight rounds. He probably doesn't go eight rounds. Now, even though Golovkin's past his prime, he is in tremendous physical shape, like stronger than he has ever been. Probably going to hit harder than he's ever hit. Um, he's probably going to be faster than he ever hit. That's what they have been working on ever since he got with Banks. And you could tell that it was finally clicking in the Zarameta fight. That was the fastest I've seen Golovkin since, like, the Ishida fight or some shit, you know? Since way back when. The dude was fast. You know, um, but... Banks has said that, you know, Golovkin is already uh, a, a great boxer, so there's not much that he wants to, like, add or have him develop or whatever. He wants to really just 
fine tune him and, you know, uh, up his speed, up his speed a bit, right? And hopefully he sticks to that because, you know, the old saying, you can't teach a dog, an old dog, new tricks. You can, I get it, right? But why would you? We've talked about this how many times in boxing. Whenever you try to, you know, do new things and in a big fight versus a guy who's dangerous, you're liable to make mistakes, right? Because you haven't, like, developed this over years. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, like, 10 years, 15 years, 20, like, your whole boxing career, right? You're not these, – these are things you're trying, right? And then and, and you might get away with it versus lower-level guys, right? A Steve Rolls or a Zarameta. Well, what happens when you try that, like, slick little head movement against – a Marata, and he just, boom, clubs you right on the back of the head. As you're weaving down, boom, you get donked. And then your leg goes fucking stanky, and then he unloads on you. You know? Um, what's this, Trevor Goodchild? What's going on, my man? Trevor Goodchild. Uppercut plumbing. Uppercut plumbing? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. Is that the name of your company? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. He's going to taste Triple G's power. It's going to be a long night for Murata. Triple G's chin is granite. Golovkin by late stoppage. Yeah, I, I mean, Trevor, you're right. He does have a granite chin, right? I was talking about um, Murata and his rabbit punches, right? Nobody has a granite brainstem. Oh, you know, if Marata is allowed to rabbit punch, you know, it might be it might be dangerous, man. It might be dangerous. But you would expect Golovkin to win. Like he he has the edge. Like he he should be the favorite. I believe he is the favorite, and rightfully so. Um, but it's fucking dangerous, man. It is. I don't think. I mean. I have been noticing some people actually, like, understand and bring up just how dangerous this fight really is. You you see some people talking about, like, just you know, kind of being you know, bigoted. Like, oh, he's just some Asian bomb. He's a blah, 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 Japanese bomb. They can't fight or whatnot. But, but let's get out of here, man. The dude's a fucking uh, a good fighter, a good boxer, good fighter. And again, just stylistically, he he matches up well with Golovkin. I'd be really surprised, and it'll it'll make a, a hell of a statement if Golovkin dominates this guy. If Golovkin can dominate this guy, it sends a hell of a statement. Mar uh, monkey, I keep calling you Marata Monkey. <laughs> oh, Monkey, uh, I, I remember before you said that there was a, you might be like uh, dipping for a while, taking a break from on here or whatever, d disappearing for a minute. Um, but I see you stuck around um, or you have been around. Maybe you haven't left yet. I hope everything is all right with you, brother. I hope everything's all right with you, my man. But the monkey says, uh, obviously, if it's a close fight and goes the distance, the de the decision should go to Golovkin. Uh, who knows, man? Who knows? Ron, uh, Ryan Hong says, I honestly got Marata stopping him. I, I can see it. I can see it. I definitely can. It won't, it won't surprise me. It won't surprise me at all. I'd be a bit, like, upset. Because then we ain't gonna get that Canelo fight, but you know, I, I, I it wouldn't shock me. That's for sure. Oh, okay, okay, I got you, monkey. I got you. Okay, good. Well, not good that it didn't pan out, but good that everything's okay. Glad to hear everything's okay. You're picking Fundora. You gotta pick Fundora, Alan. You have to, man. <laughs> 
Fundora's. I like Fundora, man. I like Fundora. You know, and not just like the freak show aspect either. Not just like the freak show aspect either. Um, Fundora, uh, an exciting fighter, man. Because, you know, when you see somebody that tall, you know, that tall, that long, you would expect him or you would think that he's going to outbox, you know, be an outboxer. Uh, clinch, jab and grab, kind of flick, 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 try and drop a big right hand or something. The guy gets inside, he'll clinch. He ain't like that. You know, you get inside, he fucking opens up. He's, I like him, man. I like Fundora, dude. And it, yeah. Not the greatest fighter, not the greatest boxer, but he's he's good. He's solid. He's solid. Oh, gross. As I think Marata is tailor made for Golovkin. Again, I mean, um, again, uh, Prime in 2016, 17. He he was, I guess, you know. Um, he kind of was for the, the the reasons I mentioned. You know, chin goes to Golovkin, power goes to Golovkin, defense goes to Golovkin, boxing goes to Golovkin. He has the advantage; like everything is check, 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 all in Golovkin's favor. But you know, if look, if Morata isn't using the rabbit punches or isn't allowed, that's going to be a big, that's going to be a game changer. That'll be a game changer in favor of Golovkin. But if he's allowed, it's, it's, it's going to make it risky. It's going to make it risky. And look, Morata hits very hard, right? But Golovkin's faced guys who hit just as hard. Danny Jacobs, when he fought Danny Jacobs that night, Danny hit harder than Marata. No doubt about it. He's big, he's explosive, he's forceful, and he weighed a lot more than Marata will on, on this night. So, I mean, you know, he's fucking Lemieux hits harder. Um, you know, he's fought bigger punchers than Marata. And guys who are bigger punchers in both hands. Marata's really only a big puncher in one hand. He's he's got power in both, but only one is like you know, um only one is special, you know. On a on a pound for pound like weight, like uh on a poundage like say he's like 170 pounds or whatever on fight night. He hits pretty damn hard for 100, a guy weighing 170 pounds. His right hand. Yeah, Triple G is not in his prime. Definitely not. And uh, again, if Morata does try to uh, box or stay tall, that could backfire. Because what does Glovkin love to do? He loves to sit there, you know, stalk you. Get inside, get inside, and then boom! You know, get inside, get inside, and boom! Like he, so with a guy like Murata, so he, he's really extending that, that, you know, extending that reach. And it's long. So it takes a long, it takes, you know, some time to travel and then it takes time to bring that thing the whole way back. You know, a guy like Canelo, for example, his, his arms are short. So it's boom, boom, right back. Marata is, whoa, she has to bring it the whole way back. That gives Golovkin that extra window to sneak in a big shot and drop it over the top. Uh, and I think Marata might understand that, which is why he said he can't box with Golovkin. He has to fucking take it to this guy. And, you know, if you take it to Golovkin, I mean, wouldn't Murata kind of then be playing right into his hand? You know, you're playing right into to Golovkin's strong suit. 
What are you going to do, exchange with Golovkin? That's pretty fucking risky, man. Pretty fucking risky. But Guerrero says, if Triple G can pump the jab all fight and not take too many punches to the body, he should win easily. Um, Golovkin needs to be the guy going to the body. Again, he's going to be shorter. He's going to be lower. You know, because he likes that, you know, stalking down here. He can bang, touch him right, wrap that shit right around. He's still got the shoulder up, can bang him. So uh, I, this should be a, a night where Golovkin actually has pretty impressive body work. You know, because it's hard for him to do that with a guy like Canelo because Canelo got fast hands and he's the taller guy. So he has to reach down, reach the whole way down. You know, even though he did attack the body, but, you know, not as much as people expected. And that's the reason, because he's tall, so he has to reach down and you're leaving yourself open for a counter. This will be more it'll reversed. Marata, if he reaches down and he loves to go to the body, he'll be leaving himself vulnerable. Walking through a, a minefield. <laughs> for sure. For sure, it will be. It will be. Oh, geez, BDA <laughs> elite pumping. <laughs> yeah, Angel, that'll be that'll be interesting to see what happens there, right? If they allow Morata to wrap a punch, um, you can see Triple G hitting Murata with a low blow or something. I doubt he'll allow them to screw him again. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see how he handles it, right? If he's getting fouled and they don't do anything, what's he going to do? He never followed Murata. So... Go watch him tonight. That's what Canelo did. What's that? Sorry, I missed what you were referring to there. Out of narrative follows that he should push. Uh, uh, I heard that Ward was hating on Canelo again the other day. <laughs> yeah, he wants that fucking money. He wants that money. Okay, Ward is a fucking clout chaser, man. Ward is a fucking clout chaser. Like fool, you could you could if you're all that right. If you're the pump for pump best fighter on earth when you were fighting all that shit, why the fuck do you run from better BF? Why the fuck do you run from Bivol? Right, that was your fault. You ran from those two, and Canelo's at least fighting one. I heard also that uh, I don't know how true this is, but Canelo's team said if Canelo beats Bivol and Golovkin loses or suffers an injury and can't fight in September, that they'll try to make a better BF fight in September. And then I guess Aaron was quoted saying something like, uh, he likes the fight, but maybe not on the zone or some shit. I don't know. Man. If that, if, if, if all them scenarios do happen and Aaron fucks that potential fight up, oh man. Wow. I will. Yeah. He better not. Yeah, why not exchange? Triple G is old. Um, if he is really out of his prime. Well, timing never leaves. Um, you know, timing isn't something that, like, uh, disappears with age as long as you're staying in shape and keeping your hand eye coordination um in on uh, you know tuned up you'll always have your timing and you'll always have your power so you know, timing a good shot boom like george foreman or some shit right it's uh it's it's uh you know, tyson and um you know tyson and anybody at the end of his career Tyson and Botha, he just timed them. Boom! Dropped the right hand on him, it's over. Uh, 
So that that's it. It'll always be dangerous to exchange with a guy like Golovkin when he if he's training. And forty eight and Alan's right, forty ain't that old. You know, not in today's era. It's really not. And especially we've talked about this for years, right? That a guy uh, like Golovkin with his style, which doesn't rely on um, you know, reflexes and so called athleticism, that that fast twitch athleticism, right? His style doesn't rely on any of that garbage. It relies on technique. It relies on technique. That shit ages well, right? It ages well. The guys who really have a problem, like this is why in America, the narrative has always been, you know, you start hitting 35, 36, 37, it's kind of over for you as a fighter, right? Why? Well, because most of the American fighters throughout history, really, have been reflex fighters. Most of them have relied on reflexes. You know, just a just thing, right? With African Americans, they fight with, you know, explosiveness, fast twitch, force, and power, right? The explosiveness... To boom, explode, and boom, force to deliver big power. Or it's either that type or the, the bow, 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 get up out of there, the Meldrick Taylor, boom, 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 gone, right? Like that type of shit. The fast switch, bang, get up out of there. Tap him, gone. It's either that or the like Mike Tyson type shit, right? Or Tommy Hearns, ruin and explode, ground up, everything fast twitch, force, boom, power. So you have one of the two different styles. Now, yeah, those guys, they don't, you're not going to age well. If you don't also have the technique to back it up as you age, it's over for you, man. As soon as that shit starts to go, it's fucking curtains. It's curtains. If you didn't develop skills to go with it, like a James Tony, you're fucked. You know, you have to have the skills to back it up. You can't solely rely on fast twitch. Like Roy Jones, like James Tony, he had fast twitch. He was a, a big puncher. But what happened? He also developed skills, technique, real talent. Shit that, you know, you could teach the kids, not just, hey, man, you got to fucking be speedy. You have to have speed. If you don't have speed, like, I can't teach you shit because I only know speed. So, you know, it's not like that narrative doesn't hold all that true with guys you know, who don't rely on fucking fast twitch. The twitchy bow, twitchy shit. No, he, he, he doesn't. You know, and he doesn't. He isn't one of those guys. So, you know, in this day and age... Even the fast twitchy guys in this day and age can last longer. Even the fast twitchy guys can still be, you know, top tier guys. It's 37, 38. Like right now today, 37, 38. Fast twitch guys can still be top dogs. Which, you know, we know why, but that's besides the point. So a guy with, you know, the, the, the technique. The guy who's a skill fighter, a technique fighter, they can get 40 and all that. 40 and all that. Oh, so. Yeah, being old isn't uncool. Being old means you're wise. Being old means you're wise. Skills, talent, technique, experience, all that. Oh, peace, Tony. God bless you, brother. God bless you, my man. Have a good night. Sorry, I missed that. Not many boxers can fight into their 40s. If they do and still contend in the sport, they are great. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. But again, it depends on the amount of punishment you took, you know, as well. Um, again, it, it, it depends what kind of a fighter you are, like what your style is, 
um, what you rely on, and the punishment you took. Golovkin never took much punishment. He never really took punishment at all, um, apart for like three fights. Um, and he's not a twitchy, uh, you know, a fast twitch type fighter. So, you know, we'll have to, well, I mean, we'll have to see. He could have fight. He could, he could look like shit. He could, like, we don't know. Uh, no one knows until we actually see him. But all we can really do is say, you know, what if he's basically the same as Zamurta, that, that fight, right? But to me, he looks um, like he knows he's going to four, uh, to 68. Well, that's his plan. Even though he says he ain't looking past Zamurta, he understands that that is still the future goal, right? So they're, they're, they're still going to, um, you know, take that into consideration on his strength and conditioning routines. And again, this guy's never had a strength and conditioning like routine. He's never had a proper nutritionist. He has that now. He actually has proper nutritionists, proper strength and conditioning routine, which is why he is looking diesel. You know, he's looking fucking diesel. Is he probably on some shit too? Yeah, you would think so, right? Um, and if he is, oh, oh man, that's 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 scary. That's scary. Yeah, helicopter is a very, very good point. Um, it all a lot of it does depend on the will of the underdog to win. Um, when they're up against old fighters, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely correct. Look at Joe Smith Jr. and B Hop. Look at that fight, all right? That was a supposed cherry pick. Oh, well, it was a cherry pick, right? By Bernard Hopkins. He cherry picked that guy. And Joe Smith, he came to win. <laughs> he came to fucking win. Uh, and destroyed him. <laughs> destroyed him. He destroyed Hopkins. Why? Because he fucking wasn't there to just give B Hop some work. And he was big. He's a big guy, too, man. B Hop definitely bit off more than he could fucking chew that night. Helicopter also says, um, other stats don't matter. You just need to be mentally powered and physically ready to beat an old guy. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you could take a punch, you're ready to go through the fire and just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. You know, youth should be able to overcome that guy. But again, Marata's not all that young either. You know, younger than Golovkin, of course. But, you know. Seismic glare. What's this? Rob, uh, Robzy, Robizi Ramirez starts competing for a belt. I don't know. I don't know much about this guy. Let me scope him out. I probably have seen him, but I can't remember. Let me copy that name. Hold on. I'll take a look at him here in a second. That's why Roberto Duran is so impressive. And my favorite fighter, he replied on Sweet Science. Oh, he relied on sweet science and fought into his 40s. Armando Colon says Golovkin is going to beat Ryota easy. If you don't... Uh, Gort Baringa. Baringa. If you don't take 300 to 600 milligrams of magnesium every day, do so. That reduces incidence of my... Really? Really? Magnesium. Magnesium. I think I have magnesium. I think I have it here. If not, I got a pharmacy right across the street. I got magnesium. Shit, I have my notebook back here. I gotta write that down. Magnesium. Someone else told me that before and I forgot it. Hopkins style almost did make it to the 50s. <laughs> I 
Ryan Hong, Roy and Golovkin is basically Drago. <laughs> TRT Golovkin, TRT Triple G. Yeah, this shit will be crazy to watch if he is, man. Ryota is a fighter you can literally beat with a jab. Brant just beat him with the jab. Golovkin has the greatest jab of all time that is consistent and doesn't miss and is a power punch. Golovkin in rounds 9 to 12. You know, his, his jab is, you know, talked about a lot and respected, but it, it really still is underrated because he does have one of the greatest jabs of all time. It, it, he has a jab that is in contention with the GOAT jab because, as you said, it's extremely consistent. It's the same jab every time. The accuracy of that jab is off the fucking charts. And it's a power punch. Like those three things in itself, like most guys, you know, they either have a hard jab, right? They have an accurate jab or they have a consistent jab. But to have all three um, and it were, it's it still is all three of those consistent, um, um, powerful uh, and accurate against Top tier guys, it's not like the jab falters when the level rises. No, it, it, it stays the same at all times. Uh, it's very rare. Can anyone else name one like that? You know, like for real, just name one. It's like people are going to come up with Larry Holmes, I guess. Um, but it wasn't a power punch. You know, again, two out of three, he was accurate. It was consistent, but it wasn't a power punch. Um, it was more like a whip. I get it. It was he's a heavyweight, so it got some fucking power, but it's not a power punch. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's very true, man. The jab is underrated. If uh, Golovkin has a poor performance, do I still want to see the trilogy with Canelo? Well, I guess it would depend <clears throat> on um, what kind of a poor performance. Like, was it a poor performance based on, uh, like, the how the styles meshed with Marata? Um or did he just look old? Um, so I, I don't know. I'd have to answer that after I actually see the, the, the performance. It's going good, Justin. It's going good, Justin. How about yourself, my man? Oh, my God. Look at that avatar. <laughs> Dude, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Justin Nine with the fucking comical avatar. The trilogy is only even talked about because he was robbed by Canelo. Golovkin should be retired right now. Undisputed, undefeated at 160. Very true. Longest reigning middleweight champ. Most title defenses uh, at middleweight. Um, undefeated. Uh, at middleweight, like uh, just undefeated period. Yeah, he should basically have like the greatest middleweight champion uh, resume of all time. And he was fucking robbed of that. Literally robbed of that. Robbed of the greatest middleweight champion's resume of all time. Now, he was also robbed of an even better resume by all the pussies who ducked him. Right, if he could have got all the fights that you know we wanted and we should have gotten, he'd have a ton of fucking um, he have a lot better names, even he'd have a lot more, maybe even names. He his record resume might even be uh, have more fights, and his KO percentage would probably still be up like 90 something, you know, because he would have destroyed a lot of those guys. That's it's ridiculous, man. But you're right. That's the only reason the resume or the, the uh, trilogy is even talked about. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up, man.
Armando says, yeah, Golovkin's jab is off the charts. It's like a homing missile. It just don't miss. It don't, you know. It wasn't, uh, when his jab was just really fucking brutal was in that um, Brook fight. In the Brook fight, oh, man. Dude, Brook couldn't get away from it. Like, you know, Brook would start moving around, boom, boom, and bow, just out of nowhere, get hit. He'd be like, boom, and be like, oh, shit. Like, just out of nowhere, because Golovkin would just walk, 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 boom, just hit you, like, timing galore. Like, he, he's like Bivol in that regards. Bivol is very good in that. Very good in that, as we were doing the film study. You know, because he'll hit you with a, a leg faint, a shoulder faint, a hand faint, you know, a, an upper body faint. And, you know, you're you're all over the place, like, shit, 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 shit. And then you go to take a step, and then finally it's boom. Then it comes, and you're like, wham. You're like, dude, what the hell? Like, he he's so bivouac great at that, man. Golovkin's the same thing, but, um, you know, it's really impressive to see a guy do that who's just so focused and has every trick in the book to get that jab to land. Um, they're not just out there throwing it repeatedly and like one of them's going to land. They use every trick in the book to get you to, you know, they'll hit you with three, four feints. So you're thinking um, it's just another feint. It's just another feint. And, you know, they'll wait for you to lift your foot up and then bang, it's all of a sudden right in your grill. Oh, Bivol is nasty with it too. So Golovkin is obviously, you know, ne next level with it. But Bivol's really good at that, too. Armando says, no, Golovkin has the best jab he's ever seen. Yeah, I I really can't think. Off the top right now, it's, again, when you look at the whole package, he has one of the best jabs ever. Like, he really does, man. It ain't no dick riding shit. It's just factual. Like top five. For sure, top five. Who's a faker champ? Haney or Charlo at one sixty? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know, man. I don't even know. Um, they're about equal, bro. They really, really are. I mean, I want to say Haney just because he had a guaranteed um Loma fight where. It wasn't even like, you know, you couldn't even use the excuse. Like, people like Charlo fans like to use the excuse. Well, like, um, well, he wanted the Golovkin fight, right? But there's no proof he ever did, right? But Haney talked that shit where he wanted the Loma fight, but then we have actual proof that he could have had that Loma fight 100% and didn't take it. Uh, so that alone, I'd probably say Haney is the faker champ. <laughs> oh, yeah. All Jermaine Sterling, fakest champ I've ever seen in the UFC. Yeah, Golovkin should have had Cotto's res uh, Cotto on his resume. Sergio, I mean, all of them, dude. You go all the way back to Sturm. All the way back to Sturm. Every good middleweight from Sturm onwards should have been on that dude's resume. Oh, Koto was terrified of him. Yeah, Koto began the circus at 160. He really did. Yeah. And you know what? People give Koto so much respect, and it's like, fuck should we be giving you respect for, dude? Look at what you did to the sport, like the the the, the welterweight or the middleweight division while you were in it. Like, look at the bullshit you did, man. You you fucked over, um, like the way the way people look at um, uh, Hagler and Minter. Like, they should be looking at Cotto 
and Golovkin that way. You know, like I, I get it. Cotto didn't even take the fight, but it's the same shit. It's, you know, bitch shit. Martinez started the duck train. Yeah. We're in the era of fearful fighters. It's very true. It, re- it really is. It really is. Like, uh, they, that, you know, Roly brought up, Roly Romero just brought up that. He was talking about Devin Haney is a scared fighter, right? And uh, the one fight uh, fight hype interviewer said, which is a total lie. He goes, well, I don't think guys at this level are scared. I don't think fighters at this level are scared. And Rolly was like, what? Like, just stop it. Just fucking stop it. Like, yeah, they are. There's no such thing as you hit a, a certain level and fear leaves the human body. Like, what the fuck? It, it really showed me like how little... That dude understands the sweet science. Does he maybe understand like the history for like who fought who and who won the IBF at this time and but but like the the you know box rack warrior, right? Yeah, he's a good box rack warrior. Okay, that that dude he, he he's a box rack warrior. He knows the fucking who fought who and the dates and the city they fought in and all this shit that doesn't fucking matter, right? But when you ask him to actually you know get scientific with it. A motherfucker don't have a clue. You know? Doesn't have a fucking clue. Uh, to say, well, at a certain level, fear leaves the human body. Like, what? No. Wrong. Wrong. Uh, that's like bonkers, right? Uh, however, like, fighters have historically always been scared. Always. At the highest level and the lowest level, it's so always scared, but it's way, way more so now. And I, I've thought about this. I've often thought about why, why that is. You know, back in the, there's two things that may be. Back in the day when guys would fight, you know, six, seven times a year or whatever, right, where they just had a lot of fights per year, not necessarily – they might only have one or two big ones or three big ones even, but they they have they stayed busy, right? Say you lose in April, in May or June, you could get a win. You could like you know, wash that taste out of your mouth or you know erase that bad performance, and now you're riding high off of a win again, right? Uh, that may have something to do with it, and like nowadays. If you lose in February, you don't even have a chance to erase that that L or that bad performance until maybe fucking September, you know? And what if you lose then? Like, you're done. You're damn near done. You lose two in a row? Like, now you're fucked, right? Like, in today's boxing, it sucks. It's like that, but it is. Um, that could be a reason... Then you also got to add in, like, the internet. You'll become a meme, and you may be a meme forever, right? Like, forever you'll be a meme. It it doesn't leave. Um, So there's uh, several reasons why some of these guys are scared. Um, But then, you you know, you got other guys Who you they they're not scared of shit. Like they're, they're not scared of like um they're they're scared, right? But they're not scared of um like to the degree of other guys, right? Like Usyk, I'm sure he has a healthy fear, healthy fear, but he's not terrified of becoming uh a meme or well when will I get to run uh, uh run it back or get another fight to erase it? They're you know they're they're like ice cold, right? They don't show that they're scared. If they are, they're not showing. And they are, but they don't show it. Golovkin don't show it. Usyk don't show it. Pacquiao don't show it. Loma don't show it. You know what I mean? Then you got guys who it's written all over their body and their actions. You know? But we are in the era of fearful fighters, man. We are. Uh was it always like this? Were there always 
not was it all it wasn't always like this but were there always a percentage of fighters who were like extra scared probably probably but now it just seems to be of a of a of a higher percentage and again it's it, it seems to only come from fighters. Again, the majority of these fearful fighters are from the West. Okay, and, and I have to think it's because, first of all, the West has a culture of shit talking. All right, the West has a culture of shit talking. So you lose, you're gonna get talk. Yeah, people are gonna talk shit on you. You know, in Russia, they're they're not gonna talk shit on you. Uh, in Asia, they're not gonna talk shit on you. You know. Um, it's just different cultures, right? They, they It'll happen, but not to the same degree as the West. So you add all of that in, and it's uh, the era of the fearful fighter. It is. It is. But I like to try and figure out the whys. You know, why are we in this era? And, uh, I think it has a bit to do with all of the above, what I was just breaking down here. I'll drop this link. Drop this link. Maybe we can get into that. Ooh, someone just put me up on game with this book. It's called The Gift of Fear. The book is called The Gift of Fear. It's about, you know... Um, the human body and understanding fear, you know, like uh, gut instincts and shit like that, like energies. And because me and a me and a dude were talking about, you know, was, he told me a story about it. His little, um, he had a gut instinct, didn't listen. So I told him my story about my gut instinct. I didn't listen. And then he was like, dude, uh, he told his story to someone else. They recommended this book, The Gift of Fear. Um, so when we would trade his stories and start talking about it, he recommended this book to me. I haven't ordered it yet, but I found it. It's on Amazon. It's like 15 bucks. Uh, it's It seems really good. Um, but yeah, it breaks down like, you know, the gift of fear, fear in our bodies and how, you know, use it to your advantage and listen to it and the energies like it gets deep i guess it's not just a psychological it's also like you know the um what are they like what metaphysical or spiritual or whatever yeah Yo, oh, that's a good point there Anderson, yes. Once you let one uh, coward become successful, it breaks the dam. That's what happened. That's what happened, man. Great point. Once you let one coward become successful, it breaks the fucking dam. Uh, Alan, no, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I'm going to have to check it out. Junkie says fearful fighters will get caught one day. Yeah. And by caught, you mean beat. Yeah. Camboso says no fear. I mean, he got fear, but again, he knows how to push it down. Like Custom Auto says, the hero and the coward feel exactly the same right before the fight, all right? But the hero knows how to walk through that fire. He knows how to overcome that fear and walk into the fire and do whatever he got to do. The coward doesn't know how to overcome that fear, and they run. A hero and a coward, they feel exactly the same. They both feel the same fear, but one knows how to overcome it, and one doesn't. Cambosos knows how to overcome it. 
What up, Alan? What's going on, brother? Not much, man. How you doing? Yeah, man. You know, you know those uh, YouTube shorts? Yes. I think it's on one of those, man. And I saw it, and I was like, wait, what the hell is this? So I play it, and yeah, Roly was sparring some dude in Mayweather's boxing gym, and he's just going in on this motherfucker, man. Like, getting him against the ropes, like, like just cracking his ass, and you know, you could hear, like, people starting to talk shit, right? So, you know, the dude feels embarrassed. You know, he's got to come at this dude, and it starts, like, try to wrestle him, and, like, they go to the ground. Like, people jump in. Oh, it's crazy, bro. Look it up. Oh, yeah. right now. It's fucking hilarious, bro. <laughs> Aaron Kuko. Aaron Kuko. Salute my man. So, yo, he goes, these fearful fighters are afraid of looking bad on social <clears throat> media. The real ones only fear not giving everything in the ring to prove their greatness. There you go. That is it, man. A little more to it, but that's a big part of it, man. It really is, sadly. Well, you know what? You know what I think it is. It was it Mayweather, Jim? Yeah. Right. E Ego is like having a bad wife, man. It's gonna betray you, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. You either. Uh, convince yourself you can handle a situation and you can't you know yeah. when you find yourself in a real dog fight in a real challenge the ego ain't there to back you up you know yeah yeah you're right you have to actually pull through yeah and you've never like really had to do it because you always you know kind of bully mentality you know they always have the bully mentality they don't go for the the to prove greatness through tough fights, they they you know carefully select who they want to look tough against. No fear, Pac Man. I sure do remember that. That was the best Pacquiao, man. <laughs> Jim Brawl. All right. uh, let's see what we find. This was recent, like brand new, or no? Yeah, I saw it like just the other day, man. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it was from a while back. But okay, I'm fine. Uh, might have been. I'm not exactly sure when it happened. Let's see you, Raleigh. All right. Uh, po, salute for the 20 pounds. Appreciate it. Hey, your hours of putting in work. Oh, uh, for your hours of putting in work. Thank you, my man. Thank you. God bless. How you yeah, here. How uh, you been doing? Here it is. Throw you the link in the chat. Hit that uh the lights, guys, with the lights. Here they got it on Dante's. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big black booty on the screen, but okay. That's what I like about Roly, man. That dude don't give a fuck, bro. Yeah, I fuck with Roly for sure. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, God. years ago he was he was only boxing a couple of years man he's only he came to boxing late and it was moving fast like fast track dude he's a youngin <laughs> This shit is hilarious, bro. It got real. It got real. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> Are you 
right now. Check this out, guys. If you're looking at those scars, burns, and bruises, dark spots, and blemishes, then this right here is the, the perfect fuck? product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. No Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours The today. whole Go rest ahead. of the video is a commercial. Dude, Figures. the first minute was a commercial, and the last three and a half are... What the fuck? <laughs> you can tell he's talking shit to a really right now. You could tell once they squared up again, the dude in the black was like, What's up? What's up? I want to fuck you up. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he reminds me of a, like a fighter from the 90s. He has personality. You know, yeah. He's, now they're all the fucking same. Like all the Americans, anyway, they're all like exactly the same. Oh, he talks it and walks it. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. He talked shit, but the moment they had a tough fight for him, he jumped right at it. Jumped right at it. Helicopter says, I think social media also helped with boxing's demise. Everyone wanted to look cool without even trying. But yeah. Yeah. Ryan Garcia is the epitome of that. Yeah, and that's the well, that's the thing, media. You gotta realize he's he's, he's young. Young, new to this shit at that point in time. And, uh, I mean, that's the Mayweather gym. Like, that's that culture there. You know, it is. But that but that was a much bigger fighter he was in there with. But, I mean, like, uh, any of these, like, hood gyms, that shit's regular. What's this? Question: uh, Triple G after these two fights, is any still owed one? I believe it was a hundred million dollars. Six fights, it'll be up to five with the DAZN contract. Uh, that I am not sure. I'm not sure. Back on the lower weight classes was louder. <laughs> the transformation was quite impressive. Uh, I mean, close, but yeah, he was a one handed fighter, that's for sure. The fury was just crazy. Uh, you, sir, can you get a wrench? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not giving out any wrenches at the moment. <clears throat> Again, thanks, Michael Poe. <laughs> Who goes says, ah, Rolly is a character in an HBO show <laughs> back in the late 90s, early 2000s when HBO was good. Yeah, he really is. No, nah, but I mean, I remember like, remember uh, Chico Corrales, Casamayor, like all the shit they talk, Morales, Barrera, all the shit they talk, but they walked it. Like you said, they talked to talk, but they walked the walk as well. And, you know, they weren't unique. They, everybody had their own personalities. Like people look at Tyson Fury, and they're like, "Oh my God, isn't he a great, a great mouthpiece and a hell of a character?" Like actually, he's kind of not. Like by today's standards, okay, but in like the annals of boxing history, not so much. 
it kind of just repeats the same bullshit over and over again. Uh, yeah. you know. And he doesn't have like much to compete with, you know. Like just Roly. Roly is a better character to me than or a better personality because he doesn't uh he doesn't like um he hasn't been through like the PR machine. He just is who he is. He just is who he is. All these other guys try to be so phony. Everyone's their friend. Everyone's amazing. Everyone's great. No one does anything wrong. Unless they have the fight sign with them, then they'll say something like, Well, oh, I see weaknesses. That's it. You know what I mean? No, he's like, he fucking sucks. <laughs> he sucks. He's a fuck. He punches like a bitch. He looks like a bitch. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, man. Man, though, Tank is uh, Tank is a bit worried. Tank is really fucking worried. <clears throat> Ain't just us seeing it, like all other fighters and managers and shit. Yeah, I was watching some interviews uh, re- well, yesterday. And other guys were talking about it like that. You know, he's, he's not so confident for this fight. He's just not. Because he's facing a dude that can crack. He's fighting a guy who is a legitimate threat and is actually coming to win. And you know what that, that tells me? That he knew these other guys weren't legitimate threats or weren't coming to win. No, he's a bully. All of a sudden, when he's fighting somebody who is, he's worried. Why? Why? If you were always fighting guys who were actually coming to win, what's the difference? What's the difference? Oh. oh that, yeah. t- that tells me you got no heart. Yeah, yeah. No heart, for sure. And it tells me that your career has been manufactured. It is what it is, man. Canelo is more exciting than Fury. Fury's Mike. Yeah, I mean, I did when, when Canelo talks, I, I agree he is too. Fury is not a great technical boxer. He's he's actually kind of sloppy. He's just huge, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Something came up, Michael Post. Something came up with his business, and it requires all of his time. He's also oh, um, who are you talking about, Frank or whatever? Recognize you? Yeah. No, I recognize. <coughs> he's straight. He's just got some stuff. He's taking a break. Yeah, we'll be back. Wife probably got on him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can say that. He'll be back, though. No, no, no worries. You going to watch the uh, Ryan to go fight? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yo, Shane Mosley Jr. is fighting Rosado on that card, man. I'm really, I want to watch that fight. Shane Mosley Jr. is going to get brutalized. I got to, I got to check and see uh, what weight that's at. Let's check that right now, actually. I can't. I can't believe Rosado would even take that fight. He is definitely due a yeah better opponent than Shane Mosley Jr. I'm glad to see Rosado like getting his. You know, his name rising. The eight pounds. Wow. Yeah, Shane Mosley's fucking in for it. <laughs> He's 17 and four with a with less than a 50% KO ratio. 
and he's going to fight Rosado at super middleweight. Jesus. This kid, Shane, what are you doing with your kid, man? You're going to get him killed. I get it. Shane Sr. really don't have anything to do with his career anymore, though. He kind of chased his dad up out of his uh, corner career or whatever. <laughs> Look at that skinny little neck, man. <laughs> Look at that skinny <laughs> little neck. Pencil neck motherfucker, man. Shit, and, and Rosado is a great example of a dude who took an absolute ass whooping against Triple G and still yeah. kept coming back and got better, man. Yeah, 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 true, true. Imagine if Mosley Jr. puts on a clinic. Yeah, doubt it, but yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> Where did he start at? Okay, he started at basically middleweight. Middleweight, middleweight bouncing around. I mean, he lost every round of Brandon Adams. And he hasn't fought anybody since. Lost to Quigley at middleweight. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's funny. What the what did he do to get this fight? Like what did he do to earn this fight or what did Rosado do to have to take such a shitty opponent? He had a Mangia fight, but he looked good. And he crushed Bechtemir, beat Jacobs, and got robbed. Yeah. I don't know. Rosado was in for it. That's a tough test for, for young Mosley, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A big step up, it seems. Yeah, it's, it's basically the best fighter he's ever fought. I mean, I believe it is. I don't think he's ever fought anyone. Oh, no. Because if you look at Rosado's resume, the experience that, you know, guys that he's fought and uh, compare him to the guys that, that who uh, mostly fought is a big difference in competition. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't believe Rosado has 14 L's on his resume. So many of them are bogus. Too. But that's the record of a dude that'll fight anybody, man. It's a Rocky record. A true Rocky. <laughs> Billy Kid fighting anybody. Going up against the brash, loudmouth, fucking American black dude. Whoops his ass. But don't get the decision. <laughs> He's been there multiple times. Yeah, let's see here. I mean, Brandon Adams, that's the best guy he's ever fought. Shane Mosley Jr., yeah. Rosado's but leaps and bounds the best opponent he's ever been in the ring with. Man, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls out. <laughs> he's going to get crushed. One more GOs, but they'll make enough off of them. Two fights. Is, but okay, they owe Triple G one more after this. After the Canelo fight. Three fights with the contract, but just don't let them go, especially if Canelo hurts them. Huh? Um, Pac Jr. with Patton Jr. 2023. Yeah. Ah. Anyways, what we got going on? Shane Mosley Jr. motivated as Rosado Clash nears, still eager to be a champ. Bro, give it a rest. Terrence Crawford calls for support in Ukraine. <laughs> what? I know. What the fuck? Like, what? Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That'd be one of those I would look at Terrence and be like, you know you don't give a fuck about Ukraine, exactly. man. Get the hell out of here, man. Exactly. Nico Walsh is added to the Valdez Shakur Stevenson card. <laughs> Nico Ali. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Myoto yeah. Marata confident and believes Golovkin has passed his prime. I, I put that dude in the same camp as um, Campbell Hatton, man. Just all name recognition. Yeah. Yeah. Spence's trainer. Athleticism is fleeting. Arrow is slow and steady. And fighters can't deal with it. I wouldn't call my guy slow. I, mean, I might call him a pressure fighter, but not slow. All right, so James said Arrow is boring. He wait now the same. So wait. It is? Derek James said, Arrow is boring. He throws basic technical punches, James told Brian Custer. People want to see the pizzazz and the flair, right? But that pizzazz and flair only lasts so long. Athleticism is fleeting. We were just talking about this. Athleticism is fleeting. You need technique and skills to have longevity in boxing. These guys, everybody wants to show their athleticism. Errol's Errol shows slow and steady. That wait, who's saying this? Derek James, his trainer. Man, you think these mofos don't watch your streams, man? <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what we've talked about. I think that is funny. We are living in an athletic era right now. What I mean by that is guys are switching from left hand to right hand. Guys are bouncing around the ring or whatever. If you think about this, that's all they have, their athleticism. Athleticism is fleeting. When you hear somebody answer an asinine question like that, that's not to say that Sugar Ray Leonard wasn't super athletic or Muhammad Ali wasn't super athletic because if you see them, they would bounce around forever, but they had skill and technique. That's the difference between them and the fighters of today. We're literally just talking about this. And we do talk about this all the time. Yes, yes, exactly. It is what it is. And a funny thing, I don't even... I really, like, I remember bringing this up back in the day, like 2015. Uh, well, actually, yeah, like 2014-15 with Pacquiao and Floyd. And, like, I'm sure it's been talked about before, obviously, in boxing gyms or whatever, but, like, I I made this, that whole topic right there, I made that shit like a giant conversation piece in boxing, you know, because people were talking too much about these guys running around pot shot and, like, they were something special, and I had to, like, break that shit down, like. Oh, man, that is nothing special. That's like athleticism and not even – it's one type of athleticism. You know what I mean? It's not even like – like, uh, again, what about like the decathlon, right? They, they call like these guys the best athletes, like uh, basketball players or football players or something, but can they who, – who wins the decathlon? You know, who are the guys who win the deca – who are the best decathletes of all time? Those are truly like the best. And I, dude, I've always brought this up. And I just saw uh, a trainer bring this up. I think it was, it was Buddy McGirt. Buddy McGirt brought it up. And I'm like, motherfucker stole my line. Like, totally stole my line. And like, <laughs> I always brought that up. Like, if if these guys are such fucking great athletes, then why aren't they out there winning the, the decathlon? Because that yeah. is like, the Olympic event that you know, signifies who actually is the greatest athlete on earth. That's what the event is for. Like, that's like um, the the transition guy. Uh, 
Because um, they're because they're not the best athletes. No, they're not. They're fucking fast twitchy. Yeah. And what can you do? Okay, so you can sprint fast and you can jump high. That's it. That's all you do. Like, what about the other guys who like? Because the, the 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 decathlon like it has like you know fast twitchy events. You know, it also has like uh, technical events. You know, it has swimming events. It has endurance events. Uh, it has everything to you know to cover like weightlifting, all that events. It's to cover the gamut to see who actually is the best athlete on earth. Not again, the guy who transitioned, um, the Kardashian dude. Uh, oh, um, Jenner. Jenner, yeah, like he. Uh, that's why he went into that that sport because he was like, because he was growing up, he was always a good athlete, and people would say like, "You're a real good athlete," blah blah blah. So he like looked into like what is the, the biggest challenge. Yeah, 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 and he found out like, oh, well, there's actually a, <clears throat> a, a you know like a a competition. To actually see who is the greatest athlete on earth, bar none. And he was like, that's what I want to win. And that's it. I want to be known as the greatest athlete on earth. Um, he, The first year he did it, he came in last place the in the Olympics. The very next year, I think it's because someone dropped out and he got bumped up and got to compete. Came in last place. He was trash. The very next year, he came back and crushed it and won. Uh, but there's a documentary on Netflix about him, uh, and it goes through like his whole childhood, all the Olympics, all that. It's that part of it's pretty cool. But he came back so fucking juiced. That's the only reason he won is because of steroids. Like everybody had a dad bod, and I'm not talking like that. I mean, they look like Ben Askren, like they had no <laughs> dad bods, and so did he. Then the next year, he comes back like fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's huge, big ball shoulders, six-pack chest. Like, he's diesel and wins. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. Then the next one, everybody's just like him. (laughs) It's like, oh, my God. He was just – he was never the best athlete on earth. He was just the first one to fucking – do the competition all juiced up. <laughs> but either way, like that's that's the best athlete. You know, like you don't talk about athleticism. Go look at who wins. You'll see who the best athletes are. So that that that, that shit is one type of athleticism. And it's a very small part. It's a very small part. It's not even like half of a great athlete. But it yeah, it's funny because I, I I like they might not even have heard it from me or whatever, but I I, I swear to God, man, I'm uh, like a lot of us we we will start these conversations and then they get spread around like other people start having them like I'll, like the uh, at the whole Kovalev Ward thing with the the low blows and then I went on that fucking rampage about the the you know the navel anything below the navel. The very next weekend on the PBC car main event, the referee's like, anything below the navel. I've never heard that in a, a in a ring, like uh, in the, the center of the ring, uh, final instructions. Never heard it before or since. But it happened then. It's like, oh, I wonder why. Because it became a, con- a like a piece of the con- conversation in the boxing world. People started talking about it. It's funny, though. Yeah, those punch <clears throat> and those punches hurt, man. Yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Bomb squad. <laughs> Fuck. But yeah, man, it's like uh I'm glad Derek James said that shit. But you know the funny thing is, like if if he get if his next fighter is one of these fucking run and pot shot run clinch guys, mm. don't call him a great fucking athlete and you know the, the, the that's the smart style. Like you, you know, he just start talking that guy up. Like he, you know, he won't he won't hold hold his uh, standards. You know, 
it'll just be like, you know, he's smart. This is well, his fucking hit. Building off of what Aldo said before, man, it's too easy to pay the bills nowadays fighting bums, bro. Too damn easy, man. Very fucking true. Very true. I mean, uh, another thing, you know, we were talking about that way back in the day. And then Angel Garcia came out and admitted it. Yeah. Why go fight a tough fight when we can fight two fights and make the same money? Two fights versus nobodies and make the same money. It's like, well, then why should I respect you? Like a dumbass, he admits that shit. I know. You're literally telling me you ain't shit. That's what you're telling me. You're you're scared, first of all, because you're afraid you'll fucking lose and lose that O. And you're telling me you're nothing but a bully. I don't respect bullies. Just don't, like... Just because you got boxing gloves on don't mean you can't be a bully, you know? If, if, if people really thought of boxing in terms of, of, of these people providing a product, right? Yeah. This is like a, a dude at the store telling you, well, why would I sell you this good American-made soda when I can get cheap Chinese shit at two for one? Holy it's, shit. It's a better deal for me. What? Do you, <laughs> how are you going to look at him? Like, motherfucker, please. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. That is great. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's can't put it any better. Yeah, nobody yeah, you, that shit, man. Yeah, you yeah. would say the exact same shit to him. Why are you selling me crap? Yeah, yeah, or go <laughs> fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah, the shit. You know, it's what you like. Yeah, same thing. But then if you criticize a fighter, it's you ain't ever been in that ring. Mm. What? Like, even if I wasn't, what does that matter? Like, what the fuck? Oh, so you better never criticize a fucking musician. You know, or you better never criticize no. a newscaster because you ain't been behind the desk. You know, you better yeah. never fucking criticize a, uh, anything, a store clerk, if you never worked a fucking register. Like anything. <laughs> yeah. Stupidest fucking. Uh, uh, you know, it's, the, it's an emotional uh, argument, man. Yeah, it's a childish argument. Yeah. It's no different than the, uh, the, the, you know, the tards that, you know, you start talking about, you know, uh, anything you know regarding socialism, you don't know what socialism is, really. <laughs> you know, it's like it's the exa- exact same shit, man. Now, yeah. so to be honest, it's more like they're selling memberships to fandoms now with these fighters, dude. They are. That is what it's like. You see, you fucking it, again. That's why I always say it's like these guys. They need their fighter to have a. I've always said this. They need their fighter to have a zero. So in their mind, they can build him up like he's some fucking comic book character who's damn, bro. Unbeatable. I was just gonna say that it's like they're superheroes to these people. Yeah, right? they are. They are. You hear the way they talk about like uh, they used to talk about AJ, for instance. It's mm-hmm. like he was a comic book character, or, or Canelo. It's like, dude, are you talking boxing, or are you talking fucking Marvel here? Like, what do you, you ever see the fools? You know, back when the Wilder craze was still going, riding high, they would actually come out and say, my king. And I was like, what? There you go. What? (laughs) 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 Fucking wild, man. There's definitely a strange mentality out there, man, that, that gravitates towards that stuff. Yeah, and it's it's you see it nowadays with everything. It's not even like just boxing. Like, um, you name a celebrity or like anyone famous, and they don't even have to be like a celeb celeb, but anybody famous, and they have these types of people. Yeah. They just do, man. Yeah, weatherman. You better not. You can't criticize the weatherman. You never. You were never a fucking meteorologist. <laughs> it's like what? What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but. Man, I, I wonder if some of these dudes would shake and cry if they were around their heroes. I swear <laughs> to God, if they were around their hero and their hero said, Get on your knees and open your yeah. mouth, fuck okay, it. they'd do it. Yeah, they'd be like, It's Canelo, man. What was I supposed to do? You <laughs> do no. That's what they said. They'll get, under, they'll get underneath and be like, as, as long as we stay boys, right? <laughs> Can I hang out with you afterwards? 
fucking weirdos, man. Yeah. Yeah, I remember a chick doing that. Will you stay the night? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Uh, I can, can I hang out afterwards? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it's so fucking weird, man. Dude, even like Again, anybody, like Don Lemon has these people. You know, Trump had them. Biden has them. Fucking Joe Rogan has them. Like every fighter, every actor. Like, it's nuts. Like, the celebrity worship is off the fucking charts. And it it doesn't stop with sports. Like, it's it might even be stronger in sports. Uh, basketball players, you know. I remember when I was young, I used to think, man, like, how could an antichrist actually pull it off, right? Like, oh. fooling the whole world. And now I'm like, oh, it's an easy gig. It sure <laughs> is. Where all you need is the media to promote you. Yep. And you did it. Boom. It's over. Yeah. yeah Canelo earned it. Dude. <laughs> Dude, that little fucking weirdo. Yeah. What do you think of his Bugatti? He earned it. Did you feel different standing next to the great Canelo? Like, oh, well, those aren't boxing fans, junkie. Really? Those those are fans of specific people but that happen to be boxers. Yeah, they're freaks. Yeah, Again, these are the dudes who, like, they will print out every fucking new picture they see of Canelo. I right, put them on their walls, or or every new picture they see or video they see, they're putting into a hard drive, like oh, like, like, crazy, bro. Yeah, crazy. I start I start going in. I'm like, yo, where's that Canelo centerfold? You got it yet? Yeah, like in the <laughs> '80s, these people would have been listed as like psychopaths, like stock. Yeah. Like no one talks like that about other men. These are forty year old men, thirty year old men talking about other men this way. Oh, and then I'm called a hater for not dick riding. It's like, what? <laughs> it's weird. Fucking weird, man. Did you see all that uh, Lee Selby retired? No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh-uh. Yeah, 35 years old, man. He's calling it quits. He did just get stopped by uh, Gustavo Lemos. Last month, he ain't got the guts for it anymore. Yeah, he's probably like, "Fuck this shit, I got money." <laughs> Why am I fucking getting cracked in the head for? Made fucking money too. Yeah. Well, the one thing about them English or you know UK fighters or whatever, they make good money. Oh, over there, holy shit, bro! It's like watching like 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 the NBA over there or something, man. Just full stadiums. Yeah, even like always sold out tenders over there like you know they fucking they're set for life it's wild you know oh, like the right B levels yeah 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 that over here Floyd and Canelo fans are bad yeah I mean there's some of the worst for sure Wilder fans were crazy uh, at least they've learned to be quiet though yeah, <laughs> they did. But I, I remember watching, there was some video of people passing around. Some dude was driving in a car. I guess he's a YouTuber. He was driving in a car after uh, Wilder lost this last one. And he said, you know, he goes, I don't care. He's still my king. <laughs> okay. I'll never forget that. I don't care. Yeah. He's still my king. Like, why? We know what's going on in them pants. Oh my god. Oh, creeps. Yeah, well that's the thing, man. Yeah, the worst of the people who think Floyd's unbeatable. That's the thing. As long as they have that O, they can create this imaginary like like, to them, Floyd, like, we know what Floyd is. Like, we know what he's good at, what he's not. We know exactly, basically, his level. To them, it's, like, he's not even Floyd. He's some creation that they made up in their head. Like, he's a thousand times better than, than he actually is because in, in their head, like, he'd be Wolverine. 
You know what I mean? Like, you know, St. Floyd, how dare you blaspheme the saint? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's them, bro. Take out a fucking, if the Navy SEALs went to his mansion to get him, he'd win. <laughs> oh, the mental cases, man. Mental cases. And it sucks because you got so many of these people in the boxing like sphere that you know they they really fucking ruin the sport because they 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 uh they give these fighters excuses to not take fights. They give these fighters no, yeah, it's corruption, man. <laughs> Oh, so and so didn't fight so and so, uh, which is a duck, and they're like, "Oh, it's not a duck because." And it's like, "Oh my god, man! Like you'll, yeah. you'll never get the fights we want when they have a giant segment of the fans that are like these people." <sighs> to to me, there is nothing worse than a liar, man. Yeah, maybe second is a thief, you know, but at least a thief could be. I think a thief is better than a liar. Honestly. Like, 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 like more honest in a certain sense, right? Like, like they could be somebody that a thief and a liar. <laughs> right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you know, they, they they could steal out of necessity and kind of be like, yeah, you know what? This this is what I gotta do. That, at least that's honest out of them, right? But liars, you or if they get caught, they'll own up to it. Right. I'm sorry. I from blah blah blah. Whatever. Yeah. I With swear, liars, yeah, you're facing <laughs> insanity. Well, there's those ones like pathological liars who right. kind of weave their own little stories they create. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's like like liars who will use. I mean, this goes for that that other that, that type of liar as well. But they they'll use their own lies to like manipulate people to get things out of them and shit. Like to me, that that's fucking Satan. Like that's the devil. Like uh, that's the devil to me, man. It really is. Yeah. Malicious behavior. Yeah, Rod. I, so I heard someone say it once, and I forget exactly where. It could have been a fucking Metallica song, for all I know. But <laughs> the line, the line basically went, you know, a liar murders the world. Yeah. Oh. And when you really think about that, it's like, yeah, like it just, just starts destroying trust everywhere. And that's what destroys the world. Yep. What do they always talk about with like tight knit communities, a trust factor? Yeah. As soon as that trust factor is gone, everyone's now paranoid. Everyone's, you know, blaming each other. Everyone's weary of each other. All of a sudden, there's no, um, there is no community. Mm hmm. Gone. Yeah. And that's <laughs> that's like uh like we developed like these like sub subcultures uh of like you know us and this this little community we have built in the boxing so called community, but the boxing community of like fans anyway, not necessarily like trainers, fighters, but like boxing fans and even journalists, really, um, there there really is no community, you know, because you can't like, get more often than not, you can't even have an honest conversation, right? You really can't. Wow, it's something that if you let it fester and grow, it gets to the point where it starts to claim truth. Well, Oh, that's great because right? it, no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if you've uh, if you notice that that is what has happened, exactly, because this started, you know, what like two thousand and ten ish, and it's just snowballed and snowballed, and now the lie is the truth. Yeah, you're you're the crazy one if you speak the truth. Yeah, yeah, you are the fucking crazy one if you speak the truth. How many times have we heard these people say, like, we use just Golovkin Canelo for an example. Like, yeah, uh, you're right. I, I also had Golovkin beating Canelo both times, but Golovkin lost. Like, like <laughs> Canelo's the better fighter. 
Like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, what, what you even, we all agree, yeah. even you, a Canelo fan, you're like, yeah, he lost twice to this guy, but he's the better fighter? Like, what? It's like, the truth uh, isn't the truth. The lie is the truth. Even though they know, they know that it's not the truth, but no. Nah. So, they're so spun. It's yeah, it's like you said, it's like talking to someone that basically acknowledges your points and then it's like, well, Triple G's still the one with an L on his record. <laughs> and you're just like, What? But like, but that's what we're talking about. Like, but yeah. that isn't real, but it is. Like, oh my god. I get it like on paper, but he did beat the guy twice. You even agree, yeah, but Canelo's better. It's like, what the- <laughs> oh my god, you it's, it's like again, you can't have a conversation. Uh, that's when you see the dumb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> these are the same people who tell you they're fucking highly intelligent too. Oh yeah, yeah. you know. And for sociopaths. me, they're fucking like sociopaths. Like for me, like once I spot that in someone, man, like like that log, you know, that what they call that logic deficit, I start to slowly back away. Hell yeah. Okay. And I'm like, all right, man, it's been good talking to you. Like, you know, I'll catch you around. Like, that type of shit, man. Dude, it's scary because there's, like, dudes that I grew up with, like, from you know, 13 onwards to like, basically together every day almost from, like, 13 to you know, 25, whatever, right? And then you, you you slowly drift apart or whatever, family, whatnot. And, uh, like, I you still keep in touch, obviously. Still hang out every now and then, but... Over time, I started to, and we we thought identical. Like we we hung out because we saw everything the same. We would sit there and talk about things and figure it all out and like get to the truth of shit, just like we do here, basically. But you know, like so these my my dudes growing up. But now I I go around them and they're gone. They're gone. Like hmm. they didn't they didn't keep like. They didn't persevere. Yeah. 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 Persevere and keep that, whatever that is, like the um, ability to question and figure shit out. They didn't keep it. It, it, They got eaten up. They got eaten away. Yeah. I think think that it, it takes the ability to conquer fear, to, to always stick to the truth, man. Right, because if you think about it, you know, if the devil is against the truth, he's gonna come up against you with some pretty nasty and scary shit at some point, right? Where 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 most of these people go, oh, you know what? I'll I'll, I'll bend the knee. It's cool. We're cool, right? Yeah. yeah, and then I look back on it like, uh, and they weren't, um, they were never like leaders, you know. Like they, they had to have, they had to have somebody else kind of take the lead. Like I, one guy I knew, like he was, he was a hippie, he was a raver, he was like a heavy metal dude, he was a hip hopper, he was a, um, uh, uh, like every subculture there was for like a year, he'd be everything like. This year he's that. This year he's that. It's like he was a follower, like completely whatever he thought he should be. Right. You know, he would, like, and it's like, man. And I, I kind of like, I talked to him about this back then, and I got him like out of it, and he started developing like his self. But then it seems like it vanished. Yeah. Hmm. And now he's like. Dude, every like he he taught me certain beliefs back then, and now he don't even believe it. Or like, you know, he don't go along with it now. He's, dude, it's nuts. It's fucking nuts. That's why I liked it so much when uh, Game of Thrones put forth that concept about bending the knee. You I know, like 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 that battle of will. You know, between you and like someone more powerful. Yeah. You know, it's the whole thing about, you know, do what I tell you or you're fucked. Yeah. And and it's the same thing in life, man. It's the same thing, you know, in, the, in between good and evil, man. Yeah. 
I'm just so fucking glad that what, however that happens, whatever it is that I was like blessed with the ability to like stand up. I don't know how you get it. I mean, I, I credited a lot to my family, honestly, because they, they, they didn't take any shit. Yeah. I think I think that your love has to be greater than your hate. And not in any dumb sense like the the left uses it, right? Yeah. Where they're talking about, oh, love someone's hate. You know, no, no, no. I'm talking about or or your no, actually no better, yeah. Let me let me take that back. Your love has to be greater than your fear. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and a lot of it comes down to like fear of like excommunication, you know? Fear of not fitting in, fear of not being in a community. Well, and going back to the whole thing about ego based fighters, when they're up against that fear, that's where they crumble. Uh huh. Right? Absolutely. Because, yeah. because they don't have love for something greater that's going to make them overcome. Yep. And we talk about that all the time. You know, some of the greatest fighters ever, most of the real goats, they're, they're fighting for something greater than themselves. Right. It wasn't their own ego. Because you see these ego fighters who it's like they're they're very narcissistic and it's only about themselves. Well, then when you get like really put into that corner, it's easy for you. You know, you, you have to take an ego check, but they're like they can um, they'll back up out of it, fold, quit, take the L, whatever. But then afterwards, they'll just spin a new lie as to why they lost or they didn't really lose like a T.O. or something like I didn't really lose. I didn't really lose. Like, you know, it's the same thing. So that they're willing, you know, if you're fighting for something greater than yourself, you're just, I will go through whatever and I won't stop. Well, and, and they don't realize that, you know, like, like it's, it's, it's a little hard to explain, but you know, when you're an egotistical person, right. When you're a narcissist, it's a relationship of, you know, satisfy me, like pleasure me, right? Like give me what I'm looking for, which is that constant reward and, and satisfaction of knowing that you're better than someone else or you're the best at this or that, right? Absolutely. And 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 that's a trap. Because eventually that relationship flips. Sure and does. now and now you're the slave to the ego. <laughs> Yeah, because it starts to become something that you value the most, and you're going to do whatever it takes to maintain that image, that oh. ego that you have, right? And that's where you get these dudes that just destroy the sport because they're like, yeah, I got a, you know, an O to keep. I'm not going to take a risk. I'm going to fight whoever I want to fight, and I'm going to still get paid and, you know, blah, 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 right? It, 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 you know, I, I'm have, I'm enjoying this conversation, man, because I think we're we're reaching some levels here as to what really motivates people like this, man. Yeah, it's like uh, I love this this kind of talk. That's like uh, when I even came back this time, like um, before, like I would touch on this kind of stuff, but never go all that deep. But uh, you know, more surface level of it. But explain it, but still surface level. But then when mm -hmm. I came back i was because now i was all already on like the mental kick big time because i started just seeing too much and i was like i gotta figure all this shit out yeah. <laughs> i started getting a, and i was starting to get a better understanding of it so then i was like really intrigued and wanted to understand it more and even when i came back i was like man like to me like I, I did the whole sweet science thing breaking down styles like i got that fucking figured out it's there's a, way more to this shit, and it's it's well, boxing is ninety percent mental, right? So well, I gotta figure out. I got ten percent of it down. Now there's ninety percent I gotta go figure out. And like, yeah, I really um, I really like you know diving into this stuff, man. It's uh, it helps me. You know? Bro, I don't really I... understand it, but it just helps me in life too. Yeah. And I think it's all part of the uh, of the fighting philosophy, for sure. Right? Like like the philosophy of boxing, of, pu of pugilism, bro. Like, what what's really driving you, and is that the proper thing? 
yeah. that that's going to make you great or, or what you're seeking to be like a champion, right? Yeah, even with like Customato, like um, he had his own little system, like fighting system, but also he was like a psychologist. Yeah. Like, and he knew that the psychology was fucking way more important than the system. Yeah. The system's pretty easy. You can figure that out in a fucking week. If you <laughs> spend a hard week, you can break that down and figure out all the ins and outs. Yeah. And, then, and then, like, fine tune it over time or whatnot. But the, the psychology of it, that takes years, years. Learning to face your fears, man, that's not something that a lot of people do. No, they run from it. They run yeah. From it. They and make excuses. Yeah, they look for someone else's help or the, to hide behind somebody else. Man. The, again, there's someone rec someone just recommended the, that book to me, which uh, I meant to procrastinating, but I'll order it soon. The Gift of Fear. It's about um, like the fear of humans that uh, helped us survive for so long. Um, oh, yeah, you mentioned that. Again, it, it, it's not just like gut instinct, but it's also like where does that come from? Like right. the energies, you know, the so-called like metaphysical, spiritual, all that, man. Apparently it gets real deep into all this shit. Can't wait to read it. It's what we always talk about, right? So apparently yeah. a book out here, like it goes really fucking deep into it. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Because I don't think people understand and in boxing and in life, period, like fear is what drives everybody. That's what drives you. I mean, the fear of like um, making sure, like the, being scared that you're not going to be able to provide for your family or for yourself, even or you know, um, you know, fear is just a large part of it. Whether it's people always say like pussy drives it. It's like no, it's not true. But like yeah. in the fear of well, maybe not finding a mate or whatever, you know. So it still even comes down to fear, like fear, ego, all, and then. Where does that like again? Like, we've all experienced that at least once or twice. Where someone <clears throat> told you, like, was something in you was able to predict the future, and we can't understand it. You know, I I don't understand it. I, I just chalk it up to like, God, um, yeah. like a guardian angel or something, which is still God. But how could my body? Like know what was gonna happen in the future, um, like what what is that energy? Like to me, it's almost like you know I look at like the physics uh, of it, how there's you know like the web like uh, all around us, right? Mm -hmm. Like was <clears throat> how did that energy like from so, some a guy or some, this other guy or whatever? Like, how in the fuck was all of that able to understand what was going to happen and the message get transferred into my being? It's like, dude, man, I, I it's just something that really <laughs> ever since is like just weighing so heavy on my mind. Like, where does this come from? Like, and I try to get scientific with it and understand like the physics and whatnot, but again, what is all of that? Like that, that's God. Like, there's no way that. Yeah, higher dimensions. Yeah. Like, and yeah. then, oh, and like how they talk about, like, um, physics proves that there are four dimensions, but we can only see three. There's another dimension out there, like, here with us right now, but we can't see it. And in the Bible, that's supposed to be like the spiritual realm with like good and evil battling it out, like, right around us. And we just don't see it. I've never had a problem between science and, and what people call religion. Yeah. To me, it's always been like, yeah, you you obviously don't have the enough logic to make sense of it. Yes. Exactly. But 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 to me, it's not like I look, you know, like the ones that look at things about God and they're like, oh, you believe in all that magic. And it's yeah. like, that shows how dumb you are. Don't you believe in physics and like all this other right. shit? 
Like, you know, that, that's kind of magical too, right? Like, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and and, and, and exactly God, like God, you know. It's like it's, Morpheus said to Neo, right? What is reality? What you would perceive with your electrical impulses to the brain? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, when you experience, again, when I was like, I used to question all this, like, and I wasn't sure if I believed because I had no, like, actual experiences. Like, it was like, I had to have pure faith. Like, pure faith because I had no fucking experiences. But, you know, 25, 26, I didn't even have any. But, well, it was about that. It was maybe like 26, 27. Then I had one. Or, you know, had a, started having a few. And then it's like, oh, okay. I get it. I get it. Oh, my God. Oh, guys. You know how I talked about, dude, like, uh, seeing dude's face change? There was, there is a music producer named Smooth B, okay? He just did an interview where he talks about, he was a producer for Tupac. He was, he's a, did the, the, the music, some of his music. And he was talking about, he was at a club with him and three, three or four chicks or whatever uh, came up to them and he's, he sees one of the chicks like uh, face change. Like uh, he brings up devil's advocate too. He's like, no, not just like devil's advocate, but almost. And he's like, her face fucking changed. And then he, he goes, and as I look back and like po focus, it goes back to normal. And then like I'm looking away, talking to the chick next door, and it starts again. And he looks back and he's like seeing it this time. And then it, it goes back to normal. And he he chased them away. And he's like, to him, he's like, that chick was like basically like a demon, you know, like uh, hmm. for trying to harm harm us, however, but and dude in the comment section is like the big thing like a whole and I, I i even started typing a comment like dude i'm so glad you brought this up cuz uh hopefully this could give maybe other people the 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 bravery to talk about what they have experienced and then i i didn't even leave it cuz i started just reading the comments and half of them are like, he's crazy, he's fucking mental. And then the other half are like, I experienced this, and I experienced that, and this. And Half of them are like people giving their experiences of it. And I'm like, yes! Like, yes! Hmm. Like, it is a thing. It is a thing, man. And I, 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 can, go, um, I can go back to the video and, and bring it up, because some of it... Uh, well, <clears throat> you know, if the devil is a shapeshifter, how do you know when he's standing next to you? Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. And it's like sometimes the mask slips. You know, that's what they say, right? Sometimes the mask slips. Yeah, I saw that BDA where that dude from Smashing Pumpkins I never basically that. started saying that, yeah, some record industry, somebody like started wow. transforming in front of him. No way. Yeah. Wow. You know, and when he was pressed, you know, he kind of stopped talking about it. He's like, yeah, I can't really get into it. Surprised oh. he said that much. Yeah. Man, I got to see that. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. And I wasn't on, I wasn't fucking high or drunk or nothing. Like that's, what people always want to go to, or do you got mental illness? Like, no, not at all. And I saw it twice, two different people. Yeah, it's like, I mean, believe me or not, I don't care. I know. It's, that's how, like, too many experiences to where like, it's like how I learned, like, oh, I better get my shit in order because there is something way greater than us. And then I'm like, if there's true evil in this world, which I know for sure there is, there's, and we all know that, there's clearly true good. So, you know, uh, this world's way deeper than we can ever, ever understand. And people walk around like fucking drones. Like, I gotta buy the new Supreme shirt. <laughs> you know, or, 
I got to get that Toyota. It's just fucking brain dead, man. I got to watch the game on Sunday. It's like, oh, my God, man. <laughs> or then you'll talk to someone about this, and they'll just tell you, like, oh, yeah, in high school, like, I saw this car turn into a fucking demon, and it's like, they're, they're just going to be, like, these wild, insane, pathological liar-type fucking retarded stories. And you're like, yeah, good. I wasn't lying, though, buddy. Like, so, but I get it. You're trying to one-up me or something. I, I get it. <laughs> it's not what it is. Yeah, you could tell. You could won't. tell if somebody's being genuine or not. Yeah, like my my um. Luckily, I could, my my mom. I can talk to about this. My stepdad. I can talk to about this shit. Like, but with my like um, couple of my buddies, I can. A couple of my buddies, I can. And a couple of them, like. Dude, I don't know. It's like their brains have been cooked. Yeah, and they're not even like you know, they don't even uh they don't abuse their brains or nothing, but I swear like society and media has like cooked their brain. <laughs> they can only I don't know, it's hard to even explain, man. I try saying like they, they can only even like focus on like five subjects. Like something like Some that. Some people are completely brainwashed. Yeah. They are. They're like brain dead. They don't even have the ability for like critical thinking. It's, it's scary. I can talk to my son about this, thankfully, because he experienced something with me the one time, which was like, I'm so happy it happened. And I let him bring it up. I felt it, but I, 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 I was like, am I the only one feeling this? And then he brought it up. I was like, yes! Like, okay, I'm thinking. And that's how another thing where how can two people feel the exact same fucking thing? Like, and then there was a chick there. He didn't feel it at all. Probably because she ain't in tune. But mm -hmm. and my son described it the exact same way I was thinking it. Yeah, I mean, it felt like there was like a fucking cloud go over us of like pure like scary negative it was scary like i even asked him like i was like you think i should go outside and check it out he was like no like it was that kind of scary and it, it just felt like it was slowly going over us and passed it was so weird man it was so fucking weird shape shifters and you know about the no V real no, yeah the real, the real no. They only got a few things to talk. About. <clears throat> useless, yeah, exactly, man. Again, man, the way I experienced like sleep paralysis for the first time too, dude. And I swear, like people, like you, you would think like because I've looked it up and they say, well, like you're you're kind of dreaming while you're awake. But how come everyone experiences like one of the same four things? If I'm dreaming while I'm awake, wouldn't my dreams be a little different every time? Why does an African dude in some village that's never even saw a television have the exact same fucking dream as me? Or some little Asian guy in the jungle, uh, you know, chopping bamboo down all day, have the exact same dream as me? And everybody for thousands of years has had the exact same dream as me. It's like, no, 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 no. It ain't fucking dreams, my man. There's something else going on there. And to me, I think you're kind of just in tune with, like, that other dimension, man. You really are. <laughs> you have to be. You have to be. Everyone wouldn't have the exact same experiences. It's like one of five things. And everyone experiences one of them. Fucking nuts. But the this chick was telling me about it. I, me and my buddy called her Cuckoo. I crashed at her house. Boom. It happened. And it was this fucking black figure hovering over me. And I was like, that fucker was following you. And now you put him on me. You bitch. Like, I, <laughs> what happened, man? It's not cool. It's not cool. Realize you weren't so Cuckoo, though, eh? When that yeah, was I, 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 I was terrified. I couldn't wait to talk to her about it, too. <laughs> she became a psychiatrist after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we broke it down hard the next morning. Like, what the fuck? It wasn't even the next morning. 
like four in the morning. She can feel you all in the bed. No, or it ended, whatever. And I think, you know how like uh, those old like alien things, people would be like, I was paralyzed. And it was like, you know, it was at the foot of my bed or whatever, blah, blah, blah. They were, they weren't aliens. They were in sleep paralysis. That's all. They were in a sleep paralysis experience and same shit everyone else did. But when they woke up because whatever, they're obsessed with aliens or something, or that's what their brain, that was their go-to. They didn't have any reference. That's what they attributed it to. Like aliens, sleep fucking paralysis demon. I don't know. And then you you realize there's so much going on and it's hard to then go and like live on like talk to other people about the dumbest shit. Like it's like man, I'm living, so- I'm living on a different plane. You know, yeah. it's like I really am. Yeah, you feel like a different being almost. Yeah, not the shit like experiencing two different types of lives. Like, fuck. It's like, yeah, it's like the aliens when you when you try to talk to them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, it is. It's like the movie They Live. They're like, <laughs> it is. Yeah, like all they could, and you try yeah. to talk about anything deep, like even just historical or anything, they just can't. They just use their brain for nothing. They're not talking about anything that, that that's relevant, that's really relevant to them. You know, all, you they know said, all, they, all they could talk about is, is sport, what what they saw on their television show, you know? That's all they you know, can you know, get around real yeah. things. You know what's great about They Live is that scene where uh, Roddy Piper and um, I think it's David Keith, you know, are going at it in the alley. That's symbolic of what it's like trying to convince somebody, right? Yes, yes. It's and a knockdown right? drag out. Like he's awake, he saw this or had experiences or whatever, and he has to live amongst people who are asleep. Like again, this isn't something new. This has always been going on. This has always been going on. You know, yeah. it's not like that movie was just like someone thought it up. No, they were experiencing it and they put it into a movie. But people look, when I was young, I was just like, wow, that's interesting. Whoever thought of that, that's a cool idea. Like, no, it's not an idea. It's what the fuck is going on. Some people are. Yeah, like, you know how many idiots wouldn't get that movie if you showed it to them? You yeah. know what I mean? They would not even comprehend it. They'd just be like, oh, that's a cool alien movie or something. Cool science. Movie. That's all they'd say about it, you know? They wouldn't even get the the uh, the metaphors or the, the deeper meaning to it, you know? Yeah, I'm not into that Star Wars stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I just think of. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah, me neither, bro. Me neither. Yeah. Had a relative who had a bedroom in his house that was probably cursed. Literally everyone who slept there either had nightmares or sleep paralysis. This was before I was religious. I think you told me about that, man. There's this phenomenon where thousands of people around the world see the same face of some strange man in their dreams. Apparently it happened. I've heard of that. I've heard of that. What is sleep paralysis? Um, (laughs) um, I mean, uh, you, you you fall asleep, whatever. You open your eyes. You're awake, but you can't move. And everything's like slightly distorted. Like everything is a little bit distorted. Sometimes you won't see anything and you'll feel something. Uh, so sometimes you won't even feel anything. Sometimes you'll feel like an evil presence, though. Then sometimes you'll see some people see BDA, saw the old hag. Some people see an old hag, like an old fucking disgusting old lady, a like creepy, scary old lady. Never experienced that. So I'm experienced just this like black figure. Like black is fucking black. Like black, black, black. Like no seeing through it at all. It's almost like a shadow man, but super like the black hole of black. Um, and it's so fucking scary. And you can tell it's an evil thing. Um, and it slowly will just keep coming up to you, get coming up to you. And it's, it's just what like. 
it comes right up to you. Um, I had one time it just, I was on my bed and it was just like bending over, coming closer and closer. Like it was about to like kiss me or something or eat me, suck my soul out of me or whatever. And it was like right fucking here. I fucking woke up. Boom. Uh, that one was terrifying. I've had where I felt like a German shepherd or something like gnawing on me. I could feel its hot breath. The fucking saliva it wasn't biting hard. Just like, like a slightly gnawing on my hands. Um, that was fucking terrifying. Uh, hey, Anthony, I sleep paralysis one time. And he brought up the fucking dogs. He brought up dogs. I was like, oh, my God, dude. And I didn't say shit to him about it. And he brought it up first. And then I was like, what the fuck? You experienced that shit, too? Uh, but, yeah, and it's scary as shit. Yeah, demonic manifestation. For real, for real, man. You can, like, there's some shit out there, dude. And this ain't like just the, again, like African villagers uh, deep in the jungles of Asia, they experience the exact same thing. Oh, everybody experiences like one of the same four things. And it's been going on thousands of years. Like there's stories and paintings dating fucking from BC. Yeah, Anthony, I experienced that one where you mentioned where the dark shadow passes over you, and then the uh, like you feel like a weight on your on your chest, kind of like pushing you down. I yeah. felt that in, in Mexico. They call it "se te subió muerto," and uh, it's hard to translate that in the English, but it's, it's the same thing, like the old hag syndrome. And um, yeah, I remember I couldn't speak, and I I was trying to I was call call for help and i couldn't move while this was happening i remember hey. thinking to myself you know please god you know please creator like, help me <laughs> exactly man seriously man and and that's when it, i i i immediately was able to move again uh guerrero what does it roughly translate to brother like in um the english like what that thing you said someone dead climbed oh. on your chest yeah like the the rough translation is like yeah, basically, like it's like somebody, like a dead person, uh, creeped like creeped onto you or, or creeped onto you, yeah. okay, oh, something like that. Man, that's, that's, that's that's crazy, bro. That's deep. Timothy Figueroa says, "Grant, what was that?" Says his grandmother had a few sleep paralysis episodes. Said she saw a dark figure sit on her chest. Yeah, why? Why do we all experience the same thing? If it's a dream, why aren't we dreaming different things? Why does? Why is there always dogs, old hag, or the shadow man? It's three things. Like why? Or the fourth is like a presence. Fifth is nothing but you're still paralyzed why why now if it's dreams wouldn't i dream of like i don't know my ceiling opening up and a fucking sky above me or something once or somebody they everyone experiences the same things across the globe and through fucking history it's like that can't be just dreams so another man, how would I'd love to hear? Like, how how would you explain it? Because you know you've experienced it as well, and you're not sure um, that it's like supernatural or whatever. Uh, you want to say it's more like scientific, I guess. But what would your what would be your scientific explanation as to why everyone experiences the same thing? Yeah, apparently it is being. That's what that's what science. But science can't explain it. They try to say it's. You know, your body is still, um, you woke up, but your body is still stuck in REM. And when you're in REM, your body is paralyzed. But they can't prove that. That's their theory. But again, why does everyone experience the same thing when in that? There's not like a hundred different scenarios. It's a couple. It's a couple. Well, I would never force it on myself. Whoa. <laughs> the only time I had what I think was sleep paralysis, the dark figure was basically in my TV and it screamed and then I woke up. 
Yeah, this is it right here, Kyle. I saw a dark figure standing over my bed last time I had sleep paralysis. And one time I seen a demon in my dream. Well, yeah, uh, the, still about the sleep paralysis. But yeah, it's the fucking dark figure thing. And it's you, you, your body feels like a seriously evil presence. It's never like good. And I get it, like maybe you're just scared. Uh, but still, like, I know what it is. Like when I have it, I know what I'm in. Like I'm like, fuck, here we go again. So like, I shouldn't be scared. I know what it is. Man, boy, I'm scared. I don't know. I'll have healthy sleep, and if it still happens, how many people in the chat have had a like a gut instinct? Like your gut tells you something, and you don't listen, and then something bad actually happens, or whatever. You know, you wish you would have listened to it. Yeah, I've had that. Yeah, what is that? Like, that's something. What is that? How could your body know something in the future was going to happen? Your body was trying to warn you that something bad was going to happen. How's that fucking possible? How? How is that not supernatural? Because it's not just like you're standing with somebody and you get like a bad feeling about him or whatever. No, it's you're alone or whatever, and you get like a bad feeling, and hours later, it makes sense. You're like, what the fuck? How was the world able to tell you? Yeah, like a premonition of some sorts. Oh, that's it. That's it, Hands of Dynamite. I saw a Slender Man type dark figure thing staring me down at the side of my bed. Wearing a tuxedo? I was frozen for a moment and then forced myself back to sleep. <laughs> uh, some people have said they've been able to fall back asleep. I've never been able to fall back asleep. Yeah, Guido voice, like an intuition of some sort. What is that, though? Like, how do you, what is giving you it? You know, where does it come from? Even if you want to get scientific with it, it's still some, it's beyond. Like the normal realm. It's something else. So what they call the fourth. What physics calls the fourth dimension. And what the Bible calls the other world. That's happening simultaneous to our world. Like when the Bible explained all this shit. Physics hadn't uh, understood it yet. But now mathematics and physics says that there is another dimension going on simultaneous to ours. And we just can't see it. That's why the ancients thought their brains, their brain was in their guts. Makes sense. I've had that gut feeling, didn't listen. My phone was going off to people telling me to come home out of nowhere, just a bunch of signs I ignored, and I regretted it. <laughs> exactly, man, exactly. Yeah. And you know now, like hindsight, you know what was happening. But again, and I, I guarantee you, you get that feeling again, you're not ignoring it. I, I sure won't. And I advise nobody to ever go against their gut instinct. You get that shit for a reason. Think of it as a guardian angel saving your life. Yo, you think Rolly is talking a lot of shit now, man. Listen to this. I think it's the easiest fight of my life. And that's dead honest coming from my heart, Romero said, about Gervonta Davis. That's the easiest fight of my life, and people don't realize that. But I know what's about to happen, so trust me. Easiest fight of my life. 
I don't want to give really too much of what details why, but easiest fight of my life. I already won. Damn. This dude. Oh. I, I love it, man. That's what I like to hear. That's that confidence you like to hear. Yeah. <laughs> He's crazy, man. But, but like you said, though, you like that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that confidence. That's how. He's going to win, man. He's going to win. If he keeps that confidence up, he's more than likely going to win. You don't hear too many people say, you know what's about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> right? Usually when you hear something like that, it might make you pause for a second and be like, all right, what's up here? What was this we've got planned? Yeah. Yeah. And you know that ain't uh, sitting well with Tank. He's hearing yeah. that shit like, ah. <laughs> Take on yeah. all the doubts in the world. Yeah. And this guy's over here like, it's already done. I already won. <laughs> <laughs> That's the equivalent of like, hey, woman. Hey, woman. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah Nathan, anybody, you can, anyone can join. You just got to click that link in the chat. You know what, Matt? I used to have deja vu all the time, too. And you know what? I haven't had it in a long time either. Yeah, me neither. Really? What's that about? Yeah, yeah. I haven't experienced I still, I still have it to this day. Not as regularly, but I, I do have it. I wish I could have it again. I do. I used to probably had it, it I probably had it a few months ago, bro. Do you have deja, deja vu where it's like multiple times, like of the same thing? You get me? Like, it, it, like it, different times, like I used to. If this is what you're referring to, like, uh, there was a set of stairs in my house, and when I'd yeah. walk up them, I used to get deja vu all the time of the like, same situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Sometimes I'll get like the, the I felt like I've had deja vu about the situation multiple times, yeah, dude. I haven't gotten deja vu in fucking forever. I used to get it all the time. World went crazy after 2012. We entered a different alternative universe. Is that a, yeah. well, you, you guys know what the LHC is? Uh-uh. I'm that's the, of it. That's oh, the oh. Uh, yeah, that's the Large Hadron Collider. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, you know, there's enough threads out there on different forums talking about stuff like that where they're like, yeah. Every time they turn that thing up to full power and start creating mini black holes, they start seeing all sorts of weird shit appear. So you never know, man. These people could be unleashing shit. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, that, that thing is scary, man. Who knows what the fuck they did to us. Is that what you were going to talk uh, say, uh, Jed? Yeah. Um, All right, I found something about the Vril. Is the, is the Vril attached to the Nazis? Because the myth of Vril was quickly co-opted by the same Victorian mystics who inspired it. Uh, it says... Devices and not connected, Nate. <laughs> then passed down into the hands of the nativist German cults. One of them, the, the Thule Society, backed Hitler and the Nazis after the war. Writers and pro uh, occultists, notwithstanding something called the Vril Society, had actually engineered his rise in a 1960s book. What the fuck is the Vril? And in Jersey sits the Church of Vrilology, a neo-Norse cult led by a Joe Pesci-like figure <laughs> named the Prophet <laughs> of Betty, teaching Vril abetted positive thinking techniques. Also, Virology is not for everyone. It is a new Bostian form for European man and woman, and they are running everything. Um, the fuck is, is the Vril like a cult? Something. 
Here we go. Oh, or not. German secret society believed that whoever passed the Vril first of uh, Vril force could conquer the world and meet the master race from the earth's inferior as equals. Well, I've done it. Come get me. <laughs> <laughs> Make me an elite. The Thule Society and the Black Sun and shows the swastika, the hooked cross, as its symbol of worship of the Black Sun. While these societies continue, these societies borrowed some concepts and rites from theosophists, Rastacrucians, and various hermetic groups, they placed special emphasis on the innate mystical powers of the Aryan race, the Vril and its brother societies maintained the Germanic, Nordic, Teutonic people were of Aryan origin and that Christianity had destroyed the power of the Teutonic civilization. Uh, a medium in the Vril society began claiming spirit messages originating from Aryan aliens whose home star was Alder Barin, Orsic, and other medium, Sigrin, learned that the aliens spoke of two classes of people on their world, the master race, subservient planetary race that had evolved through mutation and climate changes. Half a billion years ago, the Aryans, also known as the Elohim, or Elder Race, began to colonize our solar system. The Vril Lodge believed that whoever... What the fuck? You think the Nazis really believed in this shit? I know they were occultists, but how deep did they go? No, who knows? Were they even occultists? That's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't know what to believe, man. No, we don't. It's like the nation of Islam, but for white people. Is, it, is that what it is, Chuck? They say UFOs are demons. How about them fucking UFOs off the coast of San Diego? Um, that the fighter pilots fucking spotted. Like the Tic Tac thing. And then uh, the other one that the <clears throat> fighter pilot said was a clear sphere with a like grayish black box inside of it. So it's like a clear ball with a fucking box inside of it. Fucking gunning through the air and yeah like it, it, they, they picked it up on radar and everything like you can see it like these guys ain't like are they're either not lying or they're paid by the government to lie you know what I mean it's one of the two because um, there's something there like they, they, they have it on the not even just radar they have it on camera that it's there so it's either was real. They really saw it, and that's real. What is on camera, or they're part of some like, you know, psyop. Man, is it nuts! <laughs> I watched uh, interviews with these guys. The one dude was on Joe Rogan, show, but he ain't the best guy. That, I mean, he's good, but there's a couple other pilots. Uh, talked about it too, and they're not the only ones who saw it. They were seeing this shit for weeks. Like multiple yeah. guys were coming back giving the same exact reports, and then you know people were calling them nuts. <laughs> and then, I, I'd be one of those people that, like I've seen enough UFOs on my own where I, I didn't need the Navy to tell me that they were around. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> I saw, I, I saw, I saw one once, 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 once. Yeah, and it was just like a giant V. It was just a giant fucking V, like a hmm. uh, yeah, like a, a V-shaped thing, like 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 
you know, like uh, or like that. Just and it, we were looking for shooting stars, and it looked like it just lowered from the sky, and it, just went, mm, it wasn't fast. It was like fucking great. It scared the shit out of me, but um, yeah, it didn't. Uh, there's no noise. I don't know how high up it was, how low it was. Hang on, but hold this down for a second. Okay, what's up? What's up, Jed? What's up, everybody? What's up, man? What's going on? Yeah, interesting stuff, though, fellas. Uh, I was in Yellowstone once, uh, working a few years ago, and I saw some some I think were UFOs. They had some. Uh, it was like three aircraft that weren't making any sound, but you can clearly see them. And out there, there's not, there's nothing going. Kind of dropped off. Yeah, I'd never seen that aircraft anywhere else, but there, and like I said, it's quiet out there, so somebody would be able to hear it. Some Area 51 type shit. Probably. Definitely had those kind of vibes, yeah. Nah, that shit's crazy, man. Hell, you could go look on uh, Google Earth, and if you look carefully enough... You'll find unmarked airstrips in like Nevada and places like that. No name on them or nothing, man. Yeah. Yeah, the UFOs are probably like the government and shit just flying this stuff around. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of that. Or like Russia or China or some shit. Who knows? No, UFO doesn't want to crash in China, man. They would just eat the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> They'd wind up in the wet market, like, right away. <laughs> you want half a skull? <laughs> Dollar 50 for alien. You guys see the undercard for the, the Fury White? Parker and um, the, uh, the Joyce, right? On the Fury undercard? I think so. Oh, Joe Joyce? Yeah. Oh, shit. I saw Tommy Fury. Uh, he's, fight he's actually fighting someone with a winning record, finally. To me, he's like the British uh, Jake Paul. Yeah, pretty much, man. Just lives off his brother's name. Yeah. Yeah, he's nothing like Tyson Fury at all. He's a fucking robot. Like, Mayweather returning for exhibition in Dubai. Big whoop. <laughs> Against who? Yeah. Anderson Silva also on show. Is that some thriller shit or? Oh, let me see if it says anything. Floyd Mayweather will be returning to the ring, kind of, for a May 14th exhibition bout against club fighter Don Moore. Who the hell is Who that? Who the fuck is that? Yeah. Don Moeller? Don Moore. M O O R E. Uh, Moore. Never heard of him. Moore, who is also in his 40s, boxed professionally from 99 to 2016, running up a record of 18 one 
while never fighting a single opponent who came in with a winning record. <laughs> <laughs> Why would Floyd even do that? It's not like he'll make much yeah, money. Yeah, weird, weird, man. That is one weird cat, man. Maybe he's just bored. Man, these Mayweather fans on social media are out of control. Why? What's going on? I don't know. Just every comment section I'm on, it's either just a Mayweather fan or like a Haney fan. <laughs> so fucking annoying. I guess since Wilder got crushed, they had to go back to an old favorite. I know. But like all <laughs> they do is just shit on like Triple G and Loma and just like they know they don't know shit about boxing. Yeah. I got over dealing people, uh, dealing with people like that, man. Yeah, it's honestly, yeah, I'd ignore it. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're never gonna change. They don't want to change. It's not about boxing to them. It's all about hating on you and the fighters you like. Exactly, exactly. But they all—it's always these. They always love the PBC fighters for some reason. <laughs> they're always boots fat, like boots or like fucking tank or whoever the fuck so this dude uh, remember Eladir Alvarez the dude oh yeah fought, uh, Kovalev yeah he beat Kovalev yeah he's moving up to cruiserweight now really yeah he's pretty old now isn't he not sure how old he is let's see yeah, Kovalev's also moving up to cruiserweight. Yeah. He turns 38 in just a few days. So, yeah, he's starting to get a little long in the tooth, man. Right. As these other guys were saying, 40 years old, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kovalev's uh, moving to cruiserweight to fight uh, Kubrat Pulev's, um, his brother or some shit. Is that still going to happen? I, I think so. I think it's like a thriller type type thing. I guess I would watch out of curiosity, man. But if Kovalev looks like trash against Pulev's brother, I'll be like, you know what? I'm done watching you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Bro. Sorry, guys. Thank you. What's up, <laughs> Now we were talking that uh, Floyd's coming to do an exhibition against some like unknown bum called uh, Don Moore. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's an exhibition. You know, he can't. For real? Be... Yeah, it's fake. Oh, it was a fake fight. May fourteenth. That was fucking pussy. Get in the ring and fight someone real, or fuck off. He's just looking for uh, a payday. He's yeah. going broke. Yeah. I mean, he literally went from fighting a YouTuber to a complete unknown. Went from fighting and he lost to a YouTuber. Went from fighting Pacquiao to Berto to McGregor to a YouTuber to a fucking unknown. Like, what's next? <laughs> fucking, well, he fought. He fought Kenshin. Oh, remember? Fucking uh, crackhead off of Skid Row. <laughs> uh, he fought, pull, no, he, pull, started, he, he started with Kenshin. Really to be that. Look, he goes from Pac. To McGregor, step down, or to Berto, step down. Then to McGregor, another step down. Then to a YouTuber, another step down. Now to a regular schmo, another step down. How do you get lower than a regular schmo? An actual I'm cab driver? Second. No, yeah, he had the, he had the <laughs> Kenshin fight, remember? That was before the uh, McGregor fight. Oh, that's right, that's right. And if you watch that fight closely before that dude threw the fight, he was fucking Floyd out really easy. Who was He's smashing uh, with straight what, left hands? When did He's the Kenshin ball. one happen? When was the Kenshin one? I was at, uh, after the Berto fight. After Berto? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. If you watch that fight, that dude, before he took a dive, he was nailing Floyd with straight left hands. Just beating his ass. Yeah, Floyd is going out sad. He's clearly broke and needs the money. Obviously. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, Matt Horn says he saw the stealth bomber at an air show and it went in some kind of ultra quiet mode and you could barely hear the thing. Yeah, this wasn't no stealth bomber. That's for damn sure. 
Because, um, like, I see the stealth bomber is like a V, but this was like a V. Like, it wasn't like uh, have like something here. It was a fucking V. Like, yeah, it was, you know, it was loud. Yeah, the stealth bomber just gets on the radar. <laughs> Still- Me and my buddy, we were sitting on his porch one night, just smoking weed, <laughs> and um, we didn't see whatever it was. It had to have been a jet, like a <sighs> test run or something. Oh, my God. It, it went <laughs> right over us. His whole house went, <laughs> and we were like, what the fuck? Someone had to have been flying like an F-17, like, whoa, cooked right over the neighborhood, man, low as shit or something. Oh, it was crazy, man. Remember what we were talking about before, Ant? You know, about people with that logic. What logic? You know, the logic deficit. Oh, yes. yes. And and then look at Jawan's comment, man. <laughs> it's like, wow, man. Like, 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 like what? Oh, we're what? making this what? shit up? We, we literally, like, what, what? What do you mean? Are we making something up? Yeah, I mean, Lord, look, slander. Look, look at this, like, look at what he's been doing, man. Who, who me? Like, come on, man. Who, me? Because he's a fucking bitch. That's why I helped ruin the yeah. fucking sport. He ducked every... He's never fought the fucking... Uh, the best guy in their prime in any division he's ever fucking fought in. Ever. The best hey, guy... He'll be forgotten. Prime at their best once. He's never did it once. No. Floyd didn't screw boxing to promote... What? Floyd was his <laughs> own... Dude... Oh my God! After Castillo, he was a lot. He had pick of opponent. Everybody he fought was his own choice. No one had control over anything that guy did from yeah. that day forward. But why, why do you think Bob dropped him? Because he wouldn't fight anybody. So he's like, "Get the fuck out of here!" You, you know, I'm done with this guy. Oh, and he, and then he was able to cherry pick all his fights after that. And he admitted it, like. It, he fucking told that. I won it out of I bought out of the contract because quote Aaron wanted me to take all these tough fights. Yeah. Like, the dude's a joke, fuck? and he would come out, he would try to build this like race race uh who cares this about race. That? He was I building this a race thing in order to, to No, he used the race thing in order to duck fights. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like I'm my own boss. No one tells me what to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's a fucking sport. It has like you know a ladder system. I'm not in boxing to prove who's the best. I yeah, I'm a coward, but I'm a rich coward. What? Yeah, but that, that's that's Daniel? the thing. It's like Can you imagine if Golovkin said, "I'm not here to prove I'm the best." Yeah, I'm a coward. I duck a bunch of guys, but I'm rich. But that but that's the big problem. The in Terry sport. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because he waited for him to get old and knocked out. That that's the big problem with boxing is that it's not five years he him, right? that motherfucker. It's, five it's years. Him. The sport's, yeah, supposed to, Manny. the sport's supposed to dictate that who's the best. He didn't yeah. fucking fight him until he thought he could actually beat him. Still, still, still couldn't do it. I mean, they forced him into it. Showtime forced him. Kind of, but there was more. It wasn't even really that. He thought it was ripe. He thought he was ripe. He wasn't. He had, he knew Manny was going to be clean as a whistle, and he was going to be able to fucking juice all he wants. And Manny was just knocked out. Who cares if Floyd was older than Manny? Were you not listening to what we were just talking about? Oh, we're saying this. Fight, look, the age of a fighter isn't what dictates their, their ring years. You know, if a guy turns pro at 18 and has fucking war after war after war, and someone turns pro at 25 but has a comfortable career, never takes any damage, who's going to be older in the ring? You, like, there's the thing, like, dude. The age on your birth certificate isn't what people talk about when they talk about, like, you know, who's past their prime. Age isn't what fucking determines prime in boxing. This is this funny. He wrote Floyd Cherry picked Manny. In the ring. Why he, really is he, wrote, so he really wrote Floyd Cherry picked Manny with a question mark. Yeah, the dude was 37 years old. Why is Selby retiring? At, yeah. it was just why, like, why is Selby retiring at 35, right? Yeah, I mean, there, there was a guy in here a few weeks ago, and he was if really like, on, if you want to go on just numbers, why was Pacquiao like 40 something whooping Thurman's ass? Floyd's fucking fighting YouTubers, you know, and losing to him. 
You imagine what Manny would have done to Birdo or Conor McGregor? Would have murdered those two guys. What's written on a fighter's birth certificate doesn't determine their like years, like in the ring. It's what the fuck they have been through. You could be twenty eight and fucking finished, finished if you've been through fucking wars, and you could be forty and be pretty fucking fine if you haven't. Jeez, Floyd slander. I don't know. Because he created this thing where uh, all Americans are pussy and they're scared to take a fight because they're afraid to lose a fucking zero. And all they do is talk about money. But uh, no real fighter has ever talked about money. Real fighters just, they know I'm getting what I'm worth. I have a manager. He handles my money. He's going to get me what I'm worth. Now put the guy in a fucking ring. They turn boxing into the rap game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all about getting paid. What's well, insane is that you paid. All boxers yeah. get paid. No boxers are getting ripped off in this day and age. You get what you're fucking worth, and they're all getting paid handsomely. So why are you complaining about money? The Floyd never. The only reason Floyd brought money up is because he used money as a way to duck. Everyone who would beat the shit out of him. So he could tell his little fucking dumb little fanboys, they're not paying me enough. I'm fucking Floyd. And then his little fucking idiots would pocket watch and be like, Floyd ain't getting paid enough. I don't want to see the best versus the best because Floyd ain't getting paid enough. It's like, why do you give a fuck what another man is getting paid? I thought, you were, like, thought people were fans of boxing. No, it's like, imagine being like, well, the Lakers aren't getting paid enough, so I don't want to see them in the championship because they're not getting yeah. paid enough. It's like bonkers. They need to restructure their contracts for I'll watch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. Fuck. And then no sport do people be like, yeah, I don't want to see the best versus the best because so-and-so ain't getting paid enough. Oh, only pussy-ass Floyd brought that shit up so he could duck. And his fucking fanboys, who f fucking, again, don't have fucking very good uh, ability to logic and reason, just repeat it. TBE. And then just TBE. TBE. Like fucking robots. God. Go watch my video, Floyd Career Exposed. Just go watch that. Then there ain't no hate. Try to prove one thing I said in it wrong. I dare anyone. I've yes, dared yes. them for fucking five years now. Seven years now, actually. No one's ever been able to do it. Because yeah. there is not. I made sure nothing was false. We didn't pick Floyd's opponents. He did. <laughs> I didn't, you know. <laughs> no one made Floyd duck all the best guys in every fucking division either. He did. Only time he fought close to the best guy was Castillo and got his ass whooped. Yeah, like we were saying that day, anytime he rematched somebody, he's because he lost. And he beat him. TBE. TBE, 50 0, 50 0. Wrong. He's like 45 and 5 or some shit. Like, like we were saying, anytime he rematched someone, it's because he lost the first fight. Exactly. Hey, imagine if Floyd fought. Asselino Freitas at 130 pounds. Yeah, why'd he duck him? Because he knew that wasn't going to turn out well. Hope oh. He he event once Floyd moved up to 40 and Asselino got fucking KO'd by Chico and he's basically retired. Floyd then goes, Hey, I'll fight Freitas now if he comes up to 140. Like, oh my God. When 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 it's been established. That 35 is too big for Freitas. He goes, oh, I'll fight him now if he comes up to 140. Like, go fuck yourself, fucking pussy. <laughs> and why did he offer him that fight at 40? Why? Because everyone in the world knew he ducked him at 30. Yep. And he was trying to erase that wrong because he knew he was being shamed. Why didn't Floyd move to 30? Why did he stay at 30 for so fucking long? 
Oh, because Shane Mosley was at 35. The second Shane left 35. I'm moving up. <laughs> the man at 40 was Costa Zoo. Wood didn't fight him. Fought Arturo Gaddy. And then Ricky Hatton wouldn't fight him at 40. Then when he even fought him at 4-7, he wouldn't even fight him in a fair fight. He made the referee forbid Ricky from fighting on the inside after Ricky beat the shit out of him round after round. Floyd was like, damn, I can't handle this guy, Joe. Help me out. And then he fought the bum Carlos Baldemir. Sure did. Stunk out the joint. Sure did. Zab's only a four-round fighter. And for those four rounds, beat your ass, too. The Winky Wright, Vernon Forrest. Yeah. Margarito. Paul Williams. Fucking Ronnie everyone. <laughs> Adafora. He knocked him down in sparring, didn't he? No, no one's gonna remember Floyd in another couple of years. Floyd's already a no. Joke. No one. No one's gonna remember him. The only people who repeat that dumb shit about Floyd are like, you know, like um, very mainstream type people. Like yeah, everyone else knows the fucking real deal about him. It's just these twenty-year-old Americans who don't follow boxing. Yes, exactly. PBC fanboys. Since the fucking Olympics, man. I know that dude's career front, front and back. I was a fan of him. I remember there was a guy on here a few weeks ago, and I asked him what, what's Floyd's like best victory, his greatest win, and he couldn't name a single fight. <laughs> uh, he, he believed so strongly in that he's TBE, yet he couldn't even name the guy's best win. This just shows you that this guy doesn't know anything about hype. He doesn't even yeah. know who the guy fought. He doesn't even know why he's TBE. Yeah, he doesn't. He's just like, oh, he's TBE because uh, the TV says so. Because he says so. Because he says so in the commentators. He says so. And the commentators that are in his pocket. So you know, like, this is a great point by Andres Hernandez here. It's a rule. If your fucking corner man jumps onto the apron, fights over your DQ, that's a rule, and it's been, it's been done to multiple fighters. Roger jumps into the ring, and Floyd doesn't get DQ'd. He didn't, just, he, he didn't just jump in the ring. It's not he even jumped. up to the... It's not even up to the ref's discretion. Yeah, it's an immediate disqualification. Yeah, but he didn't just—he didn't just jump in the ring. He choked Zab unconscious. Yeah. yeah, he actually choked him out, and then he got up and continued the fight. You know, that was a—that was a straight up assault. Yeah, well, I had fucking boxing gloves on. You're gonna choke him out? Yep. It's crazy. Immediate disqualification. Again, no. He should have locked up for that. Referee. Again, all, all look everybody who was ever like young youngins who have went back and watched the the my Floyd exposed uh, Floyd career exposed video. Just look at the comment section; it's filled with thousands of comments of being like, "Holy shit! I knew something was up with Floyd's career, but I never like knew this." Like, man, thank you! Like, just thousands of those. Yeah, you exposed them, man. It's not like um, people watch it and be like, hey, there are people watch it and be like, whoa. Because they, they, what they do is they hear me say some things and they go research it. And then they're like, oh, shit, that's right. So they keep watching. Then they like, let me, oh, they hear something they think might be a little wrong. So they go research it. And they're like, oh, shit, that's right, too. And then it's a boom. It's like, wow, this dude, he's a bum. Like, <laughs> fuck him. We have rescored Floyd. We just rescored uh, Floyd and Cotto on Odyssey last stream a few days ago. It was anywhere from like 7 5 Floyd, like a draw. I had it a draw this time. I usually had a 7 5 Floyd. I thought it was a draw. Uh, I could see 7 5 Floyd too, though. But again, that was a fucking shell of Cotto. Cotto was a shell of himself and gave Floyd. The fucking business. Primed up Cotto. Who the fucking wrecked him? Well, he caught him at the perfect time. I don't think Cotto was completely done, but he, he was in the total no, wrong He just state. was in a bad spot. He was in a bad, bad state. And this idiot went on 24-7 and even admitted it. He's like, this <laughs> guy has no trainer. He's, <laughs> he's admitting why he picked him. 
Yeah, there's no trainer. Yeah, yeah we rescored. We rescored um, Floyd Maidana one. We rescored Floyd and Oscar. We rescored uh, Floyd and Cotto. What other one? Is that the only ones we did? I think so. Floyd lost Oscar. There's no doubt about it, man. Fucking no doubt about it. He lost Oscar. Um, no doubt about it. He lost to Maidana. Um, Cotto. He lost to Maidana twice. I don't think Cotto. In, in a real fight, he was DQ'd in that second. Oh, no, yeah. And then, and then, All yeah, that clinching. For shit four. is disgusting. Oh, yeah. Made pack, too. He lost that. No doubt about it. Um, uh, and let's not forget. <clears throat> let's not forget the compu box from uh, Castillo 1. Yeah. You should have been DQ'd in that Hatton fight, too, in the real fight. fight all that clenching. I watched Castillo Floyd live by myself on the couch, just sitting there watching it. And uh, yeah, he clearly lost that fight. He did good the first, like, four or five rounds. And it just fell apart. And round, I think it's 11, 10 going into 11. Roger tells him, like, you're fucking, you're, you have to push this guy back. Like, you're losing, man. You got to push this guy back. You must stand your ground, bang this guy out, and push him back. Floyd tries it. I give him his props. He tries it. He lasts like one minute and gets broken to the body and then just starts running. And he does. <laughs> which, fight, which fight was that? Castillo. Uh, yeah. He don't stand his ground at all anymore. He got fucking wrecked and just runs. He's like, I can't do it. Can't do it. And Aaron protected him, gave him the gift. Everybody there knew he lost. Pretty disgusting. Floyd avoided the Oscar rematch because he knew he couldn't fucking beat him the first time. He ain't doing it the second time. Retired, Oscar was washed too. Hired to avoid the fucking Oscar again. Oscar was so far out of his prime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From the years of coke prime and fucking partying. Floyd. Yeah, prime Floyd versus cokehead Oscar. Yeah, exactly. Still couldn't handle him. Floyd inspired uh, Tyson Fury. To do the same thing against Vlad. That, that was back when uh, Oscar was like Julio Iglesias. You know, he was an R&B singer. Wait, what would you say about Fury? It's a Fury copied what Floyd did years later when he retired uh, instead of uh, giving Vlad the rematch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Well, wasn't he yeah, depressed and shit? Well, that's what he says. That's the story. Yeah, that's a good cover. Yeah, that's the story. You think right? it's a cover? Really? Yeah, it, could, it could be. Nobody awesome. knows. A lot of these guys lie, you know? I thought he actually had, like, bipolar and all that. Oh, they say. They all, yeah, they'll say that. Yeah. It sure went it away. It's a very huh? sympathetic bipolar character. Bipolar doesn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> you know how everybody tells you they're bipolar? That's just their excuse for when they're an asshole. Yeah. That, you know, that? that's funny. It's just, oh, that's always the game they play, right? They always take yeah, this, yeah. this two-year break. Every fighter... uh. Ali did it. Floyd did it. Fury did it. They all take this two-year break. And it's always two years. Most times. Man, yeah. Fury went to like 400 pounds, man. I don't think that's yeah, so, yeah, well, he probably gets fat all the time even before that shit. He does. Yeah, yeah but, but that's, that's 400 he's, he's pounds shape. type shit. Yeah, but that's self-sabotage, man. He's a big guy. I mean, the point is, why didn't you just rematch him? Like, Oh, oh wait, wait. I, I have the mental problem. Any, look, there's tons of footage of him out and about when he's supposedly having a mental breakdown, he's never anything but extremely yeah. happy and partying. Yeah, that exactly. Like, if you have a mental breakdown, like, why are you drinking like crazy? You and ha and so happy all the time. Why are you yeah. happy every time the camera's on you? You're like, woo! Like a fucking wow. drunken, partying fucking gypsy, just like having a blast. Yeah. All yeah. Time. Like a dawson. You go to some fucking parties when you're depressed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Oliver McCall was a mental breakdown. That's a man, that's a bipolar motherfucker there. Yeah. You can't hide it. It just happens. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like on the gloves are off, like after for the second fight, like Fury seemed depressed as fuck, but I don't know. Well, yeah, it's because he's worried. He knows well if yeah. you watch a fight in rounds eleven and twelve, all of a sudden Klitschko starts fucking tagging him. And he's like, damn, I I, I he clearly got a good version of Vlad. And now he's like, man. This one, this one might not turn out so well. Look, even going into the rematch, he was supposed to be saying, I'm going to lose. 
like, like he was saying, like, I already beat you, even if you know, even if you beat me this time, like, oh, I already, I already won, and you know, so he was already like setting it up for when he loses, he an excuse. like, that's what he was doing right from the jump, like, um, showing up to a press conference with the belly, being like, look, even if you beat me, you you just beat a fat man, like, already laying yeah. a network for like when yeah. I was. Nope. I beat you, but now when I lose this rematch, oh, it ain't no big deal. It ain't really best. Then all of a sudden, he just pulls out. It was mental health. Am I the only one hearing all that static? Yeah, I got that too. That's weird. I don't hear it. Shit, I missed what you said. Is, do people still hear it? Is it me? Yeah, it's clear. It's it. clear now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I missed the last like yeah. minute. I don't know. Valdez herbal tea versus Canelo's Mexican beef versus fully saline vitamins. Look again with that whole um Devin Haney saying uh, Shakur will win because he's too smart for Valdez. Again, too smart just means run. Run, pot shot, clinch. Run, pot shot, clinch. Hopefully, because this is a big fight, right? Hopefully, he doesn't stink the joint out. Man. Hopefully, he doesn't. I expect I him to. Hopefully, hopefully, he steps up and gives like an entertaining performance. Win or lose, who gives a shit? Just give the fans their money's worth. His fight with Jamel Herring was boring as fuck. Yeah. yeah. Terrible stoppage. Being like, it's all about the W. No, man. It's all about your bitch ass giving us a performance. A fucking good fight. This isn't about can you run for fucking 12 rounds and not get knocked out. That's not what we're paying for, bitch. We're paying to see two men fight. Like, what the f- You want to keep running and point fighting? Stay in the amateurs, pussy. God, man. And people fucking praise these bitches. Ugh. Ugh. Valdez might not be the most talented guy, but at least he brings it. At least he fucking brings it. It's the same with, like, Cambosos and Devin Haney. How the fuck can you root for Devin Haney? The dude who fucking avoids action at all costs. Picks on fucking bums. A bully. A gigantic fucking athletic weight bully. And then he's going to fight Cambosos. Fucking run and clinch. Run and clinch. We all know what's going to happen. Because if he's saying... just think, It's like projection. If he's saying Shakur is too smart... He'll really get like into exchanges with Valdez. Well, that's him the same with him. Apparently, he's going to be too smart to get into exchanges with Cambosos. I mean, then we got, you know, guys like Stanny Onis and Butayev about to fight on the Spence undercard. Like Spence and Ugas. We know that's going to be a fight. Stanny Onis, uh, Butayev. We know that's going to be a fight. These guys should be getting fucking money. Fucking these bums. Running, and then the fucking commentators praise them. It's like, bro, what, are you paying money to watch somebody survive? That's what people now. That's what people pay money for now. Could you imagine Rocky Graziano just like ran and tried to survive all fight? Like, what the fuck? Even guys like Willie Pep. Willie Pep didn't fucking run. He didn't run at all. That's what made him impressive. Because he fucking took it right to you. You have these bums now trying to like compare themselves to Willie Peps and shit. And it's like, yeah, but they actually fought. You fucking won. Yeah. Bro. <clears throat> it reflexive. Hey, how'd you score uh, Valdez against Conscious Sal? What's that? How'd you Come score uh, Valdez against uh, Conscious Sal? No, Conscious Con- Con- whooped his ass, man. Yeah, man. That was like 8 4 clear. Yeah, clear as day. Yeah, I would. I want to see um, if Shakur wins robbery. this one. He better fight Canseco. He won't because Canseco will splatter him, man. But yeah, reflexive is right here. He goes. He's too smart because he knows if he has to fight, 
he's getting splattered. Bingo. That's all it means. That's all it means. Because, look, when these guys, when these fucking runner-ass bitches, when they fight a bum, they don't run, do they? They walk them down and unload on them. So, clearly, that's what they would prefer to do. But then all of a sudden, when they have to fucking run and just survive, that, that's 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 doing good. I feel like he's – Shakur is real boring. Like, I don't remember any of his fights. I've he's seen had a no bu- good I've, fights. He's I've seen a bunch of them, but it's like nothing's memorable. You will never remember a Shakur fight. Yeah. Like, I've seen a, a couple, and I'm just like, okay. His best fight was Jamel Herring. It was boring as fuck. Like, early yeah, the guy stoppage. was just a punching bag, right? A, a yeah. guy who just got dropped by his gym, right? Yeah, and yeah. such an early stoppage, too. Like, he was barely yeah, touching it. And that's the dude that gave him a hug at the end of the fight. Stupid. The one. He's like, I love you, man. I don't know. But on a previous note, man, I think that uh, Butayev is going to brutalize Danny Onis, bro. What do you guys think? Is that on the undercard? What's that, Ant? Is that on the undercard? Who's going to win? Spence Uga's undercard. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I think Butayev is going to be too tough, man. Yeah, I, I, I lean Butaev. He's just more refined. Um, also tough as nails. Stanley Onis, you know, he's pretty new to this. So, I don't know, man, but he's tough as shit, too. But, oh, it's going to be great. I lean Butaev, though, for sure. But, man, it's going to be great. They're throwback fighters. They are throwback fighters. Golovkin and Murata, they're throwback fighters. Dude, even Spence and Ugas, at least they're going to fight. They're throwback fighters. Like, they're bringing it. Spence is not looking good. He's looking so old. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't look good from what I saw either, man. And, and he's that's super enough. drugged. Like, like the PED is like the ass. Not good. That's another question. Do you guys think that Murata lands a shot that stuns Triple G? Very possible. No. If, it, if he does, it's going to be a rabbit punch, though, man. He hits behind the head every fight. Yeah, scummy, scummy shit. And they won't call him on it because they're in Japan. Yep. Uh, So when is that fight happening? Is that on Saturday or Friday? Saturday morning, bro. Saturday morning. It's at like 4 a.m. Oh, Lord. For for us, Julio, it's it's at like 7 a.m. Yeah, that's that's a little better. Early, yeah, the card starts at like 5, 5 a.m. Eastern. So I have yeah. to set a timer for that one. Yeah, I think they said main event walkouts are 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what's wrong with him? They That's want like nowhere to watch in him. the morning here. I thought his biggest uh, audience was in the U.S. Yeah, but this is all for Japan. Dude, Japan, <laughs> there's so much money for boxing in Japan. It's crazy. They're not worried about the U.S. money. They're making so much money over there. Remember, this was a hundred between Golovkin and Murata. Their purse split was going to be a split of 128 million if it happened on New Year's Eve. It's not New Year's Eve, but still, you know, take away 40, 50 million. Look at the split. Still, Japan is. Dude, them guys make a lot of money over there. Is that just from tickets and like PPV in Asia? Yeah, I guess. I guess. Why would you fight anywhere else? There's a good article out there on it. You can find it. What you have like four. Fight anywhere See, else? Yeah. yeah you, you have like. Does it? You don't. Know, he tries not to anyway. You have like four big fights in Japan, and you're set for life, bro. I have one. I have one. <laughs> Win the belt, defend it once in Japan, and just call it a day. <laughs> I'm gonna retire. I'm buying a baseball team later. <laughs> yeah, uh, fun crates to defeat Shakur. You have to be able to close distance. You have to be able to punch on the move, like punch while backing him up. And you go in. He oh. doesn't do good. He can't defend himself going backwards, and he he can't defend himself at a sleep planet either. Valdez so kind of leaves himself open, though, when he oh, was yeah. on the attack. Big oh, yeah. looping punches, bad footwork. But does uh, Shakur have power? No. Not really. No, just speed. 
running, if you're darting forward, maybe you could, you know, clip them, double that power up. I don't um, think it will be a very good fight. No, it's not going to be. It would be Shakur by decision, probably. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking boring. Yeah, terrible. He's like, what's there to even watch it for? You know what the fuck's going to happen. But he is right, though, man. If you, if you know how to keep your hands up and close the distance and let your punches go as his are coming back, then you have a chance of beating him up. Yeah, you have to throw straight punches while backing him up. Maybe like a, a straight right with a, a, a sweeping left hook because he likes to dip back. You know, hands down, just dip back. If you can catch him with like a Tito Trinidad type sweeping left hook, crack him. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's like I don't care how fast you are. Your hand can only move in one direction at a time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's up to the other guy to time that. And time when the hand is going back. And that's when you got to explode with your punches, man. Like, like, like getting. Well, Mena, uh did what um, Muhammad Ali he said. Uh, you know, he backed himself right into a corner in the fight because he, I couldn't hit Ali if he's on the move. But if he comes to me, he's right at the end of his punches. So when he punches, I just punch because his, yeah. his body and head are going to be right at the other end of them arms. Oh. But yeah, Reflexio's got a good point here. Pinning Shakur on the ropes won't do much. He'll just clinch. And what the fuck is with boxing all of a sudden allow, basically allowing clinching? Like, what the fuck? That shows you how these fighters are bombs. See, wow. An old school trick, and Foreman used to talk about this, right, is for dudes that like to clinch, lean your weight on them. Yeah. Every time they grab you, just drop your weight, man. Yeah, that's what Tyson you, you, Fury does really well. Yeah, you're gonna tire them out. Yeah, even like grab their arms and like fall a little bit, make them like kind of keep lifting you up, lifting you up. Right. Yeah, make yeah, them pull your weight up, wear their legs out. Yeah, and their arms. Fury did that to Wilder like twice. But Shakur should be way bigger than well. I don't know. He's a big guy, man. For thirty, he's fucking huge. Bro, he's as tall as Terrence Crawford. <laughs> I saw him next to Loma, and he looked like two, three divisions bigger. It makes Loma look like an Adam weight. Like. Yeah, he does. He does. And Loma would whoop his fucking ass. Yeah. What's Mike's talking about? How has uh, Loma been dealing with clinches? Oh, um, yeah, like uh, if you grab his arms, he rip, you know, puts his, rip, pushes his head forward, rips his arm back, and then whoa, 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 whoa fires off. Oh. Create space. Okay. Yeah, just rip your arm, put your head in them, pull the arms out, and unload. Makes you not want to clinch them anymore. Because you had his arms like this, you know, you're like down here, and then all of a sudden they're gone, and it's like bink, bink, bink. <laughs> you don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, Valdez was the smartest chocolate Tito or Golovkin when it comes to applying pressure. He beat Shakur. He's nowhere near that level. Yeah, no, he would. Yeah. Shakur's a fucking scrub. I can't stand these scrubs being praised. Watch, watch. I asked this question on a stream not too long ago, but if Valdez beats Shakur, will they put him on a pound for pound list? Or I mean, if Shakur beats Valdez, I'm sorry. Yeah, they will. Yep, of course. Hundred percent. It's a joke. It's a joke. And he could beat him in the most pathetic way, and they'll still put him on it. Yeah, all these ratings, fucking organizations, are bullshit. Yeah, he can for for sure. He can actually lose, like truly lose, but get a robbery decision. They'll still put him on. Yeah, like with Canelo. Canelo's pound for pound number one every yeah, single exactly. fucking list. <laughs> Ring magazine, they they just go, well, but on paper he got the W. Like what? what the it's not just the ring; it's all of them. Like ESPN yeah, right. and PRB, yeah. whatever the fuck. Yeah, it's like, but you're supposed to be the Bible of boxing. Shouldn't you be like, well, the consensus is they lost. So who cares what three corrupt exactly. said? Because like, Oscar you, De La Hoya I owns it. Head to head with Dougie Fisher so many times. And he's the editor. I'm like, but you can change this. And he's like, well, it's not just up to me. I'm like, but you're the editor. Like, change it. Like, go on a campaign to have it changed. Tweet about it. Say, wouldn't people like to have this change? It's because it's up to De La Hoya. He owns it. 
Yeah, but yeah, exactly. He has no real fucking power, man. He just writes. It's a check to promote. Oh, oh, the ring ain't the Bible anymore. It's a promotional magazine, promotional tool. Exactly. It's owned by fucking Golden Boy. The on paper argument sure went out the window, and that white boy Taylor got the decision versus Catterall. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the fucking truth? How do people not see that as a robbery? Like, people still think Taylor actually won that. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. Like, even like accounts like I f- agree with on most shit. Like, you know. Yeah, when we rescored it, I had him clearly losing. But t- like Catterall, oh, you had Catterall losing or Taylor? No, uh, no, no, Taylor. Yeah, it, like people say Taylor won just because Catterall clinched like a bit in round six and like eight, but he clearly yeah, won like yeah, every uh, single round so plus the like, knockdown. I- Fucking hated how uh, Catterall fought. I hated how Taylor fought as well. They both fought like shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was bullshit. Uh, the ref had no control over that fucking fight. But, yeah, I mean, he lost either way. Sad. I mean, it is what it is. I feel bad for all the people who bet on Catterall. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think either guy deserved the W. <laughs> Yeah, but Catterall was more effective doing what he did yes. than Taylor was. Yes. He landed double the punches, and, yeah. and he outlanded him at 11 out of 12 of the rounds, plus the knockdown. Like, yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah. No, yeah. They they both fought like shit, but Catterall was more successful at his fight. He, yeah, exactly. But the point is that, like, um, Canelo, you know, gets a gift, and all of a sudden it don't matter. Because the judges said what they all it's on paper. All of a sudden, <laughs> white boy Taylor, same situation, and the whole boxing world is up in arms. Everyone, investigation, investigation. <laughs> Isn't that what we were saying before about how you could argue with them? And at the end of the argument, they would still be like, Well, he still got the W. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, Taylor still got the W. Exactly. Like, well, keep keep that same argument at all times. Where was your calls for investigations when Canelo yeah, got I, this, huh? I, I, I'll just come in, bro. I heard you talking about, bro. That Taylor Catterall is not even that big a robbery. Look, I've seen way worse robberies in the last 10 years. It was still pretty bad, man. It wasn't that bad, bro. I've seen, compare that to Lara. Paul Catterall had eight below. rounds at least. Compare that to, to the robberies like Kovale, uh, Golovkin, Canelo, Kovalev, Ward, Lennox Lewis, Amanda Holyfield. There's been way bigger robberies in history, and I haven't seen. No one says shit. Oh, I, I over That's true. Kovalev, Ward won. Where was that at? Never yeah, or even the second fight ended in a low blow. You second know? Fight. Never, nothing. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, Cat- Catterall won. I, ha- I had Catterall win an eight four or, or something like that. If I can remember, like, yeah. clearly winning. But I've seen worse robberies and not the outrage. Well, he clearly, he clearly frustrated Taylor, man. It's the outrage. It, it's so selective, selective exactly. outrage. That's true. But it was Watch just so him. blatant. Like so many people were watching, and like it was for undisputed, especially like, and he was a huge underdog, like fourteen to one. You could like, tell yeah. Taylor. You could tell Taylor didn't come ready to deal with what Catterall brought that night. Well, if 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 Golovkin got the win over Canelo in the first fight, wouldn't he have been undisputed? Yeah, like that was a way bigger platform, and, and I hear people defend that decision till this day. Like, yeah. Was that for undisputed? Hey, I, I, don't I even think it, was. It, it, it technically was for Golovkin because the WBA wasn't on the line, but he had the WBA. Right, they just like yeah, right, I, I hear people. I hear people say they think Canelo won that first fight. <laughs> they, they don't even they, they, they even say that you know so I, I just think there's been way worse things than Taylor yeah, Catterall this is a good one from Husky this is a good one from Husky he goes quote but they're professional judges they do this for a living they know more than you they know more than the fucking entire boxing world you have 50 members on press row four had Canelo win in the second fight <laughs> I mean, I I, sure we have the list. Like people put the whole list together. I, I think Valdez robbed that <laughs> Brazilian Second. worst Taylor Catterall. Yeah, we were just talking about that. I thought that was a, a worst robbery. Yeah, that Robson totally beat him. Yeah. Yeah, and I hear people defending that and saying that Shakur and um, Valdez two best of the division, and I'm like, the guy just got fucking schooled the last time he fought. 
Okay, okay, I don't know. Billy Ho had the WBO. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Was it a bigger robbery than Vlasov Smith? Oh, was that a big one, man? That he was got bad. worked. He got worked. I, I think I'd say Vlasov's the worst robbery people. Yeah, I would too. I would too. It was so much cleaner. Where was the outrage? Where was the outrage? Oh, nope. Nope. What about Chocolatito? An Estrada? Yeah. Yeah. Second that was a, that was a close fight. I thought it was yeah, like seven was five. I think Chocolatito easily. It was clear as fuck. You think yeah, so? I yeah. I mean, to me, I thought Chocolito. It was a great fight, but I thought Chocolito even beat him up a bit. In that fight. Yeah, yeah. He think I think I he edged it actually. Yeah. What I noticed is because um, when we rescored it, like there was people that uh, like I respect, and we were watching it together, and um, they would you know. Estrada would throw punches, but Chocolatito would like deflect, block, parry all of them, and they would swear up and down they landed. So we, we even like rewound it and like fucking slowed it down. Like, see, not one of them landed. And they it just over and over kept happening. And they wouldn't, Chocolatitos are so short and on the inside, they weren't seeing a lot of them. I can understand like some people being a little confused over that one. Um, like, it, uh, but. I don't know. To me, it was I. I saw it plain. Like, uh, hey, Pacquiao, yeah. Pacquiao got Rob Bush Horn worse than that. Yeah, but I, I pay and a lot. Timothy of, Bradley. I, yeah, I yeah, watched so yeah, much yeah, of Chocolate Tito. Tito. Like, I watched yeah. so much of Chocolate Tito. Like, I know what to expect too. Like, I know his little style. A lot of people don't. Um, Pac Horn was pretty bad. <laughs> What's that? Pac Horn versus was pretty bad. Yeah. And like he and like uh, he said as well, Pac Bradley you know, like, it's one of the worst robberies. I mean look at look at look at ref our judges like Bird. How's Bird still a fucking ref? How's Moretti still a fucking ref? How's Adelaide Bird is still, still a judging? A, a judge. A judge no I'm fucking sorry. way. I'm sorry, judging, judging, I'm sorry. But yeah, how are these guys Moretti, Feldman, Bird? How are they still judges, man? Yeah, I'm not even sure. They've been involved in every single fucking giant robbery in the last 10 years. What, remember when Bird got suspended? For for three months? <laughs> it was only three months? Holy <laughs> it was something like, she was on a fight like a month later or some shit. Yeah. yeah, and she got a nice fat brown envelope for that too, I bet. For sure. If she held it down. 118, 110 Canelo. That's a fucking <laughs> joke. Gave Golovkin two rounds. And like, then that what? took all the attention. But then the other judge, who I think it was Feldman, um, had it like 7-5 Canelo. It's like, but no one talked about that one. You know, she was like the card used to draw all the, look over here. Yeah. Kind of like Ian John Lewis in the Catterall fight. Disgusting, man. And it's always the same ten people too, like yeah, it is. Kenny yep. Bayless, um, fucking whoever the f- Tony Weeks. Yeah, Tony Weeks. I saw your interview with him, man. That guy's a scumbag. Scumbag to the fullest, man. <laughs> I mean, I can appreciate Lawrence Cole just because he's chill, but like <laughs> those other guys. Lawrence Cole was funny as fuck. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was so chill. I planned on like going in on him, and then I was like, I kind of like the guy. <laughs> <laughs> he went easy on it. fucked up, man. <laughs> but at least he, he admitted fault. I didn't even have to bring it up. He just admitted it. Yeah. He's like, I only got my job because of my dad. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, bro? Like, hey, well, how can you go in on that? He's honest as <laughs> shit. Man. Yeah. And, and he admitted he fucked up the Lama Salida yeah. for us. He did. Yep. Such a chill guy. <laughs> he is. It was Dave. He, he reminded me of that guy in Casino, you know, the one that keeps fucking up the uh, slot machine. The Nero goes, you got to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the uncle comes trying to get him to keep him. Keep him that, yeah, he is that guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's that guy, bro. <laughs> yeah, Dave Moretti had it 7'5". Seven, 7'5", five. Seven, five Golovkin, though. And Trella, Don Trella had it a draw. The can- first Canelo fight. What? What a joke. Fuck? No one talked about Don Trella, though. Nobody. 
We need new judges, man. It's always the same people. Yeah, I said there needs to be like a whole bunch of judges and it needs to be done on a lottery, you know? Like, you can't. Because again, these guys know all I got to do is do what the promoter wants. I get the, the next big fight too. It can't be that way. It has to be there's, you don't know if you'll get a fight in the next fucking year. It, you don't know. You can put everyone on salary too, still. Put them all on like 60 grand salary. They all get exactly the same. A fucking, when your number comes up, you come in. That way there's no incentive to, to help the ref because or the the promoter because, you know, he uh, he can't bring you to the next one or keep you out of the next one. Yeah, well, the promoters just tell the sanctioning bodies who to put. Like, top rank will just tell WBC, like, the three judges they want. And yeah, they'll just put them we, there. We just watched that documentary on, on stream not too long ago about Don King and the, um, what was it, the WBA, I think? or IBF, one of them, uh, on <clears throat> how, yeah, he just told them who to rank, what fights the sanction, what fights the mandate, and all that shit. Yeah, and Bob Arum, too. When the, yeah, they were all doing it. And then when the president and his son, it was the, the president and his son, they got arrested. Um, they were charged with racketeering, bribery, all this shit. All they got uh, found guilty of was bribery, I believe, and they couldn't be president anymore. The the president the, the guy who was the president and his son were running the or which one was the guys the I, WBA IBF the IBF okay and then when they had to step back guess who comes in the guy's nephew it's still the same family running it like you don't think that the guy is still just working through his nephew like <laughs> what the fuck and and that's cleaning it up like jeez. Dude. It's not going to end as long as there's still the four sanctioning bodies. No, you're right. Hey, do you see the Fury Dylan White undercard? That's fucking ice frosting. That fucking frosting. Tommy <laughs> Fury's on it. I couldn't even tell you who the fuck that. I looked at a brand. I'm like, who the fuck are these cunts? Like, that's all my, my response was. Like, the only one I knew was was Fury's brother, and I only know him because he's Fury's brother. Yeah, there's like Liam Walsh, I think. Oh yeah, Liam oh, Walsh figures. Figures. Yeah, but Tommy Fury is fighting his first opponent with a winning record. So, it should be- oh god, <laughs> his first opponent with a winning record. The, his a combined record from his opponents is like fifteen and like two hundred and eighty. Wow! Is Fury's brother is Fury's brother even really a boxer? Like, isn't he like a reality he's a robot, he's a robot, man? He's a robot from. But like isn't he on some reality TV show? Isn't he a reality star or something? Yeah, Love Island, some bullshit American like yeah. drama series. Yeah, Love Island, I think that's what it was. Love Island. He's, so he's not even a full time boxer, bro. They got him on an undercard. He's basically, like a model <laughs> is what he wanted. Yeah, to be he's a robot, man. He boxes like he's like, they, in a mummy. See what these promoters are going to start doing? They're going to start putting this celebrity boxing onto like. Um, proper events, you know what I mean? They're yeah. gonna start mixing. He was spared the fight, Jake Paul. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he was injured from that. I shit, don't either. Man. No, I don't either. Rib infection, my ass. Yeah. Oh, was he gonna fight that lad that Mayweather fought? He was gonna fight his brother. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it knocked out Woodley. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Frank Warren probably knew he was gonna get his gonna get chinned by Jake Paul. National embarrassment. Yeah, like, like I said, I think they're gonna start mixing up these celebrity boxing with real they're gonna start putting them on undercards and that now. They've already started doing that. Like the K that KSI Logan Paul fight, they yeah. had like two title fights on that, like Regis Progre and like another yeah, one. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that because I don't really follow it. But but I mean no, I mean putting them on the undercards of like say like like Joshua Fury or you know Josh you know like big fights like that, put the co main events these oh, celebrities yeah. in, instead of real fights, you know. No, nah, I, I don't I'm not sure if the promoters would yeah, maybe I don't know. I think this is a first step to it by seeing this guy Tommy Fury on a main. Like he should not be on a main card like this. 
He's been on one before. Well, he's been on a big one before. I've seen him. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't wait. even aware of that. He or should maybe, not be anyway. Maybe, maybe. maybe it was one of them Paul Brothers undercards. No, he's been on DAZN cards before. Oh, okay. That's, okay. They're already mixing that. Because this guy's not a full-time boxer lad from what he's the reality, you know, like he's just even saying he's on some reality show. Well, but, he, he has 10 fights against just journeymen, yeah, like guys whose records are like 10 and 150. <laughs> and he and he just wins on points, like he can't even hurt. <laughs> hey, well, when, when you see one of these celebrities on a co main event of a super big super <laughs> fight, remember you heard it here first, you heard me say, it. <laughs> yeah, but I like, see it happen, unfortunately. Yeah, Tommy Fury would win like, like f- fucking seven rounds to five against Christian Late. He's a bum. He's getting decisions based off his name, then. In some cases, Frank Warren. Seni uh, months, bro. He looks nothing like um, like the Fury. No, well, yeah, his dad must mom, have man. Our yeah, mom. that's what I was about to say. His dad must Big have John fucked some. He's fucking everyone in sight. Yeah, he must have fucked yeah. some Greek or Turkish uh, woman and had yeah. that kid. Like he looks Mediterranean, that kid more than. Yeah, he's not on the party Aldo's bloodline. Right, Aldo's right. These fucking co-mains with these chicks on Matchroom. Oh, jeez. And no one watches that. They're so garbage. The only so, female fight I am looking forward to though is that uh, Savannah Marshall. And Shields. Clarissa Shields. Yeah, I, I think Savannah might give her that business. Yeah, she might get her. I've got a little bit. I've got an interesting um the Serrano Taylor as well. I think that Serrano girl might fuck that Taylor up. They're the only two fights. Yeah, Savannah fights like a dude. Man. Oh, she hit is she hard, the chick actually. that knocked out? She knocked out that girl the other day. Yeah, yeah. slumped her. Bro, she hit her like George Foreman, man. <laughs> ah, yeah. She's like a white girl foreman. I can see it. <laughs> she even moved in into like for the bitch. She, she hit just through folded the... by the legs, like on the ground, dead. <laughs> she was, uh, she was, uh, Lubin Fandora. I, I mean, I gotta go Fandora, man. I, I do. Go Fandora. Yeah, he's, Bro, he's got... like six foot five, one hundred and fifty pounds. I, I think the longer the flight goes, Lubin will, will have more. Like, but I think he might get caught early. You know, Lubin's a bit chinny. Yeah, so I think with that range, he's gonna he's gonna walk onto it. Not early. Fandora's just like he's on a run right now. His confidence is high. You know, he got belief in himself. Lubin, you know, he's he's had a rocky career. Um, I thought he, that Spanish lad give up. He gave him a lot of problems though. Went that last fight. The Spanish yeah. lad from Fondora. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sergio, I mean, you know, Sergio for Lubin to turn it around though. Really yeah. could, be. but like you said, he's always gonna be chinny. Is Fandora the like Slenderman looking guy? Yes, the tall, the six foot eight fucking junior middleweight. He looks, <laughs> he looks yes. like the new bowl, bro. Remember that basketball player? Seven foot eleven, hundred and sixty four inch reach. Bro, what he's, the a fuck? Cu- he's a Cuban minute bowler. Remember the basketball player? <laughs> bro, if he gained fifty pounds, he'd be as big as like Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah. Probably First time I ever saw him, I thought he was just gonna get sparked stupid. I thought he was like a joke. <laughs> Like walking yeah. the ring, right? And then he like actually was pretty decent. I was like, "Whoa, okay." No, he can box. Yeah, yeah. he's box, like uh, Tommy Hearns, <laughs> but not yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> without the power and the, and the fluidity. I like that. Yeah, he goes, is that the best? Him. That's probably the best boxing fight this weekend. <laughs> what what else is it? That day? What's that? Triple G. That's probably the best. Nah, but I mean, yeah, but after Triple G. The UFC has a like decent that. card. Nah, the UFC card. Oh, dude, good. the UFC card's fucking real good. You get to see yep. that dude Sterling get knocked out. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I hope, he, I hope that yard beats him, bro. He'll probably pretend to get uh, low blowed or something. Who's he fighting? Is he rematching, dude? Yeah. Nice. I, had, I put nearly 500 on Sterling. Just in case he wins. If he does win, at least I get some money. I'll be that angry if he oh, wins. <laughs> you, you know he's not winning. He's getting. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to lose that money just to yeah. fucking have it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No matter what. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I hedge my bet in. Eh? Maybe he's training real hard because he's. Because he, you know, he really deserves, like, Jan deserves to win that fight. That, sure that does. Terrible, bro. How that played out. Yeah, I'm so fucking worried for. Uh... 
Kamzat. Bit of sharp putting the jinx on him. Yeah, I'm not even kidding, man. I'm not yeah, even I'll kidding. Yeah, I'll tell you the same, I'm, bro. I'm thinking about betting on Burns. Yeah. <laughs> Put money on Burns. He's like fucking plus 1,800 or something, too. Uh, I'm thinking of dropping a hundo on him. If he wins, I'll be happy. If fucking comes, I'll, either way, I'll be sad, actually. That's that's what I did with our Sterling and Yarn. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing it with comes up. Oh, yeah. Bet on Aljamain Sterling, man. He's like 10 to 1 underdog. No, I did, bro. I put nearly 500 on him. Bro. Do a parlay with like him and uh, and like Gilbert Burns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to mess it up, though. That's the thing I hate about the parlay. <laughs> then if- like That's what I might them. do. I think I'm going to do that, actually. Is Burns the underdog? Yeah. Massive underdog, bro. How? He's a big underdog in Sterling, like right? I think he's like he's plus a... 1,800, like an 18 to 1 underdog. He's a big underdog in Sterling, bro. Man. Comms that haven't fought anyone. Like, he's know. fought like a 12th ranked like Chinese guy. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah that, that's his only top 15 rank. Opponent. He's just so he, 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 he did make that look easy. Like, no one's ever done that for that. For that well, they're going by what he's doing in the gym, probably, too. As you well, know, he's, too. Yeah. them wrecking dudes. Yeah, he's with Darren Till. Yeah. That that main event is garbage. That looks like trash. Yeah, well, it was, it was meant to be Holloway, but Holloway got injured. So it was meant to yeah, be that, that dude is a, is, a, is a bitch. That guy, he didn't want to fight Holloway before. He did, bro. They were booked to fight each other. This was going to be the third fight. Yeah, but, but he but was Holloway saying before injured. that he didn't want to fight him. Yeah, but they were going to fight, bro. And Holloway got injured. Holloway got injured. Volkanovski. He, he, Volkanovski lost that second fight. He got who's, the, who's the main event? Yeah, but he won the first fight. It's and they'll fight. The second one was even close. So listen, yeah. So they'll, look, they won a piece, and they'll meant to have their third fight, and Holloway got injured. It can't be helped, bro. So uh, Zombie's yeah. the best replacement they could find. Hey, Volkanovski lost to him, though. Yeah, he yeah, lost no, to yeah. That's why. That's why this dropped twice. But that's why this was meant to be the third fight. They were going to settle it. Like, this was really the decider, but Holloway got injured. So I, I'm going to be betting for the Grand Zombie top. because I don't like that dude, that Volkanovski. Hey, did you watch his fight against like, Ortega? Like it's so, Brian it's Ortega. A big leg kick spammer. Yeah, he beat the fuck out of um, Ortega. That was an insane fight. Yeah, that was a Holloway beat the fuck out of Ortega as well, man. Ortega's taken brutal beating. Yeah, he, he, fight, he looks fight. like a finished fighter already. I thought it's, he was finished after that fucking one fight. I think it was Holloway. Yeah. Holloway but he came back to look good. Yeah, but he, he came did. back to look good against Zombie. He looked good against Zombie when he came back to so. but, but I think Volkanovski's probably ruined him now for good. No, Zombie's past his prime. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'd agree with that. He's been in but too many like wars. Said, with Holloway getting injured, there's not much. I don't. They couldn't really pull anyone, you know? That, I don't know who else they could have got on such short notice. Yeah. They should, the beat, put, uh, the they should put Francis like and Gano in there. <laughs> I don't like Vulcan. Let's get Francis. Bro, he... Francis would probably lose, actually. Look, I thought Holloway beat Volk, but other than that, bro, Volk's been the real deal that whole career. I mean, yeah. He beat Holloway. He did beat him that first fight. He beat Mendez, yeah. Aldo. He didn't expect that. And the leg kicks really messed him up. Yeah, but either way, he won. I mean, you can't say like, yeah. he did win the that second first fight, fight. I mean, that was a straight up robbery. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I have it won a piece. That's why. Hopefully, they still could fight. They, they and I, and I think fight. Holloway beat him way worse than he beat Holloway. Mm. Holloway dropped yeah. him twice. That fight was close. That fight was close. No, the second fight, he dropped Yeah, I think both fights were kind of competitive, bro. He completely outclassed him. Why'd well, they rob him in that early fight? Yeah. He dropped him two times. Yeah, but he still I still only had Holloway winning three two. And he, yeah, he did drop him. So yeah, I, think, he was I get what he's saying. He was, he was playing around the whole time, just joking. But Volkanovski probably beat him four one in their first fight, I'd say. Yeah, the leg kicks got to him. He, he, yeah, he but whatever checking. he did, he beat him, bro. He beat him. He used I know, he, 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 he got but what's crazy is that he uh they gave him that second fight. I don't, I don't see how that happened. Yeah, I I agree with you, but like I said, they'll meant to fight now the third time, but he got injured. Yeah. So I don't know how he's a bitch. I mean, that's just fucked up. Like that. That. <laughs> this guy, they're giving this bum fights in a row. Julio gets passionate about these UFC guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. So, so what happens if this bum beats him, like gets some robbery decision that's – he's won, what, three fights in a row now? Well, I don't know. Wait to see the fight. We'll wait to see what happens. We don't. I can't say what's. We'll just have to see. Where are they? Gonna, where are they? They're probably he's going to say we need to fight in Australia. He <laughs> hasn't said that. Fought, right? He fought every fight on the road, lad. He fought every. He fought, he fought Aldo in Brazil. He fought Aldo in Brazil. He fought Holloway in America. He fought Mendez in America. 
He's <laughs> right. every no, fight on the road. Guy. He's a, all right. He fought Aldo? I don't remember him fighting Aldo. Well, yeah, he fought Aldo in Brazil. Beat Aldo in Brazil. He beat Aldo, damn. I don't remember that. I guess I didn't see that fight. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you guys watch Colby Covington versus Demi and Maya in Brazil? Uh, yeah, I remember that. The post-fight interview. Damien Maya. Oh, is that where he called? Yeah, that's where he like the called dirty him. animals, and he's like, "Hey, we ain't <laughs> translating tonight." And he pushes the translator out of the way. <laughs> he sounds like a twelve-year-old boy. It's really weird. He's so funny, though, man. Well, he, he runs. He runs to a police lock, little boy. Sounds like Macaulay Culkin. Uh, like he's, like, he's like, "You're a bunch of filthy." I, I, animals. I'd, I'd like. I'd, if Cam's that beats, um, if Cam's that beats Burns, I'd like to see him at Colby fight. Hell yeah. Not only sounds like Macaulay Culkin, he stole a line from Home Alone. <laughs> like you oh, the, the old animals. gangster movie. Yeah. The old yeah. yeah the animals. <laughs> I thought that was a real movie. I thought that was a real movie. I tried to look yeah, it up. Me too. I actually want to watch it. <laughs> what? The so the animals? Is. That's not yeah, a real get, movie. That's nah, a it's not it. It's a it made I it thought real. it was. I thought, yeah, it, was I thought it was real. <laughs> they should have made it. Yeah. Yo. Wait, that's not a real movie. No, they made it up for the film. <laughs> no wow. way. Yeah. I was just like you guys. I believed it. <laughs> and me too. I just found out about that a few months ago, and I was like, oh, I want to watch that movie. I just found out. About it doesn't movie. exist. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, uh, Jed, I finally watched. I got my sister's um password for uh, Amazon Prime. I finally watched uh, the last Narc. Oh, it's such a good documentary. Yeah, it is, right? It's on the it's show with the CIA in Mexico, yep, right? Yep. Bro, the corruption is fucked, man. Out of out, out of this world. It's the <laughs> government's like with the cartels is yeah, fucking dude. crazy. Oh, yeah. Dude, they killed Kiki because they, they well they, they tortured him because they wanted to know who he told about their CIA operations down there. Yeah, and like Nicaragua, the CIA yeah, is like transporting about, coke. Man. They were afraid he told other people, like Democrats at that time, oh. what he knew. Oh, yeah. It's Where they had like CIA operatives in the room, like torturing him. Yep. Like, that's sure just insane. The government knew about it. <laughs> Wait, what, was the line, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal, or keep the change, you filthy animal? I think it keep the change. I think keep that's the change. Lot. Yeah, <laughs> keep the change, you filthy animal. Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> One, two, ten. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. One, two, ten. One, two, ten. <laughs> Man, I'm like, mad about that, that now. I thought it was a real movie. Yeah, it's <laughs> I can't mad about movie. that. Damn. Yeah, I thought it was like some old um. That was like James Cagney or something. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna go watch it. That's what I thought. I was gonna watch it, man. <laughs> yeah. You ever see on the waterfront? Whoa. You ever see on the waterfront? Nah. Could have been a contender. Yeah, it's a good movie, man. <laughs> I always heard like from uh Raging Bull him it's a fake movie too, it. right? Finally it was just on TV one day and I was, like sat there and watched it. Man, that's a good movie. I believe y'all, but my Tommy gun don't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh jeez! <laughs> Have you seen Donnie Brasco? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Never like the Departed. Movie. Yeah, man, I wish the government would answer for that last narc shit, though, dude. They know. won't, man. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, I was like, I would didn't even believe it when I like I couldn't believe it after I watched that. I'm like, this shit can't be real. It's just too crazy. It really is. Really. I mean, they have the guy's fucking bodyguard. Like, two of the bodyguards of the, the guys who did it. Dude, it's crazy. They admitted it, the guys that were there, yeah. Yeah. Wild. Wild. And then I was watching, like, think of all the, what they did. Um, Clearly, they just wanted to capture uh, those cartel guys. It wasn't, it wasn't about Kiki. Uh, like what they did afterwards, like shutting down the whole fucking drug line. They just wanted rid of those guys to ins- to put in the guys they wanted in charge. Because it was Chapo. Basically, it was fucking Chapo and his guys from then on for 30 years, man. And uh, like, um, shit, shit. Uh, 
I was watching, you know, and you think like, well, they killed a DEA agent. That's why they went nuts. It's not at all. Cause I was just watching a, a thing today. I was watching disturb reality and then a double wish channel. And then it took me like this other channel. I forget what it was called, but he was breaking down the Jalisco new generation cartel. And dude, they burned, they set fire to a casino with like hundreds of people in it. 53 people died. They threw grenades into the uh, American consulate and killed federal agents with grenades, blew them up. No, we never heard of this. Why didn't they go ape shit and go down there and capture El Mencho and those guys? They didn't do it. So it ain't about killing federal agents. Not at all. They fucking blown them up with grenades like just a couple years ago. <laughs> it's fucking nuts, man. And now you, you, know, you tell this stuff to people and they're like, conspiracy theory. <laughs> he thinks you're a conspiracy theorist if you bring it up. <laughs> exactly. It's all true, man. If you're, at, uh, if you're asking me, Jockey, yeah, no, I'm not trolling at all. This is straight up, man. It's pretty shocking, though. I've been wanting to see that documentary forever, and every time I talk to my sister, I always forget, but she just came home, so I got her off and watched it. Man, it was a good. It's like a four-parter. It's like four hours. They go deep. Yeah, like uh, Kiko's own commander. You know that Kukendall guy? Yep. He literally sold him out. Like he was working with the cartels. Oh, the yeah. DEA commander. Oh man, that's a great, well, oh, great point. Like at the end, whenever like they took these guys to trial, and the guy had got up on the stand and just denied it. Yeah. He didn't even. No, stick he, for he wouldn't he testify anybody. against any of them. He wouldn't testify against any of the cartel guys. He was there. He was there when it happened. Or he planned the abduction of Kiko, like his own commander. It's it's yep. nuts. Oh my god, man. it's nuts. Yeah. All because they were worried who he told that they were involved. There's it's just the CIA, man, trying to cover their tracks. Yes, that's all it was. The hell kind of question is that, Officer Hernandez? <laughs> I like black women. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, Kamza and uh, Usman. That'd be a good fight. Nah, that'd just be a wrestling match. You think? Well, I, I actually, yeah, I, I don't know if like because they're both good wrestlers, but Usman can strike like, but Kamza would probably just go from for that takedown, and they would just grapple and uh, fucking yeah. dry hump each other the whole time. Yeah, that I don't want to see. Yeah, I saw that today. Her, uh, Earn with her and Taylor was talking about. Dude, Taylor might end up staying at one forty now. <laughs> no way. Yeah. He was saying he's thinking of going to 147 now uh, and that he would like the Catterall rematch, but he basically has three other mandatories before he can do it. No like, way. Well, no yeah. way he fights Catterall. He knows he lost. Man, I used to be a Josh Taylor fan before that fight, but that really just turned me off, honestly. Yeah, I was a Josh Taylor fan, too. Like, I literally thought he was the GOAT. Not the GOAT, <laughs> but, like, pound for pound. Like, yeah, undis he just ran through Undisputed in, like, 13 fights. I'm like, damn, this guy's the shit. And then he fights some nobody <laughs> regional fighter. He just 15 to 1 underdog and he loses, like, 9-3. He just fought like shit. All he had to do was step to his right and throw a right hand. He just wouldn't do it. Like, he just kept charging in. Exactly. Stupid little uppercut thing. Which, I don't even know where he thought that was going to land. It was so weird, man. The thing is, though, is Catterall became mandatory, WBO mandatory in, like, 2019. So he had literally, like, three years to prepare for oh. Taylor specifically. So I feel like he knew his style, like, inside out. Yeah, I think uh, 
I think Nordic told me that. Yeah, I heard that before. What He's Nordic said? Waiting for this moment for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nordic thinks he lost the fight. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I was actually surprised by that. So, um, yeah, he had all that time to prepare, and then Taylor also put on a terrible performance. I mean, if I was Taylor, I'd I'd try anything I could to run that back ASAP. Nah, he knows he'll lose though. Like Catterall has him figured out. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, Ben I, Davison I, is not giving him any good advice. No, he got to get rid of that bum. He got to get rid of him. Like I know he helped out Fury with his comeback and all, but like, yeah, Davison was not, or at least maybe it's just Taylor himself being an idiot. But like that fight, he just kept coming forward way too much, like clinching, Georgia. like. Oh, he, yeah, that was just a terrible fight. Yeah, just charging forward and not even coming behind a jab, not throwing a one two. Exactly. And just charge, lead, uppercut, clinch. Exactly. <laughs> what the fuck? And everybody said, like, Cat, like, I know Catterall was clinching, but everyone was saying, like, Catterall was the only one doing that, but uh-huh. it's not true at all. Taylor was uh, coming in for it every time. Yeah. Charging in like that, it's inevitable you're going to be clinching. I just want to see Taylor get knocked out by Terrence Crawford, honestly. <laughs> I still think he should take the rematch. So all he got to do is step to the right at least. You should be able to land some shots. <laughs> but yeah. Even if he barely wins, he might not get the decision that time. Just no, Catterall him. would have to put him in his coffin to get a decision, and he'd probably still not get it. Yeah, it's possible. I felt bad for Catterall, though. But Bro. It's, I mean, so you should have fucking put on a better performance. But Taylor made it so ugly, too. I don't know. It was just a terrible fight, man. I was waiting for that fight for so long. Same. Fuck. I was waiting it for it since the Jose Ramirez fight. Yeah. All the build-up just for that. Yeah, it was garbage. Wait, when, when did Taylor say he's staying at 140? Well, I don't know. I mean, all, all he basically said was, you know, he's thinking of going to 47. Uh, he would like to do the Catterall rematch, but he's basically got three other Mandos he would have to do first. Then he goes, you know, hopefully we can run it, basically run it back sometime down the line. Yeah. I don't know if I believe him, but... Hopefully. I, I'd really want to see that rematch. Yeah. Don't let Terry O'Connor ref the fucking fight. <laughs> that guy's a bum. Yeah, he couldn't get control of them fuckers at all. And, I mean, oh my god. The, the, just the way he handled the fight. These guys have no fucking clue what they're doing, man. All he had to do was step in when they clinched. Like, that's all he would have to do. And yep. like, Take a point off. Say you'll take a point off for clinching or headbutting or pulling down, and like that would have been a clean fight. But he yeah. didn't say shit. Yeah, all you have to do is take control early. Said he just let them do whatever they wanted. Put on a terrible performance. Took points when he shouldn't have. He should have took points earlier and cleaned it up. Yeah, yeah. I know. But at the same time, I feel like it's on purpose. Like, he just wants to let it be a dirty fight and just let it go to the scorecards. But... Well, he probably did. Yeah. It's probably what it was about. He even scored the fight for Catterall, though, which was confusing. The ref? Yeah, O'Connor did. <laughs> Bro, it was as bad, almost as bad as. Uh... Who is it? Kenny Bayless with like was that Kenny Bayless and Ward Kovalev too, or was that um? Uh, that was weeks. Or was uh, that weeks? Kenny Bayless with Floyd and Aldana too, though. Right. Was that, was that weeks and Co- with Kovalev Ward? Uh, the second one definitely it was weeks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I don't know who the first one was. Bro, how do you let someone get TKO'd off a low blow? Like, I just rewatched that shit. He's, like, screaming, holding his nuts. and <laughs> Like, what? I know. 
even uh, when you like really look at it, Ward looks at him like scared. He thought he was about to get like a point taken away or something. I know, and he wins. Yeah, and then he goes, oh, and freaks out. <laughs> <laughs> he was not expecting that at all. No. But Ward's one of the biggest like fraudulent hype jobs of probably like in the recent time. Like, who can you name that he's fought aside from Kovalev? Like, he's had no big fights. Or, like, some, but, like, I don't know, man. He's... Fuck that guy. He's like Mayweather. Yeah. yeah his resume's trash. Like, yeah, that's my only beef I ever had with um, Steve Kim. When he, uh... uh who was it? Uh, Jane, did he vote uh, over James Tony or Miguel Cotto? for Andre Ward to get into the Hall of Fame. And he goes, I had to do it. He earned it. Like, huh? All he ever did was fucking beat Frotch. Like, that's it. That's his career. Kessler was disgusting. It was a total fucking foul fest. He basically fucking ruined the guy's career, damaging his eye with headbutts. Uh, Frotch, okay, fought Frotch legitimately. He, he, he won that fight. And that's it. Like, that's all he's that's the only win he has to hang his hat on. That gets you into the fucking Hall of Fame nowadays. Get out of here. Felt a peer pressure. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, pressure busts pipes. You want to get what you want, just fucking pressure people. They fold. 90% of people just fold. Hey, Andre Ward pulled uh Josh Warrington on Mikel Klesler. Yes, he did. Oh, Billy like, goaded that shit. That one, man. I'm like I we watched the Martinez um, Martinez Warrington. That was that was pretty terrible. Yeah, it was. Like Kiko was actually stunned in the first round. Like he looked like he got hit with a flush shot after that headbutt. Like he looked hurt. Yeah, yeah. Massive gash on his forehead. Yeah, both both eyes split down the center of his forehead. Like what yeah. the fuck? Take a and take a point, maybe. Uh, because look, in the rules of boxing, um, it's not even if it's intentional, it has nothing to do with intention. Yeah, uh, intent. If a fighter gets head, uh, get suffers a headbutt and gets a cut, the other fighter is supposed to lose a point, regardless. Yeah. That's to even it out, exactly. That's the rules of professional boxing, and yeah, whatever. Hey, yeah, guess yeah. who the ref was? Guess. Oh, God. <laughs> was it really? Same guy from Catterall? Terry O'Connor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Figures. Figures. The British Border Control. They do that shit on purpose. <laughs> yeah, they do. They rub it right in your face. Yep. Oh, do you see uh, Catterall got moved to fourth contender under Teofimo Lopez and someone named Liam Paro? He got moved to fourth in the WBO rankings after losing to Catterall or after losing to Taylor. And Taylor know, was laughing about it. Thing about that. That's atrocious. And Taylor's laughing about it on social media. Like, he's a piece of shit. Wow. <laughs> he's laughing. He's like, call the police. Ha <laughs> ha. Police. How, like, how do they even justify that shit? I don't know. How do you justify that? How's Tio abo- above them? Tio hasn't fought a single. Yeah. Hasn't fought a single soul at one forty. He literally just lost at one thirty five. How how would he be first contender? And these are the same people who are up in arms that that Catterall got robbed. So you know, shouldn't maybe he be like first to get a crack at them belts again since he exactly hold them? So it's just Bob Aaron working his magic with the WBO. Yeah, it is. Get him getting someone who hasn't fought at 140 first contender. How the how like how Basically, does that work? Frank's belt. What do you say? The WBO is basically top ranks organization. Yeah, it's top ranks and Frank Warren's too. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it's ob- like that's pretty much evidence that Bob Arum's paying them if they put someone who hasn't fought there first contender. Like <laughs> he has to be paying them. There's no other reason. Yeah, 
No, none. No other reason. Like, I, I get it. If he was the champion, he gets like a first crack if he wants to move up, but he lost. So, how the he, he yeah. just lost and he's fought nobody. So, how is he ahead? Like, <laughs> it's fucking nuts, man. I know. I'm surprised Tio or, or Aram is still even helping Tio out. That's yeah. Like, yeah. He talked shit about him, didn't he? Yeah. Back, stabbed you right in the back, and then look at how he would look at how he did Hearn. You know, now Hearn was a a, a piece of shit who set him up. So uh, you know, as soon as something don't go yeah. his way, he's gonna slander you too again. Tio's even lucky Hearn gave him a split decision on that, and he's saying he got robbed after. Like what? <laughs> yeah, we did. A, um, we were watching some interviews of him, uh, like picking him apart. Man, that kid's a fucking mental case, man. He's a nut case. I have fun picking him apart. He's a clear, like, you know, um, he's a, a narcissist. Narcissist, yeah, like, there's no doubt about it. Because like, he has the delusions of a narcissist to where he can't even admit that anything didn't go like exactly the way he expected it to because of his so-called greatness that when it doesn't, he has to come up with this grand conspiracy. Like apparently the, the <laughs> apparently Putin, the CIA and the Ukraine were involved in all this too, because he <laughs> says the conspiracy was to get Devin Haney in the ring with Cambosos. <laughs> well, he also signed with Loma, and then Ukraine happened. So, and then he had to go with, with Haney. So that was like, so what? Now apparently, like the Ukraine and Russia is involved in this conspiracy theory to get Devin in the ring. I, I think Camboso was a shape shifting alien. <laughs> it wasn't really him, actually. No, Putin paid off the judges. Yeah, he yeah, threatened to kill their families. That's obvious. Him and That's... Zelensky are working together. They don't. They don't like uh, Teofimo because they no, want to share. They, they want to share the bed with his dad. Hey, the Russian <laughs> war is they all a plot. They, they want to crack it. Dad. They, they want the right side of the bed. <laughs> Teo's had it for way too long. <laughs> Did you guys ever see the video of the fucking president of the Ukraine playing the piano with his penis? Nah. <laughs> Dude, I just saw this the other day. I was on the shitter, and it was like it came up on my feed. I'm like, no. what? He's a stand-up comic. Yeah, yeah. He was on like some show over there, and he's literally yeah. playing the piano with his penis. Well, I mean, I, I, he probably isn't <laughs> really I'm playing it. it was like, this guy. It was like a, a sketch comedy thing, I think. Right. <laughs> Either way, the guy's a total fucking fraud. The other day, he came out. He's like, oh, we need to. The only thing that's gonna stop this war is us going green. Basically, <laughs> he's spitting the fucking climate agenda, and then they put him on. And then from what I heard, they put him on like the uh, some kind of award show in the United States. They put him on the Grammys. Here he yeah, gave a Grammys. speech at like the Oscars or some shit. He got a fucking standing ovation. The dude is a comedian. He's a stand-up comic. He's a clown. There's nothing real about him. No, he's a fucking shill. Yeah, fucking shill. Total puppet. Oh, he's okay. all like, oh, oh, I. I get Officer Hernandez now. I get the name now. He's six nine up there. Okay. Does anyone know why? Tio... <laughs> yeah, six, yeah. Nine. Does anyone know why Tio's wife left him? I heard it's two reasons. I thought it was because of green one. Card. He 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 gives it up to his pops, and two he got a <laughs> penis. <laughs> hey, the Russian war was just a plot to uh, rob Tio Fimo Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only yeah, reason why it happened. They did all that just to rob I, him. I, I hey, did you send that? So bad. So hey, did bad. you send that uh, the, that video? Remember what we were talking about yesterday? The Russia-Ukraine? I did. I'll talk to you about it later. It's exactly <laughs> as I said. Right. Exactly as I said, bro. I'll send you screenshots. It's the funniest shit. All right. yeah, go, go, go. <laughs> it is the funniest shit. <laughs> Uh, Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> All right, screenshot it and send it to us. 
It's too long. Multiple screen grabs. Great shot the first few ones or something. I got you, I got you. <laughs> oh shit, how do I do it? Oh. Shit, how do I do it? How the fuck do I do it? I thought I hit. Oh, I, I think I just did it. Hold on, let me check. <laughs> uh, what the fuck, man? How do you screen grab on an iPhone? I swear you hit just two buttons. No. Hey, whose CPAP machine is in the background? I'll figure it out. It's my dog, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny you hear it. <laughs> fucking loud. He's a little fucker, too. What kind of dog is it? A puggle. He snores his ass off, man. <laughs> as far as Clayton, yeah, and it's going to blow him out, man. Clayton can't hit for shit. He has nothing to worry about. Press the side button and the volume up at the okay. I thought it was something like that. Thank you. Oh, you're trying to screenshot? Yeah, it's not fucking working. <laughs> Hold on, let me try something else. I don't know, man. It's not working. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Wait, what kind of iPhone is it? Um, eight or nine? It's it's that's how you do it. You hit that but side button in the volume. I've done it. It's just not working. I'll figure it out, or I'll just show it to you on the screen when we go off air. Up volume and power. Oh, okay. Let me try that. I think I did try that though, but hold on. It's the power <laughs> in the volume button. Dude. It's just closing my messages. I don't know. I'll, I'll just show it on the screen when we go off here, dude. Don't hold. I am. I did, man. I clicked it. I tried everything. I don't know why it's not working. Press the side button and the home button. It's fine. I know. That's what I do. I do it all the time, but for whatever reason, it ain't working right now. And not the home button. It's the power. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, the power. Yeah, I tried both. It's, oh, shit. I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's what not. were you trying to show? Um, I wanted to show Jed some, some messages uh, I got. <laughs> Crazy ass message, bro. Sick how like Suleiman actually responds to you and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would talk so much shit. <laughs> I did. <laughs> that guy would block me in a second. Yeah, he hasn't blocked me. I don't go too hard. Um, because I want yeah. to be able to ask him something again if I need to. Yeah, you gotta play nice. Kind of. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I stumped him so bad, he just shut the fuck up. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. You're like, your fighters just aren't getting tested or, like, they're not in the program. And he's like, well, well, he's just doing normal testing. It's like, yeah, what's, what's he the literally point, said then? The fucking commission testing is just as good as CBP Vada testing. The and why not just get rid of CBP before. and just do that? Yeah. And then he, he was like, oh, shit, I actually said that. I got to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're we're pretty we're pretty much already there, my man. I saw my Rob Triple G with, like with this stream yard shit and like lives where you can like watch other people walking around their cities and shit. 
you see like how terrible some places are and then how great some places are and then you like look around where you live and you're like oh wow (laughs) (laughs) it's not so great and then you know just the way people act the fucking how fast people are to go delete old photos that might be one I doubt how uh people just go buck fucking wild like some um some 60 year old man and his son just got dragged out of their car and kicked to death old man got kicked to death his brains actually came out of his skull they jumped on his head cracked his skull and his brains actually came out and the kid his grandson got beaten something stupid jeez is that new york yeah i believe so of course it is man these big cities are turning into like crime ridden shitholes yeah no arrests no arrests the police departments don't do shit, man. And they let people out on like twenty dollar bail for, yeah, like, yeah. for like stabbing someone, and they just like go. Have, uh, he'll he'll have a murder, like he will have done time for murder. Maybe pled to like manslaughter. He's out. He is has another murder case pending, like three assaults pending. <laughs> I mean, a string of other crimes that he's already been found guilty of for like the last decade. And he's walking the streets, walking the streets, like, and there's a hundred of these guys. It's like, what the fuck, man? And then there's like millions of people in jail just for like weed possession, yep. Yep. while these people get out on like twenty dollar bail for like <laughs> all this fucking shit. Like a, a year for half a gram of coke or some shit. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. And you kill an old man, and then you're you're out the next day, like to kill again. Kill yeah. again. And that's what happens over and over again. I swear it's on purpose, it's man. It's it not is. it's it not even an accident at this point. Like you're not it's that stupid. Definitely on purpose, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's like I, I can, you know, for the most part, I'll be able to defend myself, but I worry, like, or not worry, but I feel bad. Yeah, it was joggers, but I feel bad for like you know, people who can't, you know, or 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 naive, you know, just like oh elderly. They're not walking around with guns or anything. They're just like elderly workers or, you know, a guy in his nine to five, a lady in his nine to five, some child, and they have to deal with these fucking maniacs. But they, always, they always pick on the weak target. For sure. Always. Always. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. It's always like old woman and shit. It's like these guys are cowards. What's funny is my brother had some guy try to jump him in the city a few weeks ago, and he – five guys – they were trying to fight him in the fucking story. He said he beat the shit out of all of them. <laughs> I believe it's it. crazy. I believe it's it. it's gangbangers. Yeah, basically they were just you know it's just it's basically racism. I was oh, going on over I was there. going to the store the other day. Not the right color, I guess. I was going to the store. What is it, maybe like a month ago? And there's a couple guys standing outside, and uh, clearly you know it's just dirt bags. And um, I was uh, I wasn't worried. I was you know, I had a gun on me, but uh, you know and I'm like. Walking up kind of uh, hesitant, but not really. I was kind of already just in like a s- salty mood. And they're like, hey, man, how you doing? Like, you know, they, 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 they weren't like trying to be fucking hard. They're being fucking super nice. But yeah. let someone else walk up. Yeah, totally different. Fucking they always, pick on, the, they fucking always pick on a target. They think it's, you know. Yeah, soft targets. Target. Yeah, bullies, man. It's pathetic. That's how it always is. And if they're with a with they're with a pack of dudes, they'll try to jump you. Even if you're a big guy. Because my brother's real big, so they thought, oh well, we'll get him. Yeah. It didn't work out for them. But still, that's how crazy it is right now. It's like basically like the nineties. That's why you gotta carry, man. You that's do. what it was in the nineties. Yeah, you you get jumped. It don't matter how big you are. If you're alone. Just pop a cap break. in their ass. Yeah, and I had my shit like right on the hip, like uh with my like over my shirt, I didn't even have like my shirt covering it. Um, <laughs> they should make it I like, a, a like a jacket, but it was unzipped. I, I think maybe as I was walking, like my jacket opened up, maybe they saw it or something. <laughs> like they were really nice. <laughs> bring, the, bring that holster out full cowboy. Yeah, do you style. wear a holster? Yeah, no holster. No, <laughs> nah, just, just sling a rifle over the your shoulder. Nice because then you could just show it to them. Yeah, Dang. I could just open my shit right there. Yeah. 
yeah, walk probably. around like fucking John Wayne. They also, they also have those internal, like, kind of, um, they have this kind of holster you can put yeah, in. Yeah, I like yeah. those. I, I never had one, but, like, I, I saw it. You one, it's like this pocket, and you just pull the yeah. thing out. Yeah, that, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's like a, it's like an internal, it's a holster, like, in your pants. Yeah, it's hidden. You pull it out. Yeah, yeah, it's hidden. And you whip it out instantly. Yeah, that was, yeah. I, I saw them. They look pretty cool. The only problem is if, you know, you don't have a, a concealed carry, and then you have that thing on you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Look, with these cops. What's the saying? Rather be fucking judged by twelve than carried by six. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna be nobody's victim. Yeah. Exactly. In New York, they're cracking down on that shit. Though. You know, that's how they. Yeah, you see what they're doing now. They encouraged all this crime, and now this and guy's you, coming you, with you. the cleanup crew. They're using facial recognition and everything to track people down. Yeah. Yeah, and don't that. dare carry a weapon. That's why they got those chest cams. They're like, oh, oh, it's, it's like this it's like with this Kyle Rittenhouse the guy. Yeah. yeah. No, they, they told people that chest cams are so oh, it's because we wanna we wanna expose the corrupt cops. No, it's got facial recognition technology tied to it. And know? the fact that that one dude was like a baby raper. Oh yeah. Wife and, beater. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're sticking up for these scumbags. I, I feel like that was just like an orchestrated event, but it's, so it's, it's, it's yeah. still the same. It's still the same effect. The fact that he was just simply defending himself, and people are like, "How dare he?" Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. Bro, even, even, literally... as, even when they lay it on the whole, you know, child molester, that whole thing, they're still they don't give a fuck. Bro, someone literally drew a gun on him. Like they pulled their gun out of their waistband to shoot him, and like he just shot him back. And yeah. someone else comes That's along to like hit him in the face with a skateboard. And take and he his shoots gun. them. Yeah. yeah, and they try to grab his gun. Like, what do you think he's gonna do? <laughs> yeah, so he's I, getting... they had this uh, this rich, wealthy couple. Remember, some people broke into their like their yard. Yeah, and their Lewis. guns, and they they disarmed them supposedly and arrested both of them. Yeah, yeah, they basically a mob in front of their house. No, they broke onto their property, and the guy just yeah. came out with a gun, and then everyone on social media is like <laughs> yeah, shitting on him. I yeah, everyone on social media is like, how dare they? How could they well, do how that? How dare you protect yourselves? Okay, yeah, you know, if somebody steps out in my yard and there's a whole pack of people out there, I ain't just going to be like, hey, you got to go, guys. Yeah, just let the mob break onto your property. Yeah, just like, break into be my fine. house. Yeah, just kill me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Just go ahead and kill Here me. I am. Come, get me. <laughs> Come get me. Here's my wife. Have fun. <laughs> He's got like 50 people out there. Screaming all aggressive, saying they're gonna kill him. Supposedly, I know. What we're do gonna, you we're think gonna he's gonna do? Oh my God, he's got a gun. Why do you have a gun? Because you said you were gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we were gonna actually do it. <laughs> you said you were gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, an outrage. This was all all that like George Floyd protesting shit that was going on. All like the riots that was going on. They did, stuff a fucking, was fucked. they did a fucking protest in these people's backyard. I know. Bro, they did like billions of dollars of damages and like let, lit all this shit on fire just because George Floyd fucking died after he was on cocaine and meth and heroin. Yeah, because a complete scumbag, uh, you know, woman abuser, fucking armed robber, thief, drug addict, fucking OD'd. Like, what? What? He was on four drugs. Yes. What were they? It was cocaine, meth, heroin, and fentanyl. Holy shit. But you know, that, that shit was also orchestrated. I don't even think that shit was real. I think that was totally a play. You know, the, the numbers. Uh, who's to say, man? Did you ever see the numbers they have with that, the code for it? It was basically the same. It was the same numbers as when the World Trade Center got hit with the first plane. Dude, you the ever Same seen exact numbers. I know George was a, a porn star, but there's also a video yeah, of him yeah. on Talking out against all of this shit too. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I saw that <laughs> everything that like they were doing. There's a video of him being like, "That's all wrong." <laughs> I know he was like denouncing like riots and shit and protests yeah. while they were doing that for him. Like, yeah, there's another video where he got like uh, busted in an SUV. He was doing drugs like earlier, like a, a year or two earlier, and he plays like he pretends like he's retarded. <laughs> He's like, oh, I, I, thought, I thought that was from the same incident. I want my mommy. Oh man. I thought that was from the same one where he died. I thought that's what uh, it was. Uh, uh, uh. 
no, no. That was a separate incident. Like a tan SUV um, in, like, the projects. And, yeah, he's like, no, that's a different incident. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he also had, like, a heart condition, too, and, like, and, like yeah. breathing yeah. problems. Like I heard that back in the 90s, you know Jay Prince, right? Uh, Rapala Records from boxing, Jay Prince, all that, Ward's guy, Shakur Stevenson's guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, drug drug guy. Um, I heard back in the 90s, Jay Prince was one of his shooters, like a literal goon. Yeah. And then he the ended who? up strung out on drugs. George Floyd for Jay Prince. Oh, shit. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't either. I mean, I, it was a good source. It was a good source. Mm. Yeah. Well, me and my son did an experiment with that whole thing. Because, <laughs> like, when it first happened, I just wanted to know, like, the truth. Yeah. So I had my, my son do it to me. And, like, under no circumstances. Oh, yeah. Can he stop my breathing? Like with the knee that, on the neck. That's, that's yeah. a very common police procedure. You can't because yeah, you, it's just be taught to do that. Of air here, they're, they're, they're pinning you. Can't do it. It's like grabbing, like just like you standing up and me just like pushing against this neck while you push the other way. It's uh, nothing's yeah. gonna happen. It you know, wasn't even on his neck. It was on his back. Right? He usually lays on your back, the, the tip of it, but. They don't put all their their weight on you, but even if they do, you they're just pinning you. Yeah. Yeah. If you look, if you look up this number, it's uh, I think eight forty six. You look it up for nine eleven, and then you look it up for George Floyd. You'll find it's the same number. So George Floyd supposedly I think died at like eight something, eight forty six. And then and then nine eleven, the first airplane hit at eight forty six a.m. I don't know about that shit, man. Oh, it's real. So the, basically, they that that was made for TV. That shit, they created those riots. That's what yeah, they check do. this out, Alonzo. Like Eric Garner was, um, I'm not saying what totally made for TV, all, but I just want to explain this. Those cops who were there, they were there every fucking day, telling him to get out of there every fucking day, day in, day out, day yeah. in, day out, and he always gave them problems. Or constantly gave them problems, okay? Now, just put yourself there. Like, I've been there, like, a little bit where I'll constantly get fucked up by the same cop. And I fuck with him back. Like, all you're doing is opening the door for something bad to happen. Like, just fucking leave. Like, Wait, which situation was this? Not that what they did was right, but you're, like, inviting some shit to go yeah. wrong. Wait, you which situation was this? Cop in any way. Oh, it can go left real fucking quick. Yeah, I mean that was that was a perfect perfect timing for that shit because people were getting really pissed about this corona garbage, and then they're like, "Boom! Here we're gonna beat you over the head with this this case over here <laughs> out of nowhere, right?" Yeah, people were just right there on the edge, like we're sick of this shit. And now, and then, like rappers like Boozy are trying to get them raped in prison. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Yeah. He's even in prison. He's probably he's probably in uh. <laughs> Living in uh, some multi-million dollar mansion right now because yeah, I think down this in stuff, Miami just kicking it. This stuff is all bullshit. <laughs> this is all made for TV, man. That that's that's just not some coincidence that it's eight forty six and then and then it's lined up with nine eleven at eight forty six. <laughs> that's just way too too convenient. Like they're basically mocking the public with that shit. Uh, did you guys see that thing where um? The police got called on this guy, like, abusing his wife, like this black guy. And then he walks over to his car and grabs, <laughs> ice, grabs a yeah. knife off the ground, gets shot in the back. And everyone's yeah. like, oh, th- they shot him in the back. They shot him in the back. Like, he was defenseless. Yeah, yeah I know. They had one of those things, like, every day during the bro, corona they, thing. Bro, during corona, that was literally happening every, like, two yeah. weeks of, like, some that's... guy attacking a cop who dies. And, and yeah, yeah but that's, but that's the them. media. That's the media trying to keep fanning that flame, right? I know. The media. The people are like, again, they're, the people are like, we're fucking sick of this corona garbage. And then they did that bait and switch, and they're like, oh, look, another white racist cop. And they're doing, like, every other day. I know. And then, and then the cities are fucking burning, you know, and they're Remember like, in 20, this was in 2016. There was a dude standing outside the corner store slinging CDs. 
And then someone, apparently he tried selling someone a CD. They said something he didn't like and he pulled out a gun on them. Oh, yeah. It's the kid oh, who was wearing the hoodie, right? Yeah, it was red. Yeah. It was red. They fucking shot him like four times right in the chest yes. as they're rolling on the ground. He's struggling for his gun. Well, that dude was a convicted pedophile. He like raped like children. Yeah. And everyone was like sticking up for him. I remember a certain channel on here uh, was sticking up for him. And I fucking slammed the guy. I was like, this dude's a fucking baby raper. And you're here fucking making videos supporting him. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? He didn't support him anymore. But... Was this guy a rapper or something? I think he's a wannabe fucking rapper. He's a baby raper. Fucking slinging oh. CDs. Fucking goof, goofball. And you guys dependent. remember the hands up, don't shoot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the guy who literally like was rounding at a cop and trying to grab his gun. <laughs> Hands up, don't shoot. What, what's funny is like they can... the cop reaching for oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. And there's like protests they... for like a year. I like how they kept instigating the shit with the public and then at some point they're like, Oh, it's a mentally handicapped man. And look, he's got his hands up, and the cop shot him. A big old like, teddy bear. <laughs> that, was, that was a guy literally on the ground, on his back, and they're saying the cop shot him. And he's like, why did you shoot me? This is the guy's story, he said, after the fact. He's like, he asked the cop, why did you shoot me? He said, and then the cop says, I don't know. <laughs> That's the story, and they you put know, the shit on the news. the video of him. Take the blunts. The guy says something. He boom, smashes him. Sorry, he's a big old teddy bear. Oh, yeah. you know, his <laughs> own neighbors said that he never had his hands up. <laughs> they testified. He oh, never yeah. had his hands up. Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. And that's, that's like one of the, the biggest things. Like they they say he had his hands up. <laughs> hands up, don't shoot. Is that the one with the guy with the knife? I don't think yeah, the guy, they, they're one of those things, the guy had a knife in his hand. He's running at the cops. They shoot him a couple of times. And everyone's like, Aah! they killed him. <laughs> He's got a fucking giant knife in his hand. What do you want him to do? You guys see that, like, Ahmed Ar Arbery or whatever in Georgia? Yeah, yeah every case. Oh, it's your gun! I Wait, know. I he ran him. after him, grabbed hit yeah. the barrel of his shotgun. Like, what are you doing? You're trying to fight two guys with guns. But, you know, they always do this. It's always that kind of thing that's the two sides. It's always, uh, oh, they killed the black guy, and then they give the other side. Oh, but he was this, and he was that, and he had a gun, and he had a knife, and it creates all this conflict. It's so on purpose, man. Yeah, it's, it's all intentional. Purpose. Just keep people divided. If you read these stories on these on these websites or in the newspaper, they're like, oh, this is Joe Blow, who is black, and this is this guy, who is white, and they just lay it out just like that. He's yeah. white, he's black. And you're like, well, why did you need to say that? It yeah, but if, only if be, it'll only be white so and so kills black so, yeah. so it'll never Always. be black so and so kills white. It'll just be man kills man. Yeah, <laughs> no, if they do, they never <laughs> mention the race. Kills if black, man. they'll just say man. <laughs> if they're anything but white and black, they'll just say yeah. They'll never man mention kill white, white, whatever. It's insane how they'll be like killer on the loose. You know, black shirt, six feet tall. <laughs> Like, we're not even going to tell you what it, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, like, what, what, what the, what, can I get a little more details here, my man? I know. No, there's like, no. bro. Yeah, there's a, pants. Bro, there's a story of this like, guy who shot, literally came up and shot a three year old. Like, this black guy shot a three year old literally out of nowhere. And they just, three year old just, was racist. Yeah, just shoots him dead. And they don't even mention the race in the article. Like, imagine yeah. if it was the other way around. A oh, random, no. a random white oh. guy shoots a black toddler. Imagine the outrage. Yeah. But then it's the other way around. No one gives a flying fuck. Never even heard of it. That's how. Well, right. most of the people that the cops kill every year are white. But they, they, they brush that under the rug and say, oh, well, there's, there's more less brown people. Uh, bro, like, look at the statistics. Like, literally, the amount of black people killed every year who are unarmed, it's like eight or like six. <laughs> And like <laughs> all of them were, high. and all of them were like attacking the cops or like driving a car, or like trying to run yeah. them over. Yeah. And they think that's a lot because all they're doing is thinking of like their neighborhood. They're like, imagine if six of us were killed this year. It's like, yeah. bro, this is the United States of America. There's fucking three hundred millions million of people. Million. Yeah, it's, it's four, out of like thirty million. million black people. Like four hundred million. Yeah. I know. They, they, and they'll they'll have like they'll have like millions upon millions upon millions of interactions with black people. And kill just a couple who are, you know, whatever. You know, they're killing more white people, but, you know, you, they'll have like 
a couple of a couple of like uh, justifiable shootings or whatever. Either way, because they're, they're racist. Too. There will be I'm, some mistakes with three hundred sixty million people and a lot of crimes being committed. Some shit's gonna happen. Well, those mistakes will happen when the person is, you know, punching them in the face, and, <laughs> you know, picking them on the floor and give a fucking razor Ramon drop on the head. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're gonna pull their gun out and put a couple in you when you're doing that. But if you're just like, oh shit, and just put their hands around your back, yeah, and if I'm just chilling, like, oh yeah, it's all good. I'm you good. gotta let it happen. <laughs> not gonna happen. You gotta let it happen to you. He yeah. wasn't doing anything, dude. He just he just power slammed him on the, <laughs> the top and punches him yeah, in the face eight times. Three power bombs, like come like, on. Yeah, just he only gave it. him the like, fucking let him kill you. Stone. Dude, Dude, he just gave me the tombstone. That's it. I love when one of their family members will be like, yeah, but did they have to kill him? (laughs) Well, he killed four people. He was trying to kill them. (laughs) Yeah. Did you see the one with the girl? There there was a a case with this this fat black girl. He could have wrestled him. (laughs) Oh, yeah. The girl was stabbing someone. And they shot her and they made a big deal out of that. Bro, like, it was oh. while she was swinging the knife at this girl. Like, oh, while no. she was stabbing her, he shot her. And they're like, you didn't have to kill her. It's like, if oh, yeah, you it, want it, him it, to it, let it, her it, stab it, all the people. Like, and when he, he got to the scene, wrong. the dad was kicking the fucking little kid in the head. Yeah, he would have been dad. wrong either way. If you shoot him, you're wrong. If you don't shoot him, you're wrong. You yeah, don't he, care about fucking black lives. You didn't exactly. Catch 22. Yeah. They, 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 he had to let that girl kill the other one and then yeah. arrest her and it'd still be racist. And then he wouldn't have been racist. No, he'd still be racist because he let the other one kill the he other one. Right, right. He should just let her go oh after God. murdering her, yeah. He just needed to murder both of them just to get it over. Yeah, with. but yeah. that chick's family was literally saying, did, did he have to kill her? It's like, well, I mean, like... <laughs> yeah, was he going to, like, karate chop the knife? He wasn't trying to kill her. He just shot her a couple times. Yeah, he like, tombstoned me. Yeah, get a roundhouse he, kick, like the knife out of her hand. Until backup arrives, he's gonna go and like chop the knife out of her hand with a karate <laughs> chop. Get all Bruce Lee and shit, flying drop kick. Yeah. <laughs> the knife roundhouse her in the face. Yep. <laughs> Just use the force, man. Just use the force. Yeah. Take it out of her hand. And he's gonna give her a spinning back man. fist. He's gonna drop the knife. Any Jet Li movies? I'm flying knee to the. <laughs> Force, force grip. <laughs> Fucking triangle choke. Yeah. Should have just given her the sharpshooter and got it over with. Oh, Alonzo, did, man. Alonzo says when bad black people, not the good ones, bully people, it's let them be or it's funny in movies. But if someone bullies a black person, you're a serious problem. Bro, I'll never forget the day Max Kellerman, Isaiah Thomas, and somebody else, I think it was Stephen A. Smith, were on a panel. They're on ESPN talking about uh, uh, with Isaiah Thomas. And he's talking about growing up in the hood. And every time like a white kid would come to their neighborhood to play ball, they'd beat the shit out of him and steal his shoes, his ball, and all his clothes and, and send him home. And they all laughed about it. Like, oh, ain't that funny? Oh, we beat up the white guys. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Dude. What the? I was literally. I liked Isaiah Thomas before this. From that moment on, I was like, "Oh fuck you! You think that's funny?" Yeah, they're, they're incredibly you're fucking racist, screaming man. about racism, but you're literally yeah. saying you are a fucking violent racist. And you bro, think how is funny? Max exactly. Kellerman of all people it's laughing racist. about that? Yeah, Juice Max crew. Kellerman, his <laughs> brother was killed by a like black guy with a hammer. Yeah, yeah his university uh, murdered his brother, and he still loves it. Yeah, his oh. brother was murdered to death by like an ex boxer. Uh huh. He got Dude. killed by MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he literally like hammered his skull in and lit the building on fire. It's so fucked. And his Damn. name was the Harlem Hammer. <laughs> yeah. He didn't see that one coming. No. Did you see him uh, punch that guy after a fight? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Butler. Who was it? Was it like Mike McCallum Butler. or something? Cisco. Or something. But who'd he punch? It was like McCallum or some shit. I don't yeah. remember. I know he did, he did that song song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the blonde hair. That guy's a bomb. Yeah, he is. He's a one-hit wonder. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, I've never been to like a... I'm not... There's not many like Mexicans around here. I've never been to like a, a James Butler. But yeah, who's the other guy? I've never been to like a... Like Spanish, all Spanish gym, but I've been to like mixed gyms. I've been to mostly white gyms. I've been to all black gyms, 
every like anytime a black dude comes to like a mixed gym or an all white gym, they fucking treat him with open arms. Like he, they, everyone's so nice. Every black gym I've ever went to, they made it clear you didn't belong. Like beyond clear. Like calling you fucking racist names and everything. Like yeah, it's fucking disgusting. They call you like a cracker and shit. Yeah, white boy, all that shit. Yeah, for sure. Bro, if it's the other way around, like it's a huge oh, problem. Over. But then the for them, it's fine. Like, so you're done. You're done. Cra- cracker is like the stupidest like name ever because you know it's basically they're calling you a slave owner. Master. I know. It's, it's saying like, they're like a master. You're the slave. Like what? Uh, it's like what? I'm the master. What? Did you calling master? yourself a slave? Like okay. It's stupid. It's a stupid label too. It's like calling a racist person <laughs> racist. It's like oh, how'd you know? <laughs> no, I don't care. The only people offended by that are. Done. You know, the people trying to prove something to other people. Man, it's, it's such a, like a double standard with like black people. It can be racist as fuck, but like white people, it's the Incredibly biggest problem. Racist. Incredibly. Yeah. You can't even exist or you're racist. I don't know. White people are inherently evil. It's like, but I'm not racist. No, you racist because I said so. <laughs> yeah, no, you have, right pri- you have white privilege. You just don't know it. Like, yeah. like you got white privilege. Dude, I'm working like 16 hour days over you're here. You're like a million. <laughs> You, know, you're, you're, you got the privilege, bro. You sit at home collecting your welfare. Like, shut the fuck up. Yo, Cracker, yeah, yeah. Officer Hernandez said, "Could you date a girl that got peed on on OnlyFans, but she doesn't use OnlyFans anymore?" <laughs> <laughs> no, no, fuck no. What are I these might, questions? Like, I might like dog her out for a night, but uh, uh-uh, I'm dating her as long as she's not gangbang. <laughs> Did you know that cracker is actually cultural appropriation? <laughs> yeah, it used to mean a, a, a person from Georgia. Actually, that's what it used to mean. No, nah, doesn't it mean like you're cracking well, the whip? Uh, whenever they, yeah, like crack the whip. Yeah. Yeah, that's where they got it from. Yeah. What I know. I used to think it just had something to do with crackers. I thought it meant yeah. that's what I thought growing up too, just because like saltines they used to remember. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. It's like, oh, you got ashy white skin. Yeah, he's cracking. White bread, Wonder Bread, Wop, whatever. As I just thought that's Wonder Bread, white. Yeah. That's probably where the Wonder Bread one came from. They changed it up. Mm-hmm. And like, we're not going to talk about crackers now. It's Wonder Bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alonzo said, "Oh, I thought it was based off saltines too." <laughs> yeah. I that's what I thought. That's what I thought most of my life. Bread too. Most think people think of it that way. Yeah. It's silly. Yeah. Yeah, that's what everyone thought, Jock. Everyone I knew thought that. Anyway, everyone I grew up with. That's what we thought. Yeah, I but originally, like in like 2016. Originally, it was benign. It was just a word for somebody that came from Georgia. So wow. I take cracker as an insult. Call everybody cracker. I think it's a compliment. Yeah, exactly. Oh, th- thank, thank you, thank like, you. Okay, I'll wait, be, wait, I'll be your wait, favorite you, if you want. Are you eating crackers right now? It sounds like it. Yeah, it's like I'll be your huckleberry. What? Uh, what do you? What do you? What, what? What do you mean? It's like Georgia. How does Georgia and cracker like? I don't know what the meaning of it was, but I do know that that's what they call people from Georgia. Uh, oh, because they're probably all crackers. Yeah, exactly. Crack- little cracking whips down there. That's why. Got a lot of crackers down there. Bro, I just watched Django Unchained. That movie was fucked. I don't think I ever saw the whole movie. Bro, it's, it's brutal, man. I remember the only part I really remember is like the Mandingo fight. The or what? They, like the Mandingo fight where they like pit the uh the two strongest black guys against each other and make them fight. Oh. Like yeah, and he gouges his eyes out. Yeah, that was yeah. brutal. That was fucking it, brutal. Yeah, there's even worse scenes too, like the whipping scenes and the torture scenes. <laughs> it's uh, like, yeah, I don't even think I saw that shit. It, it's it's a good ass movie, but it's violent. Yeah, That's Tarantino, crazy. right? Yeah, and uh, yeah. I think it's Jamie or Jamie Fox or yep, yep. Tarantino's a weird Caprio. dude. Yeah, Caprio <laughs> and one other guy, I'm forgetting. The guy um, from uh, *Inglorious Bastards*. Yes, yeah, the, I don't know his name. the Nazi guy. Actor. Yeah, he's a real good actor. 
Man, I'm waiting to fucking... My buddy got to drop fucking money off to me. He needs to hurry up. There's a big-ass storm going on out. He's waiting for it to die down, man. Yeah, you guys betting on uh, Cambosos for the Haney fight? Hell yeah. Nice. Bro, he's a two and a half to one underdog. What the fuck is that about? Yeah, what do you think? Bro, the betters know something, man. Uh-huh. They're going to try to rob him if he doesn't get that yeah, knockout. Yep. They're only doing it in Australia, so people can't say it was a robbery, even though it probably will be. Well, like, if it, if they it want Haney. Like, the WBC is inside his ass. Well, they'll get that Australia money, and that's all they want. They don't care if it's a, if it's a robbery. They'll just have a rematch because the outrage will build the demand. Nah, oh, Haney's yeah. not doing win. a rematch. Haney's running win. away. No, he'll, he'll move it to the US. He has to rematch Cambosos back in Australia again, unless he leaves the lightweight division. He is. That's exactly what he's doing. Right. Yeah, exactly what he's doing. So he's gonna get robbed, and then he's gonna leave. Then he's leaving. Yes. And they're gonna give the belts to a bunch of fucking nobodies, and then Cambosos yeah. is gonna be fucked. And then Lomo will never be able to get all the fights that he needs. Exactly. Undisputed. It's a promoter's dream, man, to have all the belts yeah. split up. Well, Camboso better knock him out. I pray to God that I'm betting on it. That's what he needs to go for. Bro, why knockout. didn't Loma just take the fight, man? Because he couldn't leave the Ukraine. He could have, man. No, sure. you had to have. If you're between 18 and 60, you have to have at least three children. That's why Usyk could leave. He had three children. That's retarded. I know. A Loma only has Loma two. would could oh my god, that that pisses me off. Yeah. yeah. Loma could so easily beat Kembo, so uh, not oh, easily. Yeah. Oh. Not but like he'd win a uh, pretty yeah. wide decision. It's fucking uh Putin in the Ukraine or conspiracy theory to stop him. <laughs> no, no, it's all to stop Teofimo Lopez, remember. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> not fun. He was too good. <laughs> had to shut him down. No, they're, they're, I mean, clearly they plan on robbing uh, Cambosos. He has to win by a knockout. I, am, Bro. Def, I mean, it's too good of odds to not bet on it. Because, like, Jojo Diaz like, gave that kid all he can handle. And, and Cambosos a bigger, better version. Bro, Linares almost gave him all he could handle. Yeah. An old wash Linares who just got knocked Damn. out by Zaur Abdulev. Yep. Bro, how does Haney go a hard 12 rounds with this guy and then someone Haney beat in four rounds fucking KOs him? <laughs> Literally, Haney, Abdulayev retired against Haney for his, for his fucking WBC title. Yeah. Retired after four rounds after doing nothing. Yeah, that was totally legit. That was some fuck shit for sure, man. Bro, <sighs> Like how does how does Haney even become champ, man? He wins the WBC silver, which is like the third fucking belt, and he gets promoted to main champ. Like, yeah, he had the option. Bill Haney and Suleiman talked about this. I showed the, the interview on here. Um, they talked about it. They had the opportunity to fight for the interim or to be a guaranteed Mando for Loma way before. Tia Fimo and Loma were ever even announced. Like a year, like nine months prior to that fight happening. Right. He had a guaranteed Loma fight or the interim. And Bill said, we chose to go the interim route because we knew that Loma was going to be elevated the franchise and then we would be turned into Yeah. Loma. And fucking bitch ass Suleiman goes, we have been protecting Devin since he turned pro. <laughs> uh, I hate this sport. I hate it. Why do they do it though? Why Haney? Like, what's so special know. about him? That's why I don't, I don't get. He's, he's not Mayweather. He's, he's not Mayweather. No, he, he looks like a cartoon frog. It's yeah. something odd about his face. Dude, we just did that film study of him and Cambosos. We watched um, Cambosos Tia the whole fight and uh, uh, Leno, um, Jojo and Haney the whole fight. Dude, Haney's garbage, man. He's like, no he's power. Like, they should never compare that dude to Floyd ever again. He has he there's he does nothing like Floyd. Floyd's fucking ten levels above him. It's nuts. He's like one of those guys like I watched and I don't even remember. I don't remember. I watched that, him and I don't even remember. Saw him Same, Friday I watched night the fight. fight. There's nothing Back memorable the 90s, about it. Haney would just be a Friday night fights guy, man. That's what a lot of these guys are nowadays. I'm yeah. like, oh, and y'all say it's someone's name, and I'll be like, what? And then and then and I'll, I'll look. I was like, oh, I saw that guy. He's a bum. 
<laughs> exactly. Like uh, there was some dude the other night we watched. There was a is a Puerto Rican dude. I was on the stream. Puerto yeah, Rican guy. Yeah. I forgot his name. Uh, I didn't know who he was. And I went, I went back and I was like, oh, I've seen this guy fight. He got dropped in like his last fight. This is what's funny. Uh, that's all you ever hear about Haney is he's good at sparring. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. it. that's it. That's it. Why is he good in sparring? Because the other guy ain't in shape. <laughs> you know, the other guy is working on a jab and nothing else. <laughs> that's all. It has nothing. The sparring ain't the fight. Anytime he's in a fight with someone who's a cherry pick and sucks, like at the end of their career or blowing up feather, they give him the business. So I know. He ain't good. <laughs> Jim Moore's, yo. Yeah, Jim Moore's, man. He beats everyone in sparring, man. No, you don't. No, you don't. I swear Ryan Garcia would knock out Devin Haney. He probably would. Like, I guarantee you he would. Anyone I with power who comes he, to win, I bet you beats beats Haney. Me, Ryan's way better. Way better. Because, first of all, how's Haney? Haney can't even knock out fucking Ryan. He has no Ryan's power. Way faster. He hits way fucking harder. Like he chin checked that full so fast, bro. He couldn't knock I out. I don't know why Ryan never pushed that fight. He would fucking destroy him, man. Who? All I gotta do is high guard it, walk straight, while walk that full down. Yeah, his jab is looking nice. They got some footage of him and Guzan working on the jab. Dude, his jab is looking nice. Garcia. Man. Yeah, he has power. He actually has real power. Like people oh, like yeah. to say, he's just a social media guy, but like, yeah, he does that. But he is legit. Like, if, even if though he, he has, doesn't fight anyone, he's actually the legit. Problem might be his mind, but if his mind is like ready to do what he needs to do, he'll fucking destroy these guys. Yeah, exactly. Even Loman said he's probably the best fucking lightweight out there. The, like literally, he is. Yeah, like people will fucking sleep on. He him. just needs to fight people though. He just need. He hasn't fought anybody. Yeah, and he needs to just get his mind right. He has Luke Campbell and what, like Pedra was, was it Pedraza or something. That's all he's got. Yeah, was, yeah. Luke Campbell's really it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it'll be interesting to see what he looks like this weekend with uh, Guzan for his first fight. Uh, I think his, I think he's actually fucked in the head though. Kind of, like, yeah, I kind of do. Too. He has something wrong. Like I watched a video of him on the zone, like an interview of like him to like hyping himself up, and he's like yeah. sitting on his bed like a toddler, like cradling <laughs> a pillow, and he looks like he's about to cry. Like, is that the is that the twink? Uh, no, Garcia. Garcia, yeah. yeah, Ryan Garcia, the twink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing doing some yeah, stupid ass disown promotion. He looks like he's gonna cry. Like there's something. Yeah, he's wrong gonna he's gonna there. get knocked out once he fights like a real dude in there. He's gonna destroy. Yeah, him. He's actually fighting a legit opponent. Like he's a, he mentally he's weak and he looks like a little girl. I know. You know, some guy's gonna an actual man's gonna come. No, in there the and guy he's fighting actually has a chance. Like the guy's like IBO champ. Or he, he, he breaks down easy. If, so, if he fights somebody and they drop his ass once and he can't drop you after and gets dropped again, oh, you to, if you can take a punch, if you got a decent chin, you have a good defense and you come to fucking win, yeah. you yeah. might break him mentally. You put the pressure on him, he's breaking. Yeah. You might yeah. break him. If you have a good chin, honestly. Yep. Yeah. You got a decent defense and you're just putting some put some shots on his on his body, crack him a couple of times, maybe drop him once. Like not he's everyone's gonna, Luke Campbell. Quit. Yeah, he like, just caught him with one punch pretty where much. Where they'll take one body it's shot and just lay down. Look, dude, I, oh, my God. That Luke was hurt him and didn't jump on him. And then when I asked him why, he goes, I was afraid of getting hurt. What? I think it was. You had him hurt. He's and finished. you're still afraid of getting hurt? Yeah. Why would you let him recover and then hurt you? Like, you have to hurt him first. Yeah, and the shot he landed was trash, trash too. The, run, the one he ran through. That's Dude, the name of the game, bro. He might hurt you, yeah. But yeah. you got him hurt. The odds are you're going to win the exchange. Go. Instead, you're a bitch. And if he it's wasn't so fixed, scared, he, if he, he was wasn't for sure. For he sure. didn't even mean to knock Ryan. Like, it looked like an accident. Like, he literally just came in with a light right hook, and he goes, yeah. like, straight down. Yeah, I really, caught him pretty nice on that chin. too easy to see. If you know boxing, like, what? 
back in the day, like I always say this, like, you know, you being like going into round eight and two guys, they'd be like busted up, huffing and puffing, like, oh, oh. And now it's like round going into round 10. None of them have a mark. They're not even breathing hard. It's like, get the fuck out of here. You can see this shit too easy. Boxing was had its bullshit back then. But they, they have taken the rigged fights and fixed fights to another level now, man. Bro, Canelo's the worst for work rigged fights, though. For sure. Yeah, definitely. He's the guy that they go into a full fight and they don't have a mark on his face. Bro, Billy Joe Saunders, like, gets a black eye and he retires on his stool. Yeah. Like, he I mean, literally had a black eye. He did just, like... Like Santa Cruz did with Tank. He's just ducking his head down the same place over and over again. And then he just lands this one uppercut. Yeah, exactly. Bro, Billy Joe could literally just like turn to like away from the punches, but he literally goes right into Canelo's fist. Like, <laughs> yeah. like Santa Cruz did. He's like, er, er. no. It's like, Santa thousand Cruz, time is a charm. Bro, he dodges three of the same uppercuts. The fourth one comes and he puts his head right into it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, don't, you don't realize this guy's throwing that same fucking uppercut <clears throat> many times. Like three left uppercuts in a row. <laughs> Dude, just lay on a ropes and go one, two, with no accuracy. One, two, one, two. Just like hurry, dude. Fucking connect for crying out loud. <laughs> oh my god, man. That was Tank, right? Yeah, yeah. Tank and Leo Santa Cruz. Did you watch his fight against Barrios? Oh, I was just gonna bring it up. <laughs> yes. Well, I can tell. Of- was that a good fight or not? Like, I saw the knockdowns at the end, but I mean, no, it was it was it was a rigged fight. Was it? Yeah. I, Barrios was winning, man. Barrios was winning on points yeah, until like the eleventh or the tenth. Yeah, and then he gave up. Let him knock him out, dude. He fucking he went to fall down like. Davis threw a punch and he was thinking it was gonna land, so he like went to go down and then yeah. he, he missed, so he like had to catch himself and get back up and fuck. It was insane. It was nuts. Precise got a great video on it, fight though. Actually, oh, yeah. Bad. Speaking bad. of Santa Cruz, did you see that uh they ordered him to face uh Lee Wood? Really? Yeah. I thought Lee Wood was fighting um Conlon? Uh, yeah, Michael Conlon. Uh, I guess not. Damn, I want to see him fight. Um, wait, is is uh, Navarrete at that weight? Uh, what what weight? I think he's what twenty six. Yeah, super feather. I think yeah, Navarrete. I'd like to see them fight. That would be good. Yeah, Navarrete is twenty six. But... He's legit. Like nobody oh, wants to fight him. Yeah. Nobody no. wants to fight him. Who's he signed with? Top rank. Top rank or Golden Boy? Um, I think he's with Top Rank. He's he's legit. Like he's uh, yeah. yeah, he's, he's serious. Cool man. He got that like when he punches from the weirdest angles and just thuds dudes. Um, yeah, I want to see Warrington fight Navarrete in Texas. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The fuck that one, man. Serve that fucking bitch up. Yes, but he won't go anywhere where he knows he won't get home home advantage. He's staying right there in England. His last what? Well, his last two fights for sure in his backyard were atrocious. And before the Lara fight, that one was bullshit. And then he ducked um the Arab kid. Oh, yeah, Mauricio Lara f- murdered him. Oh, murdered him, yeah. Second fight, he does the same thing he always does, leads with his stupid fat he, head. Dude, he headbutted his way out of the fight. Bro, he's headbutted Lee Selby, yeah. uh, Lara, Martinez. There's, like, two other uh, I'm forgetting. Like, I don't think he's ever certain, lost a point. I don't think at he's a certain perfect. point, it's just so obvious it's on purpose, the headbutts. Like, you just got to – it's fucked. Oh, man. It's so obvious. I've seen guys like love the headbutts, you know, like Ward or Holyfield, but I've never seen anybody use their head like that ever. Like not back, like just every fucking fight headbutting. Like, I'd say Ward is that bad, honestly. Fight. As, I'd say he's as bad as Ward. Yeah, he is. That's what we were calling him. <laughs> God, I Ward, I fucking hate that guy too. You follow Fury on Twitter, Ant? Uh, I do, but 
I'm hardly ever on Twitter, honestly. I, I, I really only ever go on Twitter when we're like on here. Yeah, yeah. I follow him. Twitter out. So he tweeted out yesterday, camp is going tremendous and I'm knocking uh, White out. I don't doubt it, man. I hope he comes in shape. Oh, he definitely will. He, apparently he's coming in light like 260 or something. I definitely, dude, he don't lie. I definitely believe that he's Boxing, coming. And you're looking at a real pro a right now. Fight, right? Right? He don't lie. Here's James Tony. Sorry, I missed that part. What do you say? Boom. Boom. That I believe Fury. Whenever Fury says he's going to do something, that's how he's coming to fight. He don't lie. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's, if he says he's coming forward, he's coming forward. That, that wasn't a real punch. That was fake. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't real. That was yes, fake sweat. That's, this is what fucking boxing looks like. Wham! Oh, my God. Damn. Tony was a serious problem. Mama? Ma- Mama? Mama? <laughs> Mama. Mama, wait, you got some grits for me? Wait, what was that for breakfast? You know what? Yeah, I, gonna... I, th- I think that was the cruiser weight as well. That was like at the high weights. He's knocking guys Mama out. Like he's going to be eating out of a fucking straw. <laughs> that, dude, that dude's got the look on his face on the canvas like, I got to go ask for my job back. <laughs> yeah, man. And I remember that fight, and I'm sure that was at heavy or cruiser. That was like even at the higher, and he's still sleeping yeah. guys like that. He opened his eyes. He's like, wait, my, my bed looks different. Yeah. He thought he got up. He just got up for the morning. Oh, Lovkin and uh, what's his face? Uh, Bong. Whoa. He's the guy that does the, the Ric Flair. He goes, woo. That's the lad he said, are you serious, too? Eh? He goes, are you serious? Are you serious? Boom. That was that, that, was that lad. What was his name again, Ed? Curtis, uh, Curtis Stevens. Chin checker. Chin checker. The chin checker gang, yeah. Him and Jane on conjuring team. They both end up getting their chin check. Yeah, they sure do. <laughs> They're supposed to be checking chins. They didn't check Golovkin's. To, to be fair, I think Stevens had a way better chin than the other look, lad, though. Look how fucking quick Golovkin was back then, man. man That's what I mean. Stevens actually still had a good chin to get up from that, bro. Yeah. Huh? I, think, I, th- I think it was just an awkward punch. You didn't see the second one coming. He took the beating of a yeah. lifetime in that fight. Yeah, yeah. Man. And he, he got a ton of extension on that left hook. If it wasn't for the Mew, Triple G would still have the most brutal beatdown of Stevens, man. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Lemieux put Stevens to sleep. Eh? I remember that. Oh, yeah. yeah La La Land, bro. BBC called that knockout racist. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I swear God. They said they allowed the Mew to come in too big, dude. The fucking, the fucking LDBC crying about weight bullies. Every fucking fighter they rock with is a fucking. Yeah. Boy. I, I, but Stevens, I mean, but then I remember um, the Jacobs did the same thing, you know, yeah. with Golovkin. Exactly. But probably, I oh, yeah, love, that. That. love that. Um, but dude, how fast he was there! I don't even remember him being that. That's fast. what. That's what I mean. That's what makes the power, bro. A, a shot that quick, you're not going to see yeah. that coming. I mean, he got a ton of extension on the left hook. That's the thing. He yeah, kind of, he kind of, he he dove in with it. Ooh. Knowing how good like he, he look, how he like jumps in with look it. Look at that right hand. How awkward that shit was. It was like a boom. Oh, it came from way down there, but it was had a that lot of power on it. Knowing how right. good he is technically, and that he was moving that quick back then. Jesus, no wonder no one wanted any fucking problems. <laughs> I wouldn't either. That's actually, that's actually a pretty advanced move, man. To to. Throw your weight up in the air and then pivot your arm around that shit. Man, to still have power on that. Yeah. Four hour yeah. training session. We're, we're wide. We're he's wide. Shot. Strength and conditioning, which is usually two hours. Ah, uh, yeah, he's on PEDs. <laughs> Devin Haney. Look at this little old guy, man. This little guy. Triple G. Big drama show. Big drama show. Okay, friend. It's two dollars. Looks like he owns a little grocery store. I like I like when Teddy Atlas asked him to say big drama show. <laughs> he wouldn't do it. <laughs> and he's not Deontay Wilder. He's, you know that commentator. Oh. So he's like, Deontay, uh, a bomb squad? Can you say bomb squad? <laughs> what? As a Triple G fan, just scrap the third fight. No one wants to see it. Who is that? He's, he's probably really related to Canelo. Speak for yourself. And no one wants Who to said it, right? that ain't like, Mighty Max. He's a good lad, Mighty Max. Dude, he beat the guy twice. If, if that's why you're saying no one wants to. Bro, 
because he already beat him twice. The I fact they want the third I can't one. Can't stand motherfuckers be like, yeah, Golovkin beat Canelo twice, but he can't beat him a third time. It's like what? <laughs> Did he get robbed? Yeah, but if he beat him twice, he can clearly beat him a third time. Bro, they, they just interviewed Triple G, and he, and basically to paraphrase what he said, he's like. Oh, if it's so personal for Canelo, why did it take him four years to make this I know, fight? I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, he's he's full of shit. He made the first fight like that when they called out his drug use and he yeah. tried to pretend he was all angry. Uh-huh. Oh, you accuse me of all drugs. I don't do drugs. Meanwhile, right. he got fucking lumps all over his abs. He's covered, got a giant steroid zit in his forehead. Yeah. He's like, I don't do steroids. Fucking roid neck, ball shoulders, fucking mosquito bites all over him. Yeah. He's playing the same game where he says it's personal because, you know, he's, and, he's offended. And he don't even fucking make weight. Artorias got the video where he just blows weight and the commission allows it. Canelo? Yeah. yeah. He got a robbery win, but now it's personal. Wait, who did he do that against? Golovkin. I think it was the first fight, though. Oh, that's when he popped for, like, Clint Buterol and shit. Yeah, they have the... um The tainted tainted. meat. It's tainted me, man. It's you not. The scale has the like bar like this, right? And if you're off, it's hits. If you're below, and then when it's dead level, you're on, right? Well, you know, Golovkin gets on, and it's like wah 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 wah, and it levels out. Canelo gets on, and it just goes bonk, and the commission goes one sixty. Well, actually, um, Gomez, always <laughs> Gomez goes <laughs> waves it. It goes bonk, and Gomez goes, and the commissioner goes one sixty. <laughs> I just got the video on it. It's fucking insane. He didn't make weight. Hey, bro, when you think about it, Canelo has avoided Triple G longer after he fought him than before he fought him. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Great point. Great point. Great point. Bro, Canelo literally ran to light middleweight so he wouldn't have to fight Triple G. Yeah. The funny part is that Canelo's lost a couple of steps. I think he looks worse than Triple G. I thought Triple G looked good in his last fight, where Canelo just looked bad in like his last like five fights. Bro, Canelo never looks good. He just <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't dude, look very Kodo, good. <laughs> Kodo gave him the business. Little old tiny fucking Kodo gave roided out Canelo the business. Bro, little Arizlandi Lara gave him fucking trouble. Mm. He can't dominate anybody. Austin, little Austin Trout gave him the business. Uh, Amir Khan was beating Jamie him. Jacobs gave him the business. Bro, Billy Joe Saunders was beating him. Caleb Plant was beating him. Bro, I think a more explosive, a more explosive Triple G hurts and knocks this dude out, bro. Yeah, and imagine if Golovkin's you know training for speed, and if what if he is on the juice and allowed to be all <laughs> fucking gassed up as well? He's training how, to be. How cheating. does a fucking juiced up Golovkin not fuck him up? Like, well, he is forty. Yeah, but still. Like, yeah, but he's not, uh, he's not no, like he's what, 39 or, or uh, 39 yeah. versus Zarameta, and he looked fucking good. But he's not a beat up for it. He, he didn't take any beatings. Yeah, he's had a long break also. Long yeah, break. Don't... He hasn't really taken a lot of punishment. Don't sleep on 40 year olds, man. They hit hard, bro. Yeah, true that. I mean, he's 40, so <laughs> what? Ouch. <laughs> I got like new increased power from like 37 on. Yeah. Yeah. Bernard Hopkins type shit. Well, he hits just as hard. He speed, definitely lost speed. But Golovkin looked fast. Like that's the my son knows the first thing he said. He goes, he goes, Dad, I think he's on something. <laughs> he goes, he's looking fast and he's shredded. I was like, yeah, I kind of agree. He, he doesn't even need the speed. He has the timing. So yeah, well, timing was always a specialty. But he has that timing there and that power. Uh, All he needs is a stamina. That's it. I'll be right back. My buddy's here. Hold on. Yeah. He's never been like some fi- boxer that's going to be bouncing all over the place. So, you know. Bro, I heard someone on social media say Jamal Charlo has done more for boxing than Triple G. Yeah, I mean, look at that hair. Got the perfect <laughs> fro- frosted tips all day, man. <laughs> He's bringing back the in sync look. It's embarrassing, man. Yep. So many fanboys out there. Oh, it's like before, man, when we were talking about all like the, you know, progressively worse fights that Floyd has taken. And some yeah. dude in the chat was like, oh, why the Floyd slander? And I'm like, oh, face palm, man. Oh, Holy my God. Shit, bro. You look, can't even talk about the people he fought. Just look at the division Floyd has been in and look at the other champions in the division. And you'll see he didn't fight a single one of them aside from like fucking Carlos Baldemir. It's embarrassing. 
Yeah, like Ann said, he went from fighting Berto, right, and he retired. Uh-huh. And who who do you fight after that? What the little Japanese guy. Short tension in a in a fixed fight. Yeah. It was it was a, a it was a what do you call those things? An exhibition. Yeah. And, and then got McGregor. Fake, he got a fake knockout in an exhibition. <laughs> and then he fought the YouTubers. And he fought. The, he yeah, fought no, it was McGregor, McGregor and, then and then the he YouTubers. The YouTubers. He fought one of the YouTubers. I think. He didn't even want to fight Jake Paul because he might yeah. knock his ass out. And now he's going to fight somebody called Don Moore. He's fighting some a, random a, a com- club fight. A complete unknown, bro. Another fixed fight. It's like, holy shit. With this Put dude, him up man. against Campbell Hatton. It's all uh, exhibitions with him now. He needs to fight Campbell Hatton. He should just fight Mike Tyson. Get it over with. <laughs> I'd love you, to see that. You know how much money he'd make if he, he had like an exhibition with Mike Tyson? That would look like Godzilla versus Bambi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bro, Mike Tyson at 80 years old would knock him out. Yeah, he definitely. He'd probably punch him once right now. Through his block, he'd probably make it. Floyd knock himself out with his own arm. Yeah, I've heard that Mike Tyson talks a lot of shit about Floyd, too. He does. Like, I heard you got a money team. <laughs> I, want, I want some of that money. <laughs> He's like, uh, you broke, aren't you? You broke. I ain't broke. Yeah, you broke. <laughs> don't hey, you, don't you, lie, bro. motherfucker. I saw you on YouTube with those Bugattis. <laughs> you see, probably sold all of them now. <laughs> I, I thought you bring all that cash out of ridiculousness. I want some of that cash. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever see that shit, bro? Did you did you see that? Um, there was this thing. It was like uh, Daniel Cormier, the UFC, and this football player kept fucking with him. No, no I didn't see that. I think the guy was flirting with him or something. It was really? really weird. Yeah, he was. He, like at one point, he took Mike's foot and put it on top of his leg, and he's like, "What the hell?" He's like, "What are you doing with my foot?" <laughs> and then and then he stopped into some interviewer and he turned around and he punched the guy in his ribs. Because <laughs> the guy, I, they were real drunk, and the guy just wouldn't leave him alone. Oh my god! And I remember you hear uh, Daniel Cormier. He's like, "Stop!" <laughs> he screamed like, "Stop!" That's that's like. like <laughs> That's like going to the zoo and like fondling a lion's balls and shit. Like, what are you doing, yeah. man? You should like, watch this on here. It's really funny because yeah. it kept just escalating. It just kept him getting more and more touchy. Really. <laughs> he was playing around, but he, he actually punched him in his ribs. Oh, yeah. Because he's like, what are you doing, motherfucker? Like, stop touching me, man. Stop touching me. <laughs> he just kept pushing. And I remember Dan- it's funny because you got Danny Cormier. He's telling this big ass football player to stop because they're all like, you know, they know Mike's going to kill this guy at any second. <laughs> he may be in his fifties, but he's you know he's a juiced up fifty, fifty, fifty something. He's almost sixty, I think now. I saw some video like that, man. Where never, there was like there was this big black bouncer outside a club, right, and some absolute fucking weirdo like comes up to him, like almost acting like he's he's trying to kiss the dude or something. Mm-hmm. And this dude looks at him and just goes, "Boom!" Just hits him with a hook, man. Like just drops his ass. It is like, what are you thinking, man? Like, Jesus Christ. This guy, this football, but it's funny because this football player dude's huge. He's all like, Mike, you're all tight. You're all tight. And he's like lifting his legs. Like he, he like lifted his fucking foot and put it on top of his knee. And he's like, why are you touching me? But he's like laughing at the same time. He's like really uncomfortable. Why are you touching me when you know I killed you for it? Like, why are you touching me? <laughs> or like, give me my foot. You should look at it. It's on YouTube. It was recently. You know I'm about to strangle you, right? You know I'm going to kill you with my fist. <laughs> What's up with Kanye? I see him in a basketball game. He looks really pissed. He's like uh-huh. angry to get that game. Another weirdo. Fox News. I'm reading this random <laughs> stuff popping up on my computer. Hell yeah, that's a green light for a bouncer, man. You just assume he's gonna go, you know, agate on you or something. It's like, no, he went left hook, but (laughs) 
All right, sorry about that. It's a green light for a bouncer poking a bear. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> talking about hey. that, that football player that was hitting on Mike Tyson. You see that? Uh uh-uh. uh. They had like a they had like some kind of event. I don't know if it was for the Super Bowl or what, but they were sitting there watching the game. Daniel Cormier, uh, the I Brendan, saw that. The Brendan Shaw. Oh, some, I know what you're talking about. Some big ass football it. player looked like Queen Latifah. Brandon Marshall. Yeah, the Queen Latifah. You're talking about when they were like kind of slap boxing a little bit. No, you saw when he lifted his leg and he put his fucking leg on top of his knee. Oh, he's like, he's so. like, Mike, why are you so tense? Why are you so tight? <laughs> he's like, give me back my foot. <laughs> Like, well, it would have like, been so great if like Mike was like super witty in that moment, and he's like, "I don't know about tense, but I'm a, I'm about to tighten you up." <laughs> I no, saw he, he was I saw it, Anderson. So laughing. Anderson, I saw your tweet. I just looked at it. I can't show that man. <laughs> That's funny. Follow cost to send that out though. If anyone wants to see it, click on the Twitter link uh, in the chat. Oh, dude, he's so roided out. Triple G? No, this um, the Instagram post uh, Aldo just put out. I guess that's uh, what Al Jermaine Sterling. He's a he's so roided out, man. <laughs> see it? Click it. I, I can show it. Supposedly, Jake Paul was challenging Mike Tyson against his unboxing fight. Now get the fuck his, his quote is, "I will kill you." <laughs> Who, who's cool? Mike Tyson. <laughs> That's about right. Look at this fool. Look at all them veins. Looking like Errol Spence. Actually, he looks worse than Errol. Man, he's crazy. He, he, he looks like Tony Atlas, man. Yeah, is that, is that, he he snipes in New Jack City. That's uh, Al Jermaine Sterling. He's not oh. on roids or nothing, though. No, he's no, no. He's, of course not. Dada is doing a great job. He's gonna he's gonna take a knee to the to the face that he's gonna dive into with both his hands on the mat and he's gonna get another win. Looks like Black Bruce Lee. Gotta make some sandwiches. That dude fights at one thirty five. By the way, <laughs> Jesus. Probably enters the ring at one seventy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he ain't he the champ. Yeah, but he's like the fake champ. Yeah, yeah, that's disgusting. One on a DQ. That's superior genetics, Anthony. (laughs) It was called steroids. Yeah, the fucking Logan Paul or Jake Paul, they should go spar Mike. They've never even fucking fought anybody. One of them fought a pillow punching fucking pussy old man. And the other one's never fought anybody. Go fight a real fucking boxer and let me know how that goes. You should go fight Kovalev. Go try. Yeah, exactly. Go fight Kovalev. <laughs> he fights Kovalev, comes in in the best shape of his life and just murders Jake Paul. <laughs> you got his brother in the crowd like, no! <laughs> trying to throw no. him out. Oh, the God, he no. <laughs> like Rocky. If he dies, he dies. He hits him with a jab and puts him in a coma. Another um another Jean Pascal beatdown. Oh that was god, that'd be even worse. That was one of the greatest fucking nights in boxing ever. <laughs> if Kovalev fought Jake Paul, that'd be that'd be like a minute long. Yeah. Kovalev looked so fucking good that fight. One of the best light heavyweights ever, just putting a fucking mean beating on someone. Yeah, he kept him. He kept him in there. Yeah, he didn't so want to knock him out. He wanted to beat on him. The second one, he was calling him a fucking racist, so he kept him in there and just punishing. Oh, yeah. you remember he after two up. rounds? You, you remember after, stop it. You remember after two rounds of of Kovalev just jabbing and crossing fucking um uh this dude um Pascal. Yeah, Pascal, and he was already looking bloodshot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like he had that drunk look on his eyes and his shit. Eyes were all glassy and shit. Yeah, yeah. Bro, Gene Pascal is the biggest juice head of all time. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he was accusing fucking Kovalev of juicing. 
bro, he literally got caught with like four different like um, anabolics, literally four, <laughs> like different things he injected in his ass. Yeah, the how ones you get caught fucking, for that? It's projection. The ones who accuse are the ones using, man. That's true. He was supposed to fight uh Badu Jack. Oh, uh, rematch. Yeah, he was gonna rematch him, but then that's when he popped. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard about it. I didn't know when. Bro, his back is like he looks like a fucking bodybuilder. Yeah, Bivol put the beats on him too. Yeah. Bivol just toyed with him, man. Oh, Bivol's another bet I'm making. Yeah, same here. Same here. Bro, I wish I could parlay like Cambosos and Bivol. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, like Aljamain money. Sterling. Yeah, that'd be money. <laughs> Man, I had a great fucking parlay. Um, what was it? The night of uh, Roman Gonzalez. Ev- <laughs> oh, my God, man. I had a straight bet, and then I had a fucking parlay, like a four-fight parlay. Every- Dude, I hit on every fucking one except the first fight of the night I lost on. Oh my, my parlay God. was just done instantly, and every other one hit. Bro, you would have made how much did you put on? Like, I can't remember. It would have been beautiful though. That would have been like Fucking thousands. Beautiful. That's fucked. Yeah. Oh, and the one was um it was kinda of, was I forget who it was. It was like even money that night. And you know, he dude, he should have won. He was even the house fighter, and it was like a draw. Fucking other guy. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what are my fucking what's what's my luck? Yeah. Mm, it's fucking pissed. Yeah, I'm gonna do a parlay with like with like uh with Tommy Fury on that card. <laughs> Cause I know he's winning. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't even know why they're trying so hard with that guy. Like, is he even worth it? No. Tommy well, Fury has no potential. Like all they're trying not... to do is get him a couple bucks so he don't have to live off a of fucking Tyson. Yeah. That's what doing. Or live off of fucking drama shows. Love he Island. looks like he's on a lot of steroids. He's on so oh, yeah. much steroids. He's so he's juiced. so jacked. Yeah, of course he's juiced. He's man. massive. Yeah, he's on everything, dude. <laughs> I don't know why Frank Warren even wastes his time with him. Like, Because Frank Warren don't really have anybody and he got name value. Yeah, I, I I just don't see him getting a big fight with anybody. Like at, he's at light heavyweight. Who's he gonna fight? Like a lighter Alvarez? <laughs> he's knocked out by anyone good. So what's a better bet, Cambosos or Beevil? Oh. Oh. Man, I'd probably go Cambosos, honestly, just because Bivol could probably win 9-3 and not get a W. But, Same with Haney, though. Haney yeah, I mean, yeah, it's true, dude. I mean, I'm betting on both of them. Same. You never know. If, if B, like, Bivol will literally have to win, like, 11 rounds to one, and he might get, like, a split decision. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is draw. another thing. For those kind of fights, drop even 10 bucks, dude, on a draw. Like, drop something, anything. Oh, yeah. Something on a draw on all them fucking type of fights. Yeah. Like, that's a fair fight. I can see Canelo getting dropped a couple of times. <clears throat> Me too. Like, I can see him get dropped. I think if he gets dropped, he'll, he'll actually quit. Bivol is I, I don't feel like focusing he has that on. No, Bivol's Canelo won't quit. On, um, I think he play. would. Bivol's working on power punching, man. Yeah, I and mean, he can he can punch. He's oh, very sharp. sharp Bivol will too. keep him on the upside. Eight. He was known as a knockout artist on in like the amateurs and shit. Yeah, he's just not doing no Canelo big winding punches. Yeah, yeah. Bro, Bivol's gonna keep him on the outside like the entire fight. And when Canelo tries to do his fucking head movement coming on the inside, <laughs> he's just getting hot. Wait, he has head movement? Uh, allegedly, <laughs> I've never head seen him. He's had head movement in a long time. Head movement. Counter punching and the head movement and the yeah. counter punching and the head. Yeah, the counter punching. That's all you hear. It's never about the actual offense, though. All he does is put his hands up, don't doesn't move his head, and then and throws yeah. big hooks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll show you Canelo real quick. <laughs> big giant hooks. Canelo. 
that's all he does man it's like get the fuck out like a little like little like tap jab he's even trying to land it just (laughs) he's a fucking goofball what do you guys think uh bevo can improve on the most to be canelo probably like his power like catching on the inside combinations throw more than one or two and he used to get somebody coming in and hit them while they're coming yeah. in. Like, so yeah. when Canelo's in the mid punch, you just catch him. Right yeah. There. String, them, string them together. Like, step, like, bang them, hit them with a one two step, and then keep going, though. Try to catch yeah. him with, like, that mark. He'll hit. usually hit you with the one two and then step, and that's it. Like, but now instead of, like, hitting him with the one two stepping off the line, turning him, and he's it one two step off the line, hit, go again. I think Bevo will just be all jabs and right hooks down the middle, and just move into the circling around the outside. Yeah, but he can't. He can't be too predictable though, because Canelo likes likes likes. Well, no, because Bivol's a counter puncher, man. Yeah. Bivol really is a counter puncher. Yeah, he, he'll, he'll he he fights with the jab, but the jab is to purposely to get you to punch so he can counter punch. That's He's true. Really the thing, the thing is that Canelo's incredibly predictable. Yeah, you're a counter puncher. And he and telegraphs the shit out of his punches. Yeah, man. he does. And he leaves himself wide open. It's like, oh, here comes the right hand. Oh, oh, oh. And this is what people need to take into consideration. Remember when Canelo fought Kovalev, how fucking tiny he looked? Like, if Kovalev would have just fought tall and, and really extended his punches, like, Canelo should have never been able to get anywhere near him. He looked like a little midget next to him. Mm-hmm. Bivol's the exact same dimensions, exactly the same dimensions. Bivol's fucking big too; like he's got them the same height, same reach. Like, so he should be able to keep this little fucker on the outside easy. At the same time, though, I feel like they had some pre-fight deal where, like, Bivol knows he's just gonna go down. Like, I don't know. Possible. That's what half the people in the chat right now think. (laughs) Yeah, it'll be like with Kovalev, but like not as blatant. Well, that's why it'll be a body shot. That's why it's getting streamed. That would be like watching that. That would be like watching Ward Kovalev three and watching them cheat again, bro. It it would just kill the sport, man. Yeah, I I know. But like, there's so many people who buy into it though that they can get away with it. Yep. Too many dumb casuals out there. Well, I just played that interview with Tio, and right in the interview, people Tio goes. They ask him, who do you think will win between Canelo and Bivol? And he goes, man, you know, everybody thinks, you know, Canelo's fights are rigged. <laughs> and he goes, I don't think it's necessarily that they're rigged. I think it's just a Styles thing. Like, a lot of people think they're rigged, but I just think it's Styles. Dude, like, wait, yeah, who's telling him they think it's rigged? Because, you know, it, it, ain't, it ain't me. You know what I mean? So he's hearing this from, like, people in the industry, dude. Like, you know, actual fighters, managers, trainers. Yeah, people know. Yeah, everyone knows, dude. If you've been around boxing, you know. Yeah, you can tell a fixed fight. Like, yeah. you're so new to the sport. Yes. Only noobs can tell. And dude, Canelo, most of Canelo's fans are fucking noobs, so they can't well, tell. Bro, most and, boxing and- fans right now are noobs, at least mm-hmm. on social media. And yeah. Lopez saying that is a big tell, right? Because what, really, yeah. what he's really saying is, I think everybody else thinks that this guy's fights are fixed. Uh-huh. Well, what he's saying is, everybody thinks his fights are fixed. Everybody. So, like, they are. Everybody knows. Yeah. I mean, dude. I don't know what to tell you, man. His his head movement's gotten really uh, progressively better over the years. Hey, hey, don't don't forget about the counter punching. The counter punching. Yep. He's such a he's such a scary man. I mean, yeah. And the so defense and the, the head defense. Movement. And the not, head movement. Did I he mention head out movement? So many people. You know, he's such a giant monster yeah. puncher. He knocks out so many people. Yeah, he does. But who the fuck is he ever? What B level guy who's like? Have D, who, who a B plus level guy or above? What B or above guy he ever knocked out? You, you, sh- you should listen to that commentary from the Kovalev Canelo fight. The and whole he, time, the whole time they're saying Kovalev better watch out for his strength. Yeah. Oh, Canelo's coming forward. Oh, Kovalev better watch out for his power. Dude, I'm like, Sergio the Mora in yeah. the middle of a fight goes, man, Canelo just looks so cool in there. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the way he's balding. Oh, it's insane, man. But look, like. He's what what primed up B level guy 
has he ever even decisively defeated, let alone knocked out? Trout? No. Lara? No. He beat Jose Cinto Lopez. No. Floyd? No. Golovkin 1 and 2? No. Danny Jacobs? No. Like, everyone else was a fucking a wreck. Like, or just total fucking beyond rig fights. But, you know, uh, there's so many ways to rig a fight. Like, sometimes, like, fuck, Suleiman admitted the fucking Yildrum fight was fixed. He did? Yeah. What'd he say? He's got a fucking great video on it. Um, yeah. Uh, What'd he yeah. say about it? Because I remember I watched that live. That's, fucking yeah. Yildrum just retired on his stool after getting knocked down once. Yeah, he he, he, he says... Uh, uh, Yildrum rigged it. Like Yildrum didn't come there to win. You know, came. He, did, he didn't fake it well enough, or what? No, nah, he, he says rigged or fixed. He says it straight up. I mean, um, I mean, it's on Fight Films channel. Suleiman has been letting the cat out of the bag too. Dude, I know. Oh, protecting Haney, like let him talk a bit more, eh? Yeah, yeah, for real. I got to get an interview with this guy, <laughs> bro. Give me his Twitter. Or I'm direct. I'm messaging this guy. <laughs> I hope he responds to me like he does to you. That's what happens when they, you know they get when they get older. They start trying to get into heaven. Mm-hmm. Bro, watch him like just reveal all the corruption when he's like on his deathbed. <laughs> God, please! That would be amazing. <laughs> all Canelo's fights were fixed. Andre Ward's a fucking fraud. Yep. We let Floyd juice. We let Canelo juice. Bro, I don't understand how, like, like Valdez, how he tested positive before his fight with Burchelt, and, like, he gets the KO, and they give him the belt. Like, how is that legal? How is that legal? He tested positive for roids and, like, weight-cutting shit before the fight. Yes. How do they let him fight for a title? Stimulus. I remember when that would disqualify you. Mm-hmm. No, and you would just, they call it no contest once yeah. they see your drug results. Like, how do they actually give them the belt from that? I don't fucking understand how that's, how they work around that. Because in the fine print of the WBC handbook, it has like a billion rules. And then the last rule is we have the right to change rules at any time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I guess. No I joke. Guess. It's no joke. Like, Are you kidding? Yeah, no, not at all. Uh-oh. Holy fuck. <laughs> that explains it, then. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> when did they fucking do that? When did they When did they put that in? Probably forever. God. You could probably find it on the website. If, um... If you like read, go re- find where, like, wherever their fucking rules are or whatever. I'm sure it's there. It's funny. But, like, um, they do it for some fighters and they don't. Yeah, do whenever they, the, what, they have their rules, but they can change them at any time with their own discretion if they feel needed. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So it's like whatever promoter pays them the most. Yes, yes, exactly. And God forbid Bibble knocks out Canelo. Oh, he's testing positive for fucking. Oh my god, yeah. Oh my god. I just I need to I want Bibble to knock him out so bad. Like I'm praying, man. I'm praying. You should just elbow him. What? Just hit him with a nice elbow. Cut him. Good. Andre Ward style. Yep. Elbow, Headbutts, punch him in the elbows, elbows. Yo, yo, punch in the balls. Just kick him in the balls. You're cutting out, Nate. You should get that dude uh, from uh, Blood Sports to give him that powder, put it on his gloves. What's that? Get that dude from from Bloodsport. Just put the get, oh. that, get that pill. Put it on his gloves. Yeah, Sonny, listen to this now. Just punch, just punch Canelo. Uh huh. Yeah, that'd be good. Blind him with the wow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I used to love that shit as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh God. Liniman. Like Sonny did to Ali. Hit him with the liniman. Get a throw in his face. I'll rub it all over your gloves. Oh, and then fucking Canelo getting the smelling salts. Yeah. He's drinking everything. There's probably shit in his, yeah. his water bottle, too. It's probably not just water. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, he's a, he's a six-round fighter. And then all he has to do is, like, struggle from seven, eight, nine, and then, boom, he gets gassed up for 10, 11, and 12. <laughs> yeah, it's like in the Saunders fight. He, he He's dead. As soon as the fifth round hit, the guy was flat and dead. Maybe even the fourth. And then he comes out like it was like eighth or ninth, and he's like psh, just shoots up out of his <laughs> out of his chair and hits his dude with the uppercut super fast. Like, come on, he yep. took something. If you watch this that fight, fucking, Canelo was fading hard. Danny hardcore. Jacobs fight, the Golovkin fight, uh, the Cotto fight. Every time, bro, he's he comes like, back hard himself. in the twelfth and harder than he was in the first. In the twelfth, he's throwing punches just as fast as he did in the first. Yeah, and like combos, just like going insane. <laughs> I don't get tired, man. Not anymore. Yeah. I don't get tired. They it called water, man. It wake I, me yeah, up. Yeah, I just drink some water, man, and I <laughs> put the towel on my face, man, and I get this burst of energy, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't man, know why, man. It's just that towel, man. It's just the way they put it on your neck like that. I mean, it's cool. I got so much energy now. <laughs> They're giving him like bumps in the corner. Yeah. Gets up like. <sighs> Reynoso smashed Super a Saiyan. towel on my face, man. Once, once Reynoso smashed a towel on my face, man, I get the fucking burst of energy, man. <laughs> he takes fuck? a deep breath. You see how he always takes this real deep yeah. inhale after he takes it. Like, his <sighs> nose all, his nose is all flared out and shit. I'm gonna go get that shit in case people think I'm fucking lying. He takes a deep breath and he gets up. He's all good again. <laughs> oh, it looks like Howie Mandel Del there, the, the Nazi dude. I got the gas, mate. Don't go, man. He gassed me line. up, mate. Where is this? 12, I gotta go back. Danny Jacobs got an enormous head. <laughs> Him and Canelo got the biggest bobble heads in boxing, probably. And this is it, I think. No. What is, he, what is this? this? What weight was this? Like middleweight? Super. Dan, so Danny's a super middleweight with a heavyweight head. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think his head's bigger than Anthony Joshua's. Got off game, mate. He looks like some weird pop star. I know, right? He does. He looks like a fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> See, he does songs like some R&B. Oh, he mean there, though. He looks fucking mean. Some, 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 like, dance music. Yeah. <laughs> Big in the UK. What they giving Canelo, man? And what round How tiny Canelo looks next to him. There's a DJ Golovkin. Ringside. DJ. Yeah. Does anyone know what round it is when he gets the special gas? That's almost every round he does that. <laughs> yeah, but there's that one where his no nostrils flare out and everything. He has to do it every round so it doesn't look weird when he actually puts something yeah, in it. for real, for real, right? Look at that blocking technique. His whole face is open. <laughs> <laughs> Triple G's like, wow, Canelo, you're a bum. You're a bum, man. You're a bum, man. He knows you know, he beat the shit out of this guy, dropped him like twice, and Canelo's over here struggling. Oh. Oh, look at that weed whack. Look at that, that uh, leaf brawler. There's only one way out. What? Battery powered? Huh? Look at him getting beat up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he gets wait, wait, wait. In the second half, bro. I actually thought he lost this fight. Canelo lost this when I first watched it. I didn't rewatch it, but I thought he lost. Danny, you know, yeah, I need to restore it because man, oh, there it is. Here, Canelo, sniff this. Oh, sniff that. Sniff this, man. Yeah, sniff this, man. <laughs> sniff this, man. <laughs> this is good. Sniff is it, this, man. 
Hey man, this thing there, come on, yeah. sniff a hey, little. Sniff, sniff this, man. They're like they find something in the system. It's always the tainted towel, man. <laughs> it's, a tainted towel. it's a tainted towel, man. And then Joe Rogan's like, dude, it was a tainted towel. Yeah, man, we bought that from the Walmart. That shit we had something it. in it. <laughs> you know, man, like you know, Rogan. man, you go to Walmart, you spend five dollars, you think it's in a clean towel, but yeah, it's Rogan. A, it's like, a you know, in, in these factories, the guys are poor, they're doing stimulants to get through the day. Well, I mean, they could easily have, like, dropped some coke on the towel. <laughs> he would say that. Hey, you never know these guys, you know. Of they... course he would. It's in a factory. It's in Mexico. He's shipping his towels in from Mexico. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt this factory has kilos stored in the back, man. <laughs> and then him, Brent, and then he just says something about uh, he has a dick joke, and then it's all passed. The moment is passed. Watch, there's this one. This ain't the big one, though. But watch. He sniffs it. Watch his nostrils. Yeah, it looks he like he clearly to... inhales through his nose. Yeah. yeah. It's probably some shit that's going to be out of his system by the time the fight's over. Look, he watch. He, he nods at him like, give me more. There we go. Come on. <laughs> Why did you smother your fighter's face? Yeah. That's probably not even some smelling salts either. Because he feels that. He's like, oh, oh, that's getting me up now. And he wants a little more. Oh, and he comes out like a bat out of hell. He looks probably like an like Horse stimulants. <laughs> he put something in there that's going to be out of his system real quick. Well, he, dude, the WBC ain't testing him. Look, he goes, yeah, give me. <laughs> Come on, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tony. These PEDs are ten percent of our adjusted gross. I don't give a fuck. It make me fight better. <laughs> He's looking right at it. When yeah. have you ever seen a fucking coach just push the towel over his nose and mouth? God, remember, I was telling you that that he, he does it every single yeah. time in a very specific way. He does I it every you round. Were like exaggerating till I fucking nah, saw. He, I was just it's... watching the fight and saw it and was like, oh my god. Yeah. Because it's an awkward motion. It's like, dude, uh -huh. it's, the, it's the fucking first round of the fight. Why are you putting a towel on his face? Well, like, this you know, is you, going into the 11. Now you know. That's just like right on the nose. Uh-huh. Usually he does it in a very Watch specific his nostrils. way. Watch how yeah. What's the benefit of it? Yeah, where yeah. is the benefit? He's Stopping not bleeding. him from breathing? There's no blood or anything coming out of his nose. So why are you doing that? Yeah, he just yeah. basically snorted a bunch of it's, shit. Like, think about it. If it's not a stimmy, he's just stopping him from breathing. <laughs> he's probably something that something liquid or something, maybe. And he put up his nose. Yeah, liquefies pulps or something. Push it on it. Drip it on it now. Yeah. Oh, he really Whoa. left that there for a while. Yeah, you know he gave him something. Yeah. He definitely did. I've seen I've seen it happen. If you watch the the, the Floyd uh, Mayweather Shane Mosley fight, they were gonna put something up his nose too. I've never seen a fucking coach just smush a towel over a fighter's nose or mouth. They do it in different ways. Some guys they'll like put it on their hand, and they'll put it like they'll be pretending that they're working like <laughs> some swelling, and they'll just sniff it. They'll take like a bump right off the guy's hand. They're real sneaky with it, you know. This isn't yeah. very sneaky. You can tell Canelo's not he's not blowing his nose either. No. When the towel's over his face. No, he's not. That's interesting. Bro, his nostrils flare. Yeah, you could say like he's snorting. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's like kind of inhaling something after. That's how fucking big his nostrils get. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> He listen, he's looking kind of apish here, man. He's looking like a red. Hey, he does kind of look apish. It's like the hey, years of life. Yeah, I'm old. I'm old enough to remember when blowing your yeah. nose was was the last thing you ever did in the boxing. Well, you don't want to do it because your like your eyes will swell shut sometimes. When your wow. eyes. And look, if he blew his nose, they would have like. They would have, like, cupped it over and then, like, wiped it, you know? Like, squeezed yeah. it and wiped it and shit. They didn't do any There's of that. There's nothing there, yeah. 
He gets it's like you said. He snorted a little bit. He's like, "Oh, give me a little bit more." <laughs> okay, like I'm it. I'm good now. Give my me heart. some money. Right? <laughs> He's like, "Hey, man, my heart, my heart is like gonna about to explode, man." Lift this I, shit, man. <laughs> I'm feeling I'm feeling good, man. Take a whiff of this, man. <laughs> <laughs> what fight is this? Is it Saunders? Uh, Jacobs. Oh yeah. Yeah, his okay. nostrils were percolating, bro. <laughs> exactly, percolating. You saw it. He's doing this in every fight. If he did it here, he did. Remember everyone, remember at the Golovkin fight, everyone was like, man, he came out like a bird out of hell in 11 and 12. Yeah, because he, he took he whatever that thing. shit is. He did the same thing in the Kodo fight. Go watch round 11 of Kodo. He does the same thing, comes right out, and immediately, Aldo remember this, he smashes him right in the dick on purpose. Yep. Gets a little warning for it, and then fucking goes ham on Kodo, just throwing combo, combo, yeah, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Dirty as hell, just trying to get a knockout because he knows he was losing. Exactly, exactly. And he did anything possible to get that knockout, and it still didn't work out. Sure didn't. He landed a low blow. I don't think the ref even gave him a warning. I think just he like, said something. I recall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just shot right at him and started just throwing everything. still punch. lost the round, too. <laughs> Bum ass. He's a fucking B level fighter with every advantage under the sun. Roid it out. That's it. They even let him wear gloves that have no padding in them, knuckles. God, and I'm not making it up. Go watch, like, fucking. Uh, uh, no boxing, no life glove reviews. Like totally neutral channels who just review all gloves. They they're like, what the fuck? Was it the twelfth? He got hit with that massive low blow. One of them. It was disgusting, man. But man, Kodo did look like a fucking ape. Canelo, I mean, did look like a fucking red monkey. That's racist to gingers. You can't say that. They're going to come after you. Uh, I look like an Italian monkey. No, no worries. No problem. <laughs> you look like a Rican monkey. No worries. <laughs> We're, we make fun of people. We're cool. Man. I'm fucking people. Dude, oh, my God. Like, I was just talking to uh, somebody. I'm not going to say who, but we were talking about people on here. You know how, like, when you're, like, hanging with your buddy, he's, like, you know, chilling in a room, and they'll say some dumb shit, and they're like, man, shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, you know, whatever, and they'll go back and forth. Dude, you do that to some people on here, and they just, like, run away and leave forever. <laughs> like, they don't even know how to have, like, fucking uh, manly banter. You know, they're just, like, talking shit. They don't even know how to do it. They think, like, you're being, like, dead serious. Yeah. But, I mean, there's certain limits to that kind of thing. I, I've met some people that do go a little, like, stupid with that. Well, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, there's limits to anything, obviously. Because yeah. yeah. those are the people that, like, they're not – it's like they're trying. Like, they're trying to be that way, but that's not how they are. Yeah. They yeah, 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 real yeah, stupid. Yeah. I hear you there. Like, the people that do it, they know what, you know, they yeah. know uh, what, <laughs> like, what buttons to push. Like, yeah, especially like a channel like mine where you know people talk shit and people are hyperbolic. Like, you know, shouldn't be. Whoa, my computer's about to die. Holy shit. I see the no no boxing, no life. What is it? They're, uh, there's no padding or they just wear out real fast? But no, there's no fucking padding, dude. The knuckles have no fucking padding. I've showed the video, the glove review videos on there, man. It was disgusting. Fucking disgusting. Like, when you bend the gloves, like at, 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 at this point, like the knuckle point, the leather just goes, touches instantly. Any other glove, there will be like a squish. Oh, it's yeah. just leather to leather instantly. Leather to leather. And even with that, the guy still can't punch. No, that's the, no, that's the other thing, man. Like, what the fuck, bro? It's crazy, and he puts so much on every punch. Yeah, dude, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like you fuck. add all these advantages to this guy, and he still can't, like, definitively beat little yeah. old Kodo. Yeah, massive <laughs> legs, massive arms. Yeah, he got kills. fucking 20, 30 pounds on him. 
fucking, and he's roided out. He's this wearing these little past his prime, and you, you, he's you wearing leather gloves. Blood, but you're pound for pound number one. He's what? wearing he's wearing leather gloves with illegal wraps. And he still can't yeah. even knock you down. <laughs> yeah, he's he's never even dropped a fucking B plus uh or higher. Really a primed up B level guy. He's never even dropped one. He can't even knock out guys. Well, I guess he dropped brain. trout. He dropped trout when he weighed 178 pounds. The trout thing. <laughs> you know, a little trout. Yeah. I mean, and then trout got right back up and was fine. I think trout actually won the rest of their round. He did. I remember because when I first saw the fight, I was rooting for Canelo. I thought, oh, this guy's really good. He's like an up and comer. He's he's pretty good. And I saw the fight. I was like, wow, he's really struggling here. Yeah, he's not looking yeah, good he here. He lost. I was thinking he's losing all these rounds, isn't he? <laughs> and then he got the one knockdown, and they're like, he won the fight. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it was, too. And God forbid you point any of this shit out. You're a hater. It's like, no, dude, I, I, I'm not a hater, but it's the fact that you. Everyone calls him pound for pound number one when everyone agrees he lost to Golovkin both times. Arguably lost to fucking Cotto. Arguably lost to Laura. Arguably lost to Trout. Arguably lost to Jacobs. Who the fuck did he ever decisively beat? Uh, Josecito Lopez. Well, there you go. Best win. Hang your hat on that. It's fucking yeah. pathetic. The guy came up to one. What was it? One. And he's cheating with every fucking advantage under the sun. No, he, he couldn't. He couldn't even knock. Lo- you know, he couldn't even knock Lopez out. No. Lopez just kept getting up. Yeah. They had to just call it off. They had to just call it off. He wasn't even getting hurt. He was just getting knocked you know, down. He ain't a puncher, man. And then fucking um. He never was. That's why I think it's yeah. crazy when people well, are like, oh, he, he's... He loses to Floyd. He loses to Golovkin both times. You know, split the difference. Trout, Lara, Jacobs. Give him at least one of those losses. How the fuck is he pound for pound number one? What has he ever done? He's, he's an all-time great. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people say. He's an all-time I mean, great. Man, you just don't know. I see things. Like, you see a fucking ginger-haired cock that you want to suck. That's what you see. That's, that, that's tainted meat, man. <laughs> I want his tainted meat, man. <laughs> I want to taste his tainted meat, man. He should make like a string of like restaurants like that in Mexico. Tainted meat. <laughs> he, can, he can open some ship clubs called tainted meat. <laughs> tainted meat, man. Come down to my ship club, tainted meat. I know. Ain't that right, Jose? He goes, I'm tired of pointing out facts and people calling it hate. It's all bullshit, man. Boy, is it. And then it's like, well, bro, you've been watching boxing for fucking, what, six years at most. And you don't really, like, watch boxing. You just, like, stare at one guy. You don't know what the fuck you're even looking at. And uh, I'm supposed to listen to you? Like, no, man. I'm telling you. I've been watching this shit for fuck As a hardcore fan, 20 fuck now 26 years. I know what the fuck a real fight looks like. God. And this fucking bum is draining guys. Putting rehydration clauses on fucking old men. Like, you're a bitch, dude. While you're all roided out and shit. Fucking dehydration clauses. Go suck dick, man. Fucking embarrassing. It really is. Yeah, we're all oh, dude. Jose. They done they do that so much. It's like it's nothing to do with fucking race. Like I was a fan of Joe Smith Jr. The second Max and Blazov beat him and he tried acting like he fucking won. I dropped that bitch like a bad habit too. Fuck out of here, man. You could have at least just said, ah, close fight, I'll have to watch it back. But if he wants a rematch, we can do it. Like, what's so hard about that? Instead, oh no, I whooped him. I dominated him. Like, go fuck yourself, man. Dude. Oh, people putting the fucking word goat next to fucking Floyd Mayweather or Canelo Alvarez. It's like, oh, I there's, hate There's it. nothing sadder than a Floyd Mayweather fan. But they got to go justify this guy's ducking and his uh, 
you know, holding. Yeah. Oh, he, de- he definitely <laughs> did. Uh, uh, Jose. Absolutely. That's where he got him from. Yeah. And it's like, you know, my whole life, I fucking bought every single fucking ring magazine. That's the Bible of boxing. And now they're just like a fucking the National Enquirer of boxing. All fucking lies. All fucking bullshit, man. Obviously, there's going to be some good articles in it, but the main point of it, like rankings and shit, which is what, you know, their integrity was always built on, is atrocious. Atrocious. (laughs) Exactly, Luca. Canelo is what would happen if Danny Garcia was allowed to fucking cheat every which way and drain his opponents. He'd be pound for pound number one. He'd actually be undefeated, though. (laughs) I mean, dude, they're virtually the same guy. Exactly, Jose. Same here. Same here. 41 years old. And I've been watching longer than since I was 15, but I'll just say hardcore since I was 15 years old. 20 fucking six years. I know a real fucking fight. I've been watching this shit since I was a fucking kid. Like with my dad, just like my son does. My son's been watching boxing and getting every little thing explained to him since he was like five. He's already got 10 years in the game. He could come in a fight better than these clowns, man. Oh, thousand percent. No doubt about it. He sees exactly what's really happening. As does, man, I swear, as does everybody else, but they just lie. Jose, same here since the fucking on TV. Yep, I remember watching Sugar Ray Leonard. My dad making me sit down. It was the first, like, full fight I can remember watching Sugar Ray Leonard. I don't remember who it was against, but he had red and white trunks on. Yeah. And my dad was like, you got to pay attention to this guy, man. When you get older, everyone's going to be calling him an all-time great. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Damn. Was that in? What? Well, you like real young. Leonard, I mean, yeah, I was real young. Probably before you could walk, eh? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I could barely walk. Yeah, I remember I was in like <laughs> wooden school chairs right in front of the TV. I was like six feet from the TV, dead center, just bonk, sit there and watch it. <laughs> yeah, he, he probably hadn't even fought Hagler in that yet. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it would have been like 86, 87 or something. Yeah. Uh, I might have just been, yeah, after he came back. Beat Hagler, something like that. Oh, he, he was right, bro. Because look at look how he's looked at now, you know. Yeah, I think it was obvious by that time, probably though. But yeah, yeah, that's true. But still, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And motherfuckers want to debate me on some boxing, like fool. You weren't even born yet. <laughs> I was fucking breaking fights down. Get the fuck out of here. And having them broke down to me. It always, it's always just appeals to authority. Remember that dude that said he was a pro boxer, so he knows more boxing than us? And then we found out his box rec was like 2 7 and 1. Yeah, I do. I actually yeah, think but, it was like 2 and 14 and 1 or something. <laughs> but you know what kills that, bro? Mike McCallum, one of the best fighters I've ever seen fight, reckons that Rolly Romero was better oh, than Duran. Dumb as fuck. <laughs> yeah, he said Rolly could beat Duran. Like, just, dude, man. So that shows you how much they know, bro, some of them. Yeah, they've had their brains ruined. So they're not, and they, even when they joined boxing, they were already dumb little kids. At least step back, reporting. <laughs> <laughs> reporting. Oh, get out of here. Remember, oh. Freddie Roach is like, get out of here, Jew. Yeah. Keep <laughs> kaboom. <laughs> He's like, what, what, why are you, why are you being racist, Freddie? Oh, yeah. Freddie Roach out of here. shit for that one, though, man. You fucking Jew. <laughs> <laughs> he, don't, he don't lever like that guy. No, I don't know. Well, no, he lets him in his gym. And then he just sucks off Freddy. Right. Now I'm locked. Everybody that lets him in. Now I'm locked. Stop back. Oh, 
Uh, they treat him like uh, some retarded little kid. Yeah, Ellie yeah. Snitchback is yeah. a fucking yeah. Ellie Snitchback. Yeah, dude, you want to talk about, oh my God, you want to talk about me being angry? I was you know, just scrolling through YouTube today, yesterday actually. Pauly Malignaggi. I want to talk about oh, yeah. who are the most overrated fighters of all time. And Would you say something? Yeah, I think I heard this. Who he's doing the show with? Snitch. That's fucking snitch. Yeah, I did see this. Yes. I I couldn't even watch it. Couldn't even watch it. Paulie, Paulie just Paulie is like one step forward, three steps back. Oh, yes. Back. Thank you, man. As soon as I started getting a little more respect for him, fuck. Fuck, man. He's sitting there with that snitch. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Uh, you're right, uh, Jose. You're right, man. Jose's on point because we need more young boxing fans, not just biased fan boys. Paulie didn't say anything, but he did a show with that fucking rat uh, nest on the boxing boys. But I actually know what he said. This will annoy you as well, and that's what I thought you were getting to. And then I then I actually remembered. But I, I someone else told me. You know, he said was one of the most overrated. Them. He fought, nah, he sold out his own Italian. Oh. He threw an Italian under the bus. Who? He said Kawasaki. Oh, fuck him. <laughs> fuck he him. Fucking him back? That's fucking 30 steps back. He's a fucking kid, mate. Oh, my God, man. Don't talk about my side piece. Yeah. Don't talk about my side had piece. To, had to throw another Italian. I, yeah, he's a fuck. Yeah. You know. Why? Why wouldn't it have been Floyd? If you're gonna talk shit on Calzaghi, what about Floyd? Fuck. At least pick the guy you were rivals with, Brona. Look, fuck. Pick him at least. At least Calzaghi took on the best guy in his division while he was in his prime. And and he did it with one hand. Didn't and wo- and him. whooped like, him. <laughs> fought the boogeyman of his division with one hand. And didn't just fucking fight him. Beat the living shit out of him. And Paulie's just jealous that a guy with brittle hands could still school everyone and he couldn't. He's Nailed fucking it. fragile. It? Nailed it. Yep. He's mad when people bring up Italians. It's Joe and not him. Yeah. You know, Joe did it with fuck hands. Calzaghi, Malinaji's never mentioned. What? Paulie even has a video about what he dislikes about Manny Peck. Oh my god, dude. Fucking hater. <laughs> That's a hater. All because he wanted the Pacquiao payday. And Roach was like, get the fuck out of here, dude. And then he wanted to no, he, he, They called him out. They said, oh, if you want to fight Manny, you can fight him. He's like, no, 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 no. My hand hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, he, my... Talked, he wanted to spar. On one <laughs> and Roach said, there's nothing you can do. Like, yeah. you, you can help. So they said if he wants it, he can have it. And he didn't want it. <laughs> he knows Manny would have murdered him. Man, <laughs> Manny would have picked his teeth with Malinagi, bro. <laughs> He would have probably just stood there with his hands behind his back and let Malinaji just tee off on him. You saw Ricky Hatton was really smiled. Woo. He's like, okay, now I kill you. <laughs> now I kill you. I let you hit me. He let, he'll let Malinaji unload on him for a whole round with his hands yeah. behind his back. <laughs> like Homer Simpson. <laughs> He'd be like, wait, wait. He'd be like, wait, was that the wind? Okay, now it's time to kill you. <laughs> He's like, blam, 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 blam. He'll be eating like every left hand, probably. Joe, Joe had big hands. Joe had big hands, huh? Oh. Paulie would just end up painted on the canvas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> be a fucking shit stain. he never on, be the same. On Manny's trunks. That's insane. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have a single tooth left in his mouth. How could he do a video with a rat when he always tries to act fucking like an Italian gangster? It's gross. Fucking gross, man. How does anyone allow this guy in the fucking business? Why can't fucking Jay Prince take 
do something that like actually helps the fucking game instead of only hurting it. He only cares about helping himself. Yes, bingo, bingo. I mean, this motherfucker ratted on every single person he knew. Wanted to play big time, fucking want to be dope dealer. I'm pushing a bunch of weed, man. I'm moving pounds, man. As soon as you get pinched, <laughs> it was everybody else. <laughs> I'll gladly send every friend I ever had yeah. to federal prison. I, I tried to tell him I want nothing to do yeah, with this. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Fucking gross, man. Fucking gross. You wanted to live the life. Now live the fucking life. I'm telling you, dude. Who's a rat? The guy from um Nest. That's from the boxing voice. You Google his name, you'll see the whole case file. What was he? What do you have to do? A fucking couple of years? Like, fucking cop a plea, go do two fucking years, big whoop. All your friends are safe. I don't care if it was 10 years. Oh, well, you wanted to live the life. Hardcore convicts will tell you, man. I'll do two years on my head. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I'll do that in a fucking heartbeat to save my friends. If I if I, if I made the decision, like, hey, guys, let's go make some money, and then it's me who gets fucking pulled. Yeah. What, 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 what? It's like no doubt. You, you, I don't, <laughs> there ain't a choice. You want all the perks. But none of the bad. Fuck out of here, man. Shit's sad. And then you got all these so-called gangster-ass PBC fighters. <laughs> They're all gangbangers. But then they fucking do interviews with them and shit. Yeah, yeah they're, they're all real like Spitty's fucking fights. Exactly. Well, you know, half their fucking crew are rats, too. I'd spit me spice so I don't even come near me, bro. Everyone knows that fucking group stays fucking snitching, stays raping, stays fucking pedoing, and no one even fucking bounces them off the block. They're allowed to hang out. They'll stick up for them for crying out loud. Lost Viagras. <laughs> the Lost Viagras. The, oh, this is the channel. This is the channel to talk about. They're a cop joke. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Oh, do you know um, CJ uh, NG? Yeah. Uh, when they like were first developing, there was a branch of them. Called, oh, it called like it was, the sick ones. That's what it was called. The sick ones. Ah, uh, yeah, didn't know. Yeah. Uh, if, if if you're from that cartel and they're called the sick ones, yeah, they dude, must be really, really, really fucking sick. Dude, the uh, CJ uh, NG makes fucking Los Zetas look like fucking school kids. Well, they're the evolved version of them, aren't yeah. they? Yep, yep. They're like the 2.0 version. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah, they're like what ISIS made Taliban look like, you know? I guess. Yeah, no, yes, it's exactly what it was. They're like the 2.0 version. It got worse. 
So if they're ver- if there's a group within them called the Sick Fucks or whatever, they must be absolutely <laughs> the <crazy>. Sick Fucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sick ones. Imagine it. The sick ones. These they are must the be disgraceful. Just oh my god, they gotta be humans. fucking corpses and shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if you mention the Zetas to Johnny Boy, <laughs> he'll somehow say he's connected to one of them. <laughs> yeah, I remember my homie hit me with a fucking tweet pretending to be. There was some shit that went down. Yeah, maybe you tell me about that. <laughs> fucking pretended like it, it was linked to the fucking CJNG. Oh, my God. It was good. I, it was good. I, it was good. <laughs> so I actually um, joke. <laughs> I actually know an older lad here, though, that got done for important, like, like 180 kilos, but he's buying them from Monterey, Mexico. I'm pretty sure that is the Zethers. Uh, I've heard that city brought up before. Probably was going through them. Jesus. Because they're like on the Gulf of Mexico, I think. Eh? I believe so. They like control like Texas and that, eh? Like that, that part yeah, of the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause, yeah. You know, like, yeah, actually, they, um, they, you know, because they're like just violence, violence, violence. Um, they ended up like locking down the corridor, yeah, uh, from 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 Mexico straight to Chicago, and everyone had to like pay them to use their routes. Yeah, sick bastards, man. I mean, they're the guys who were like, you know, dropping like three hundred bodies in mass graves, just go through a whole village and wipe it out, man. Chop them to bits. Three hundred people chopped to bits. Like, yeah, you're sick. Like, I don't care. You could, like, have went in normal. <laughs> After a day of fucking butchering, like, 273 is what it was, 273 fucking people, you're no longer normal. I knew some, I knew some other, well, a friend of mine, his mate, I'm not really mates with them, but like someone I'm close to was close to the lads. They were buying off, they got arrested, they were buying off Mexican Chicago. That might have been them as well, or maybe the Capo's one, I don't know. It would have probably been one of the two. Well, it's either them or Sinaloa. Yeah. 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 And all they did was, you know, make everyone else have to step up their fucking cruelty game. Jeez, man. But to make the Zetas look like fucking nothing, dude. <laughs> that's, that's, some, that's really worrisome. Yep. Yeah. No one wants to fucking deal. No one wants to even deal with people like that. Yeah. It's even spiraling down to the other Latin American countries. Like, I've seen this right. Sure is. Oh, oh, oh. CJNG has a huge stronghold in Honduras. Yep. Yeah. But I think they're even going down into what the, where, where it's produced, you know, like Bolivia, Peru, and that. Yeah. They're like going to the production. Well, Okay, okay. Well, yeah, they said that that was an issue. Whenever they uh, were taking, whenever the Zetas, anyway, were taking over the Gulf Cartel, they didn't have any connections to um, Colombia or Peru or Bolivia. Hey. All the connections were, you know, kept with the Gulf Cartel. One guy, I forget who it was, though, he ended up like getting control of the Zetas. And locked down that corridor that uh, CJNG ended up taking over. So once he had that corridor locked down, they had to deal with him. And that's how they ended up <clears throat> developing. Right, right. Yeah. Did that guy get killed as well? That one, the main one that took the. I believe so. <laughs> I believe yeah. so. I think it might have been that guy, Lascano or something. You can name. probably watch him on fucking. LiveGore.com. Yeah, I think he's the one that brought all that, like, took it to the, like, a pioneer of all that real savage shit, you know? Yeah. I think what he's is... the one that broke off from the Gulf. Because remember, they used to work for the Gulf Cartel. Yeah, that's the guy. Yep, that's the yeah, guy. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, that's Kana. He's an absolute savage. What the fuck makes somebody... 
Look, I understand, like, <laughs> you know, you got to hold down your territory or whatever. You know, someone steps up, you got to knock them down or something. But, like, just going after 100% innocent people, like entire villages, like men, women, children, it don't matter. And just hacking them to bits. What the fuck? It just, it's just got to the point that so much money involves so much. The violence has got to a level that just needs to keep getting up. And it's yeah. just getting disgusting art, disgusting oh, art. What do they do from now? What do they do now? Like, I mean, they're worshiping the devil and shit. Kind of like seances. Oh, they're just gross people. I hate to say it, man. They'll probably start doing like that shit they do in like Africa and Cambodia. Like, start doing that to like kids and that, you know, like routinely. Yeah, yeah I, pray, I pray, I pray not, but you know, they have, they've been, oh, they already had, they've already started, right? yeah. Yep, yep. It's gonna get like, like, how it was, like, them things in Rwanda, like, just mass slaughters, you know, uh huh, of just innocent children and women. Oh, apparently, El Mencho may have um, weakening kidneys, they think mm -hmm. the CIA thinks that he might be on dialysis. Yeah, well, I even heard they reckon he might be dead. They're just keeping his name to throw it. Yeah, throw he, he, may be. he may be. That would be clever. Because the, de yeah. the the US always loves a main target to just focus on, you know? Yep, yep. And they're spending all that resources on some guy who doesn't even exist. Yeah. So that would actually be great. Right, that makes sense because I've seen all these videos of him screaming his name like he's a cult figure. That could just be to throw off, like, you know? Let's just move. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if he's dead and you're the new boss, what would you do? Tell people to go start chanting his name like Chapo. Like, put him on T-shirt yeah. make everybody exactly. go. There's already, like, a $20 million reward or whatever. I am. Um, yeah. I don't know how true it is, but I always heard people in Mexico could probably tell us more. I heard the Sinaloa ones were, were not, like, as, um, they weren't as, like, up with this, like, you know, violence. Yeah, yeah, they were more like an old school mafia than, than this shit, you know? Yeah, because they come from the land of farms, you know? They are uh, you know, families of farmers. So they're businessmen and farmers. That's, that's it. You know, they'll get violent if they have to. But, yeah, they rely on farming and business. These other I guys, the sheer violence, that's it. They have nothing to offer. But, See, and that's the problem with this violence in, in this part of the, the world. Like, you could actually be someone with some morals and that. But if this shit happens to your family, you'll turn into a fucking savage, you know? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. say, say that happens to your kid, yeah. you'll, you, you'll turn into that to get revenge. Imagine seeing a video of your people getting, like, chopped limb yeah. from limb from limb from limb. Skin. Well, it'd make, you, it'd make you want to do the same thing, really. That's a natural reaction. Yeah, go and do the same thing, absolutely. Yeah, I understand it in that regard, but you know, two hundred people or something like, yeah, they didn't all do that. But I hear you for sure. Like, yeah. That's oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not condoning the disgusting no, yeah, yeah. way. But I'm, yeah, it's just it's no. got to a, it's got to like the mentality of a third world country, like one of them, like Sudan or Cambodia, where the, it's just uh -huh. like it, it's just violence. Like, it's just a whole cycle now of, of you know. Yeah. No, you're murdering. right. Dude. That's how it happens. Yeah, it starts. Uh, Timothy Figueroa, and did you ever watch The Last Narc? Yeah, I just watched it last week. Well, it shows how much it escalated. That murder at that time was considered, like, brutal. What, what they did to him, <laughs> that's, that's tame to what they do now. Yeah, you're right. Don't get me wrong, you didn't want to experience how that man died, but I mean, Compared to what they do now, how they torture people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you if you can think of it, they did it to them, man. That's how gross it was. Oh, they did, for sure. And they're probably going to hand in a lot of this now that's going on. Well, who taught the Zedazan? You know, who trained them to be that sadistic? Yep, CIA. And the other... Marines and CIA, Mossad... Yep. 
<clears throat> and that's not even like a theory. That's like well, well known. Because they were supposed to be an anti-drug force. <clears throat> and then when they learned how to like bust them and find their stash houses, they were like, wait a second. You know, <laughs> what are we doing this for? We're making like eight grand a year. We could become millionaires tomorrow. Dirty business. But what is this, Anderson? You sent me this uh, video here. John Stewart is too woke for Cory Booker. Anti-white farmer rant is even too much for the New Jersey senator. Let's peep it. Ways. So he came in. I said, hey, look, we got a crisis. Very few black farmers are existing. Do something about it. He did something about it. It and, was my legislation. And my point is, oh, what I, happened to that legislation? It got stopped. That's my point. Because we have a Supreme Court and that we knew. It's, it was, it, 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 it got stopped because of legal white challenges. White resentment. Yes. <gasps> white farmers felt like no, no. resources were being taken away from them and given to people. Because who some didn't, people... Not I, again. <laughs> when you say white farmers, if I'm a white farmer listening to this in Iowa, I'm thinking, all right, all right, right. John. Jiro, right there, he said, if I'm a white farmer and I'm listening to this, I'm thinking, John. <laughs> and so he blames. <laughs> Uh, what's calling what's me? The, what's John the, Lewis is blaming me for stopping Booker's legislation. That's oh, not true. But some people stop that legislation, right? And my job, who wants to help black farmers who've right. been built off of their land, is to go who've back to work. Who've been built off of their land? Who? Where? Where are the? the where's the like this little land of black farmers? I I don't know where he's talking about. Go to 33 seconds. Oh, I already did. Yeah. I can't even watch anymore, but it's fucking gross. <laughs> what is this? Oh. Free money for trans and non-binary in Palm Springs. <laughs> Man, she used to be so hot too. Demi Lovato. She was a gorgeous young girl. And she got strung out on dope. And now she's whatever. Transitioning or something. Oh, wow. St. Mm -hmm. Anderson. They thankfully Brazil's got their own cartels as well. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting Yeah, Brazil's pretty good. They've got a crew there, the command ant. They're growing they're, they're like supplying the fucking Calabrians now. So they're getting real real powerful. Oh, jeez. <laughs> when you, oh, my God, man. He's doing the good old hand rubbing. Oh, I'm not sharing it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, this is funny. Yo, Aldo, that is good. <laughs> when you say white farmers, rub, rub, rub. Oh, jeez. Dude, that is so creepy. That is so creepy. I mean, when you talk John white Stewart. genocide, hey. I just saw something with him uh, today, some article, and he's all like, black people just, they can't get the American dream. Yeah, well, why don't you look at the NBA or like... <laughs> the music industry. The music industry, the clothing industry, there's all kinds of different things. It's, you know, he's just full of shit. Yeah, I mean, or you could go to school. He's a big fucking liar. Yeah, or you could go to school. I do that as well. There's a lot of <laughs> lawyers. There's a lot of everything. I mean, it's disrespectful for him just to say that, but people let him get away with it. Yeah. 
You're a total fraud. I think that Daily Show outlet is like CIA or something. Like everything that comes out of there is pure subversion. They basically all they do is tell you to fucking hate America. And then the guy they have on there right now is not even American. He's like, I forgot where he's from. I think he might be South African or something. But he's not American. The meme at 33. Wow. Do you see it? Uh, what do you mean, 33? Right on the screen, bro. Right on the screen. Oh, interesting. It's 33, huh? Nah. (laughs) Good point. Good point. Good point. Yeah, you know, John Stewart. Bro, look at the saying. Failed stand-up comic. Look at the saying on the screen. The, like, the the, the, the subtitles, the caption. When you say, quote-unquote, white farmers. And look at fucking John Rubbing his hands together. Yeah, I know. It's the classic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good old classic. Holy shit. Look at those America, teeth. No fake America there. has more black millionaires than the rest of world's black population combined. Whoa. Really? Yeah. Well, those people, they're always talking about, oh, the Asians, they get the special treatment and this and that. But yeah, yeah actually, there's more. Hard as shit. But there's actually more black millionaires in America, in America than there are millionaire Asians. Mm. But they're always like, oh, and they're more than the, almost any other group outside of white people. Like, oh, but they're being held down. It's all bullshit. You got a bunch of people holding themselves down. All this garbage they talk about. I wasn't ex- they have most overall millionaires that is yeah that's that just seems almost impossible but I I get it I get it it could be oh you got boot you need the link yeah. evil John <laughs> the hand rubber Oh, yeah. Devin, uh, Devin Haney and Cambosos. Cambosos was saying that <clears throat> Haney is a good boxer, but he is not elite. You know, I actually liked that he said that because it puts, you know, puts pressure on himself. He can't lose to him now. He's saying he ain't elite. So how can you fucking lose to the guy? I kind of liked him saying that. You know, it's going to make them have to fight harder. I dropped the link. Should jump on two, Aldo, if you can. Why aren't you just smoking a living? Why aren't you just smoking a living? Is that because I don't have to use that shit on me. Use what? I don't. I can't do it. Use what? Oh, oh, oh. What? You went up? Really? True. True. I'll take anything I can get. It's good to hear. Yeah, it's up here. Good. Oh, 
I'm sure they're all going to hell. <laughs> I'm closing out this Johnny boy. Yeah, Cambosa right here. Well, it's even in my title. Uh, Cambosa says Devin Haney is not elite. So if he's not elite, he should be an easy, easy fight. Should be able to wash him. And now uh, he's right though. He is right. I mean, we just did the film study on him. Watch. He ain't elite. There's no fucking doubt about that. What up, Aldo? Yo, son, man. Hey. I'm sounding okay, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the okay, my mic's okay. This chick is an eight-time world champion in Muay Thai. Holy cow! Yeah, isn't the uh, which one is it? Amanda Serrano? Isn't she like a seven uh, division champion? I have no clue. Yeah, because I saw some like Pacquiao hater saying, uh, like, oh, she's gonna be a real like eight division world champion. Because <laughs> you know, uh, Pacquiao Dude. had like two lineals, so yeah. like apparently that's not a greater championship anyway. Like, it, <laughs> I know, it's so such a stupid that. thought process, man. Yeah, no, 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 the WBO is better than lineal. Yeah, it's not a major word. The big four. <laughs> the, the big, big four. four. The IBO is basically the lineal then. Oh, you know? Jesus like, Christ. Fucking goofballs, man. Dude, anything. They'll say anything. <clears throat> and the fact that they would jump to a woman to try and compare it to Manny Pacquiao, just dude. Well, I think a, a Pacquiao fan was saying, uh, what did he say? I think he said, like, that's a record that will like never be broken. Obviously, focusing on men's boxing because no one gives a shit about women's boxing. Yes. But and then the fucking it was. I think it was on Boxing Habits uh, Instagram. You know that dude? Who? Boxing Habit. He used to be on like uh, Instagram. He was like a big Pacquiao hater, big Floyd and Canelo yeah, fanboy. I don't, I don't know. I might, but I don't remember him. Oh. Uh, Maybe it's he's more well known on the BDA Discord. I think I might have talked about it there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like the dude, he was a uh, who gives a fuck about female boxing? Like yeah. that, that was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. Like <laughs> boxing discourse ever. But yeah, man. There's these next two two months. Woo-hoo. Great. Great uh, schedule, man. Can't fucking wait. First time in a long time that it's uh, honestly surpassed MMA. I mean, MMA is oh, pretty good scarce. Point. Yeah, but uh, it's. I'm glad to see it, man. I, I really am. Yeah, me too. I just hope they can keep it up. So oh, that, that's, that's way too much. You got to keep your expectations <laughs> low, man. Yeah. Like at this point, I'm just like, uh, I keep on saying this. I'm a casual, hardcore man. Like, obviously, I can break down fights and all that. I, I understand what's going on in the ring, but when it comes to keeping up with like prospects, I couldn't be bothered, man. I really couldn't. Zelensky looks like he's related to John Stewart. Oh, he, he is. Like the same <laughs> he person. is. I mean, they're uh, they're Liars. both Ashkenazi, <laughs> yeah. so they are in a way related. But I mean, if only we can get the Green New Deal, we can shut down Russia. <laughs> if only we can get these numbers down. Wear your mask. I mean. It is a bit cringe the way he came up. But, I mean, it makes sense because obviously oil is, you know, Russia's uh, it's big export. Yeah, did you, know? you see the video yeah, of you playing, playing the piano with his penis? 
No, but I'm that doesn't sound surprising. I mean, he was on he, like some game show or something, and he's fucking. Um, oh yeah, and he was next to another dude, right? Actually, I, I do. Yeah, I, I couldn't even watch him. Yeah, that sounds like a video I never want to see in my life. Yeah, exactly. Well, you don't, you don't see the. <laughs> it, it was like a comedy show. I don't even want to see the. Yeah, like, yeah, the yeah <laughs> but dude, why is all these comedy fucking a gay? Like, who, since when is a gay funny? You remember I was saying that movie and I brought up that 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 race someone they put it in. Remember we, yeah. I was even that one tour back then. It's always, it's always like piss, poop, a gay, big penises, and like what the fuck? I mean, that's man. that's kind of like Jewish humor to be Yes, honest. you're right. You're right. Well, that's how they made even it. Say that cynically. It's just no. You're right. A simple observation. I mean, and they, and they pushed it on the world on the world they, to make they people bring all that in that crude humor. And think oh, yeah, it's cool. Really and, think do, it's like, it's and they brought it in to make people think it's cool and acceptable. Yeah, and, it's it's yeah. really weird. They're I mean, big, everything you just said stuff. that that describes somebody like uh, Seth Rogen, right? Yeah. That was his his whole every single movie he's been in. Fucking they're, weed, they're big into the illusion. His weird fucking throat voice yeah. that's like always rough. It sounds like he needs to cough. More Me and Andrew talked about this before as well. I hate this cool cool to smoke weed shit as well. They push. <laughs> I fucking hate that shit. It's it's completely normalized now to the point that it's not yeah. even cool anymore. Beer. It's fucking beer. Yeah, it's like a beer. Smokable beer. In New York, I can go around the corner and buy some. I mean, it's like nothing. Again, I used to smoke weed every day, all day, but it's like no need to push it like that, man. No need. Well, perfect but timing. I did. It was a mistake. I shouldn't have been doing it. Yeah. It's fucking garbage, man. Every time I get fucking weed, uh, I'll only smoke it at night, Then, like at 10 p.m., then it becomes 8 p.m., then 5 p.m., then fucking 2 p.m., then I fucking wake up and smoke, and I'm smoking all day, every day, I'm fucking lazy, I just sit around, like, fuck that. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, like, people I know, that, that, that like, they don't want people to, like, it's embarrassing, you know, if it, like... Yeah. Like when we get a lad coming into the gym, we could smell it on him. We're like, "What have you been doing?" They're like, "No, no, no, it's just my neighbor." You know, like, they won't even admit it. <laughs> They're like, "No, no, that was just my neighbor. I went in the house to get some deed. That's why I smell of it." You know, yeah. So I'll make... <laughs> yeah, and it smells really rancid sometimes. Too, yeah, yeah. Like... and you become all introverted. Yeah, I mean, I know my friend. Like, he had to literally quit because he like he got like really bad anxiety. Oh fuck! And, you, like, I do. Oh, yeah. You know, when you hear these fucking people on the media and shit, or like social media, it's like, oh, it can, it can cure cancer. It, can, <laughs> it, it it calms you down. You know, I need it. Like, yeah, it's definitely not an addiction, dude. You just need it every single fucking yeah. day of your life afterwards. <laughs> dude, you I need definitely need it multiple times a day. I, yeah, fuck it, all day. I remember when we would run out, like, oh my god. You dude. should be fainting for it, I bro. Dude, fainting. We'd just go drive around talking to everyone we could. Like, you know, we'd be waiting for something, so we'd have to just go around trying to buy like a fucking ounce or a quarter, a dime, anything. Hey, hey, yeah, who's got sesh, lad? Who's got sesh? Yeah, Ooh, anyone. It was ridiculous. We'd fucking nothing's around. We'd park and just like sit in a car and sit there and like bitch. Like, who going we work with? Oh my god, man. Right point you, about the... turns you into that dude from um. It was fiend <laughs> shit, man. It's a fiend. Yeah, it was a great weird. point about the extrovert. Um, I think, man, you were talking about this. Aunt. Like, I knew lads that had the most outgoing personalities, confidence, and they just become total fucking like boring. Just they couldn't even have a conversation, bro. Absolutely, just nothing to them. No doubt, no fucking doubt, man. Just boring cunts, bro. Turn them into lads, you know. What's any worse is the the women though that smoke, man. They're like, yes. you ever seen the memes? <clears throat> Of like uh, girls that like do cocaine and then girls that smoke and it's like the girls that do cocaine are like all Disney princesses and the girls that smoke are like uh, it's like the ogre from Shrek. <laughs> yeah, know, uh, absolutely. And, 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 and the and the male looking princess, you, you know, in Shrek the Third, where like there's like a, a straight up like tranny princess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like those are chicks who smoke, and it's it's kind of facts, man. Like. I, one of my exes, right? She, she began like smoking like pretty uh, heavily afterwards, and yeah, she like hit the wall. <laughs> and it was because she started smoking. Like, yeah, you're lazy, man. 
I don't know what it is. Like it, it, and especially this shit now, man. Like, nah, nah. I mean, I was getting this shit back like '90s, but um, it, it, it well, it wasn't this. You know, it was it was chronic. It was fire. It was like it looked the same and all that, but they clearly they have upped their game like clearly. yeah the thc yeah like the whenever they, like 20 now 20 to 30 now it's probably like 15 back then you know but um even that shit was too much this shit pff, and the vapes don't even get me started on these vapes man yeah i went down to get i was just getting a 20 sex so fuck around smoke this is the the summer of like when i was on the back um smoking doing like streams and stuff right I go to get like just a little 20 sack and he got a vape pen. He's like, hey, you want to hit the vape pen? I take one fucking drag off it and we're sitting there talking. There's three of us, me and two buddies. We're in like a little circle. Boom, 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 talking, blah, blah, blah. I got all silent. Didn't say a fucking word. Got super paranoid. These are like good friends of mine. I got super paranoid. Just turned around and walked away without saying anything. Just left, just turned around and left, walked away. I called him like a half hour later, like to laugh about it. But it was like, why would I ever want to be like that? Like, I got scared of my own friends, basically. Like, I, I have some in the house. I never smoked weed. Know how to talk? Like, oh, it was terrible. Yeah. It was one the weak, hit. The weaker strains, they're not, they don't really cause that kind of paranoia. Yeah, I bet they don't. Yeah. I, I have one in the house that's like for like relaxation. I yeah. never smoke weed or anything like that. I actually hate it, just like you just described. Yeah. It makes me like, you know, sometimes every once in a while you get creative and other times you feel like complete shit. Like, yes. uh, like yeah. someone's gonna about to murder you or... <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this one's, it's real weak, so it kind of just mellows you out oh, a little bit. Go. Yeah, the weak shit, it's all right. And I don't want to hear like, man, you're just a fucking noob. Like, do you smoke weed every day? For no, it's, it's terrible. terrible. That strong stuff is disgusting. So the stronger it, it turns gets, you into a damn crackhead. Like, yeah, it does. It turns you into a fucking like, crackhead. Like you can't even think, really. You're just paranoid. You're all emotions. Yeah. And then these people doing fucking dabs and shit with all this fucking, like. Oh, yeah. The worst thing in the world is to be in a room full of stoners and you're not getting Ugh. stoned. Ugh. And they're just like. <laughs> yeah. Fucking or, 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 Yeah, that's not every single one of my experiences. Gigantic contraption. <laughs> fucking torches. Fucking like, oh my god! You, think you're, you look like a crackhead. You're like fucking panicking, yeah. and they're just like eating garbage, <laughs> junk food, and you're thinking like, oh. you're like thinking about everything in existence. Like, here's that Pacquiao video. Why he hates Pacquiao? Whenever I smoke that shit, it, it, like so the first like hour or half hour sucks. After that, I'm relaxed. Like I can watch yeah. a movie and just really. Chill. You have to get past that like first thirty minutes of fucking horrendous paranoia, and all of a sudden you're like thinking about everything you ever did in life and how. <laughs> my God. When you got that feeling, bro, you just got to go with it. You can't fight it. Yeah, yeah, you do. It, it makes me work. tired too. Like I have, I'll, I'll yeah. if I have some strong stuff. I'm like passing out like an hour later. It's that's, terrible. That, that's why, like, if, when you're on ecstasy, you get them feelings. You just got to go with it, you know? or any type of trip, I guess. <laughs> You just, you it's just hard to go. go I can like feel like my fucking yeah. It's hard. Out. It's easy said the dumb, but it's your heart's like pounding through your chest. <laughs> it's the only advice. But but worrying about it is only going to make it worse. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's the only the advice. Herbert, the pervert. <laughs> <laughs> what the pervert. <laughs> Herbert the pervert. Herbert the pervert. <laughs> what is that from? Family Guy. Got a kind of serial killer. Yeah, figures right. Never name your kid Herbert. No. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy McVeigh. <laughs> 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 they framed me. <laughs> Wait, how's this motherfucker allowed to use film of Canelo and shit and not get in trouble? Oh, unfortunately, some networks don't allow film to be used for analysis. So, boxing gems videos. <laughs> <laughs> I like it's right in the description. <laughs> that was my question. Right in the fucking button. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably just gonna say Canelo's gonna beat his yeah, ass. Yeah, he's gonna have to talk. Fuck this all, man. Los Zetas, sickos, dude. Yeah, demon shit, man. Shay demon. Well, you know that demon time. That's what they call yeah, demon time. Yeah, they're wrong on Real. that demon. Again, mutilating, chopping up. Oh, dude, I watched one the other day, right? Because I was watching Del Boy's fucking channel. So I had to go watch the actual video. And then I started watching, like, other ones. 
They had this hot chick, dude. Hot chick. Probably like, you know, 23. Fucking hot little fucking Mexican chick, man. Like hot. Like fucking, you know, big titties, fucking flat stomach, nice ass, great skin. Fucking pretty girl. She yep. was, she had like, she ran her own little clique of Jalisco, though. So don't feel like too bad for her because I'm sure she did some nasty shit. Yeah, I'm sure she's a mass murderer herself. Yeah. <laughs> herself yes um however good looking girl anyway they have her cuffed cuffed in the front okay they have her sitting down on her ass like indian style and oh my god right at her elbow over one arm they just start sawing away sawing stabbing hacking you know chopping her one arm off right at the elbow boom get it off now she has one arm handcuffed to her other arm from the elbow. Yeah, dismembered. Yeah. yeah, oh my God. And her little arm is flapping and shit, right? They grab her other arm, hack away at that one, all right? Now she got two little fucking penguin, like, flap things, right? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Then they grab her leg. She's freaking, dude. She's screaming. Freaking. It's saying she ain't like calm like these other guys. She's going nuts. She's probably thinking this is my whole thing. I'm like the beautiful girl. Fly, now, delicate, fly. Yeah, now I got one arm. Got no arms, right? Then they grab her leg, That's go to the stuff. knee, start fucking jabbing the knife in it and like bending it to like break the fucking Damn. ligaments and the bone, separate it, hack off the one leg. She's still alive, dude. Screaming, screaming. Now she got just like right at the knee, down, cut off, and her arms cut off, and they're in a pow right in front of her. They grab the other leg now. She's fighting, dude, fighting hard. She's still alive, man. Yep, and so she hacking, off. Away yep. hacking away at that one. They get it off, man. Shock. They get she's still alive. She's still alive. She passes out. Once they're yeah. both, everything is off. Both legs cut from the knees, both uh, arms cut from the elbows, and she just got these like flippers, and that's like that for like ten seconds, and then she passes out, and they cut her head off too. Fucking crazy, dude! Just nuts. Oh my! Anytime she screams, they fucking smack the shit out of her and shit. Just brutal. Bo. She was probably. I mean, you'd beg, you'd rather just get your head chopped off. Hell up, yeah. Hell just, yeah. I'm just, fighting. Just decapitate yes. me. You're not kidnapping me, man. But see, but it's, it, who knows? But they, you know, the way they get them, they might have just put something in a drink, oh, pass out, yeah, she yeah, wakes up. Absolutely. Or like jumped out on them while she's at a store. Or, or, or they pull a Roscoe to, to a little nephew's head and say, get in the car or we're blowing his brains yeah. off in front of you. Yeah. And you might, you know, this probably happens sometimes where they hold them for ransom. But this yeah. one ain't for ransom. Look at Canelo's no neck having ass, man. Man, I hope at least that she was a, a like that. That's not misinformation. That at least she was in the game. If that's an innocent woman, they did it through. That makes it so much worse. Yeah, I read in the comments they said she ran like a click. Oh. I'm not, game. yeah, it's still disturbing to, to watch. I'm sure, oh, but at least, at really? least she was in the game. She did that to other people, too. So yeah, more than, more than likely. More than likely. All I kept thinking, though, was like, once they, they, she had, like, you know, she's a pretty girl. That's what she lives on, her looks. And then they just start hacking her limbs off. Like, you know, that, that oh my God, dude. Her screams. I'm, oh my God. I'm assuming that they probably uh, ape raid her, you know? I, I wouldn't doubt it. They didn't show that, but they're not going to show that, you know? Right, right. Did you, you know what's beforehand? And then you know what's weird, though? Off. I've heard these. No, I've heard these shots. And then took her out into the field and did that. Uh, but you know what, though? I've still heard these guys like look down on rapists. As crazy as that sounds, you know what I mean? <laughs> because I've heard that they go extra hard on rapists. Like, they still look down on rapists and, and sex offenders, Damn. you know? So Damn. to them, that's still like. <laughs> That's the limit. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah. hey bro, I, I could kill, I could kill, chop a woman up, but I'll never rape him. 
<laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to believe. I'll, to be chop a, I'll chop a bitch out, man, but I, I ain't going to April. I, 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 but, but I'm telling you, like, I, I, if you get, if, in them jails, the sex offenders still get tortured. Like, they're, like the, they're like the most hated. Oh, you're right. Like, you're, right you're right. Even yeah, down there. Torturing too, some right? woman. Even down there. That's the jails. Yeah. yeah, but the prisons are full of the. That's the same mentality. The cartels run the prison. Yeah, so they, that mentality in the prisons is the same on the street. The same people yeah, running. Over here, it's not like that. You torture some woman to death, they're going to murder your ass in jail. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, they can just sit there and, like, chop women up, but don't ape him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she would have rather been aped. <laughs> but, but see, but if she but if she did it, they were, she was in the game, though. So they're yeah. just doing that to the enemy. She, uh, the I mean, comments that she to me, to me, as much twist as this sound, raping an innocent woman to me is worse than what they did to someone who's a serial killer. So absolutely, you know, oh, no, doubt yeah, no doubt about it. Because that shit it. probably did that to fucking twenty dudes. Yeah. You so know. in their heads, they would still think raping raping is a bad thing to do. But we're just cutting up a woman who's done it to our to our people. So they probably feel justified in what I mean, they're doing. Oh, man. Exactly. It might not one. be even – if there was history, like she did some like similar shit, some heinous shit like that, yeah. it honestly wouldn't be necessarily like cruel. Well, it, it, it is cruel, but like unusual punishment because it no, would just be an eye for an eye at that point. Yep. You know? Yeah, it is, and that's what it is. Like she's probably done that to their, to their associates. I would so. imagine, yeah. So there, there was this other one. They captured a fucking crew. They must have gotten to a shootout. Like, like two like army forces must have been banging it out, and because they were all dressed up like military men, like the guy they had, the guys they had kidnapped and cuffed and whatnot. So they must have gotten to like a shootout and won. And these were like their POWs or something, you know, uh, after the battle ended. So they had maybe like twenty five of them, and just one by one, drug them out. And they're all lined up having to watch their brothers go through this, you know. One by one, just grab one, drag him out, hack his fucking ankles off, hack him from the knees, hack him from the, the wrists, hack him from the elbows, then hack his head. Yeah, I'll say that one. Drag, that one brings the bell now. Hack, and they're just watching one by one by one. The video goes through with like six of them. Did um, you watch the whole video? Yeah, I watched all, all the ones. Yeah, I, I think I just I think I've seen this, but just like a two minute snippet of it, you know? Yeah, yeah it was like, brutal, dude. But I that I remember seeing that all them lined up and the hacking of the head and the Yo, they just have to watch us knowing that they're they could be the one grabbed next. And they're gonna be grabbed eventually. Oh man, fucking terrifying. Then the one where they fillet the father and son, I think was Oh, that that's one. one of the worst ones I ever saw. That's one of the worst ones I ever saw. I don't know why, but man, it stuck with me. It stuck with me. I finally saw Ghost Rider. Did you ever see Ghost Rider? No, nah, I think I've heard of it. I don't think I've seen it. What, with Nicolas Cage? No, no, no. Nah, he's talking about a cartel oh, video. Yeah. Oh. Ghost Rider. Dude, they... Fuck. They just keep torching this guy's face. And, um... Ugh. Until it's all... It's just like... Dude, he looks like a skeleton. He looks like Ghost Rider. Oh, that's why he looks like Ghost Rider. I get it now. His it face is on fire to, to do skeleton. All the bone, all the teeth, and it's just like clap, 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 clap. And he's alive for all of it. He's Ooh, screaming, he's screaming. His whole face is like gone, bro. It's down that, to all the bone, and they're torching all the leftover meat. Oh my god. That that other one's disturbing to me as well. That that real notorious one. I can't remember what it's called. You know where that song's playing, and his hands are chopped off. And he oh, tries to yeah, grab his face, yeah, um, and he's got no hand. Yeah, but the way how he tries to grab his face and the hands yep. aren't there, that, that, that yep. stayed with me, you know? Yep, 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 yep. No, the, chick, the, light. the chick does that. She goes to – she grabs her arm and, like, is playing with the knob and shit. Oh! oh, oh. Well, I sent that video to a friend of mine. He's such a silly cunt. You know what he asked me? He goes, did he still live? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he lived, bro. He had his hands chopped off and his face mutilated. I'm surprised they didn't right. let fucking Ghost Rider live. Like, that would have been the real torture. Nah, but he wouldn't. Surely he wouldn't have. With no, that's not, I, I wondered that. Like, if you send him to a hospital, what can happen? You know, nah, nah, he'll, he'll bleed. He would have just drugged him out until he died. Man, there was you one. You burn, burn the face that much. You know. Kill himself. There's one. 
Dude tried to kill himself, man. Ate the barrel of a fucking gun, right? Or stuck it under his chin. Stuck it under his chin, actually. It blew. Dude, oh my God. Hold on. It blew. All of this. Gone. All of it gone. No eyes, no nose. Just, a, dude, a hole like this deep. Right into the fucking center of his head. His head was like in two pieces. And just this gigantic fucking... Hole oh, with a little tongue flapping around. Oh, and they had him on the hospital bed. They had him on the hospital bed. Oh, I think, I'm a, I think my, uh, my uh, father was telling me about this. I think I've seen that one. Oh. Like rotten, rotten.com kind of thing. Google, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gore.com. Like, I haven't seen that stuff in so many years. Uh, like, I don't watch it. He, yeah, they were. They kept telling him it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. But I don't know if he lived or died. But he couldn't. Like, how can he live? I had I had be gone. Dude, the only uh, the only video that... his face to suck out all of the blood that kept fucking. Oh, yeah, if he said I had been passed away, it would have been. Okay, <laughs> he took one of those Canelo uppercuts. <laughs> yeah, counter uh, punches, baby. The only video that stuck with me, like one of those, like those type of videos, right? The gore videos, is uh, it was actually like a, a really fucked up meme, actually, where uh, this dude gets shot in the head, right, and his head like expands oh. and they put right next to it Sid from Ice Age <laughs> and it looks exactly like him really yeah it shows you how fucked up people are nowadays Wait. Yeah, you, know, you shoot someone in their head there's like it explodes like yeah, but not like it's like an internal explosion so fast, it creates a, an air cavity yep. it has to like fucking slam shut and as it slams shut, it then whoosh puffs out yeah. and like explodes. Oh, it it's like pushes cold. out the eyes too if yeah. you don't get them. Yep. Oh, it's nasty, man. Unless you use a real small caliber, like a 22, 25, to give them like a copper headache where it just stays in their brain, ricochets, turns up the fucking meatloaf. Yeah. Just bing, 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 bing. That's 50, that's 50 cent. You know, it gets shot 80 times. It's still alive, man. <laughs> What do you get shot nine times? Nine times. Supposedly. Yeah, supposedly, you know, that's how they all everybody getting shot back then. He ain't been shot nine times, man. He got shot like twice. He got <laughs> yeah. he probably got shot in the face with a twenty two. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think the guy had the bolt the head the gun to his brain and then he heard something and, and it lowered it and hit him in the teeth or something. Isn't that yeah. like a, a but they're way. shooting they're shooting people with twenty twos. Yeah. Which is like yeah. nothing. I mean, yeah. So, it can kill so he, you. He, he probably took a twenty-two to maybe the gut, and then might have took one to, yeah. the, to the mouth. Supposedly, he took one to the face. Supposedly, a face. Yeah, because the, the guy apparently the guy had the bullet to his head, and then something caused him to. Yeah, because he yeah. took one right to the teeth, and it only knocked yeah. out one tooth. Wasn't that? Wasn't that twice? Yeah, best yeah, friend. Awesome. He, done, done he the thought he was the last dragon. He was trying to catch it. Yes, Hama. No, yes, uh, last team. Yeah, he, what, what about in that song he tries to claim like because because of what he did, but he got killed something completely separate. You know, in that many men song. Yes, yes. Well, but it's really that other lad that killed him, eh? That um, yeah. the one that little Kim was married to or whatever. Yep, yep, yep. He's basically just like, yeah, he tried to claim it, but uh, you know, I, then I heard someone else say, no, he just meant like karma. But if you listen to the song, he clearly insinuates that it's because of him. Which ain't true. Yep. Uh, he was like the muscle for the crew that World was trying to take over. But he was one of like two main muscles that like, of the crew World was trying to like eradicate. Yeah, and that and he tries to climb it in that song. Yeah. Fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, and people really, believe it all around the world, you know. Yeah, I know. It's like why do that when everybody around you knows it ain't true? <laughs> like everyone in New York knows it ain't true. You look yeah, like but he idiot. knows the rest of the world will probably believe it. So. Yeah, well, they, yeah, they, they do. do. Like, oh, so many people I knew what it were like. Oh, bro, that's the coldest line. Hear what he said, lad. Hear what he said, like. <laughs> and like when I looked into it, I'm like, what's it fucking true? What he said. G <laughs> <laughs> unit had, had a video game. That's all that matters. <laughs> Had two. See the, the, the YouTube yeah. channel Rich the Fight Historian or something? Yeah, I think I do. I I think, oh, maybe you want to tell me about him, yeah. He does like videos just on like 
you know, little mini documentaries on, you know, fighters, uh, some famous ones, but also some guys, you know, from just that, like forgotten guys, you know, gives them their little shout outs and shit. Oh, too. yeah. I had, I had him recommended pop up the Greg Haugen documentary. Yeah. 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 Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool channel. Pretty cool channel. I like it. For yeah. boxing. It's pretty cool. You know, if you ever need something to watch, you know, in a 20, 30 minute video or something. It's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, they got a video on a mob enforcer as well. From yeah, I just watched. Is he from Canada? Yes. Yeah, yeah. dude, he talks exactly like Arturo Gaddy. Uh, like Gaddy? Oh, yeah, it's right. <laughs> crazy. You would think it is Arturo Gaddy. Yeah, because Gaddy was from Montreal, right? Like. Yep, yep, yep. It clearly, I mean, yeah, dude, it's wild how much they talk. So, like, exactly, like, every, like, not just, like, the slang, like, the tone, and the pitch, everything. It's pretty wild. Check that one out. Yeah, they don't really talk too much about the mob, but they dabble in it. What happened to him? Is he still around, or? Um, no, he got murdered. Oh, you got oh, you got clapped. Yeah, I'm here by the Hell's Angels. Oh, really? Yeah. Get that fly up there. Mm-hmm. Hell, whacking everyone back then. Probably yeah. back in the nineties as well, I assume. Yeah, I believe so, or early two thousands or something. Him and uh, his cousin, who was with I'll him, kill, I'll kill everything that moved up there in the nineties. <laughs> Sure were. I never knew Canada like got so busy. Oh yeah, especially with the bikers. I think that's one of the worst gangland wars in North American history. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Yep, yep. I never, I never knew Canada got down like that. Man, I always thought they were like the nice, quiet, friendly people. But I guess the citizens are. I guess. Yeah. But the gangland gets they get busy. Nah, especially yeah. their bikers. Their yeah. bikers are the worst in the world. Well, were yeah. they were them? The internet taught me that. Like, I thought the only people who got busy were like third world countries and shit. And then you find out it's everywhere, every city, every, every fucking city, city every across, fucking across the the world. You know, has yeah gangsters, man. People, you better shut the fuck up around it. Don't put you in the ground. Yep. That's why when every people, corner of the block. No, my city this, my city that. It's like, bro, you ain't never been to another city. Uh, every fucking city got people you do not fuck with. I mean, I think I'll even use rocket launchers and shit in that. The bikers, yeah, they, they were, they were the car bombs, <laughs> shit, the grenades. I mean, my god. Yeah, fuck. yeah. I think they, <laughs> yeah, I think they did send like a rocket launcher right through like a Hell's Angels, uh, <laughs> yeah, clubhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that lad I showed you that I, I grew up with, the uh, Islander lad? He, he yes. was, uh, yes. he joined the rock machine when they came here. Ah, wait, who? Who? Oh, what? I showed what? you. You have like a channel. Gang? I'll show you. What gang? Hey? What gang? Rock, rock machine. machine. Rock, rock machine, yeah, when they came here. Yeah, yeah. He I was, think that's who sent the rocket launcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so when they joined here, he was like the sergeant arms of the chapter here. Yeah. When they come over. I'll, I'll share the video of him when we were off. I think I've shared it to you before. Yeah, even in even in fucking Scandinavia, they were doing they had a hectic fucking bike war. You know, like you said, everywhere in the world, happening. Everywhere, yeah. If you got a lot of people, if there's a city, oh, well, there's an underworld. Yeah, well, there's always drugs. There's drugs every city, and there's mu- and there's millions of dollars at stake. And people are going to kill for that. You know? Absolutely. Everyone wants a taste. And, you know, dude, it's just like in The Wire when he's like, at least he wore it. Everybody wants to at least be the man for some point in their life. In their town or their city, yeah. Yeah, In their place. Fucking be, make sure, like, everybody will remember them. Even if you do your thing and then, like, step out, at least everyone will remember you. Everyone knows, like, and at least you know. Like, I, I, I did it, you know? I did it. I fucking lived it up. Yeah. It is what it is, man. Some people can do it and some people can't, but everybody wants to. Who's in like the underworld? 
yeah, well, some of the other, they die trying, you know. Yes, yes, sure do. They might never make it, but they, they die trying to, you know. Yeah, they might have been nowhere near it. But they, tried. But they worked for it. <laughs> he earned it. He earned it. He worked, they worked for it. <laughs> Graveyard full of boys who wore the crown. And you know what? Even full out of boys who tried to wear it. You know? Yeah. Fuck yeah. A lot more of those. Well, I've had dreams of one day doing it, just starting out even, you know. Yeah. Dreams of maybe one day having a chance at it, but they didn't even get, you know, they just got... <laughs> yeah, they were right here for six months and got buried. <laughs> uh-huh. Thrown off the bridge <laughs> three months into it. Yeah, I mean, that's the sketchy thing. When you don't, you know, when you're, uh, if you're not brought up and brought into it the right way, You'll end up, you know, some guys will be like, I got what you need. Meet me here. And um, I've heard that, I've heard actually like um, Canada's like quieting down a bit, but I think it's only because they've gotten like, they've probably got all the enemies out of the way. They're just yeah. got so much. It's exactly. like they've got so much money money and power now that they're just, they're just cruising. Yeah. yeah. Like I know a lot of these guys now, um, and I know this is from what I, I at least my experience, uh, it, everyone's doing this these online gambling sites you know fucking every like um out of the people i know like they're they all own pieces of like online gambling sites and shit yeah that's you know? a big thing i heard yeah. yeah yep some of them own like you know um Stock trading sites. I mean, they got so much money. They they get into you know, highly lucrative. You know, like well, bro, I even saw a story Ant, where, in, like, in Canada, we were just talking about the Angels and the Italians together own fucking cas- actual casinos on those native reservations. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I bet. Like they own outright their own casinos. You know, yeah. like I mean, yeah, my neighborhood owned casinos in Cuba, and that was the thing. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. see that's yeah, that's what I mean. They're like they've got they've got like the same no doing what the guys in the fifties were doing, yeah. Yep, yep. You got the opportunity, go for it. Yeah. But they're probably losing them as well to launder their money that they make from you know the other hundred percent. Why they're using them? <laughs> because think about <laughs> it, you know, like a lot of people use casinos to launder money, right? You know, you go yeah. in however many you however much money you want. And you can have other people go like cash in, you know, go up there with like three grand. You go up with three grand, I'll go up with five, you yep. go up with four. And then you just, they all hand you the chips and you go up, put the chips on the table. They write you a check as legal tender, taxable income. Exactly. Yeah. It's just to clarify for anyone listening who might think, oh, well, gangsters always, these are not underground casinos. These are legal casinos. Oh, oh, like MGM, any casino you want. Yeah. So, but. You know, they obviously have guys, that, they have feds at these places, though, keeping an eye on people for doing that. So you have to do it slick. But if you own the casino, <laughs> you know, you go walk up to the fucking window at $500,000 and just be like, cash me out, give me some coins or some chips, I mean, and then boom, cash me out instantly, <laughs> you know, because you know no one watching you. But you know what's clever about it, lad? Because they're on those native reservations, I think they'd have more control because they, they're allowed to do their own little thing with the uh, tribal law yeah, and that. Police you know? ain't allowed to even come there. Yeah. So they probably struck a deal because all them natives would have their own fucking godfathers yeah, and shit. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So they're partners. They're all, yeah. 50 50 or something. Yeah. Or we'll put up the money, but, you know, so we'll, we'll take 60, 40, or whatever. So I love that storyline in Ozark. How how um I've just started that new season, so I'm not up to you, but oh, you know how they're doing that casino and that. I like how they brought that yeah, into it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love how they went in that direction. Yeah, it's a good ass show. There ain't many um there ain't much, dude. With between like. 
all these streaming sites and all that. There ain't much to fucking watch. Man. What are you up to on Gamora? You got you still been watching it or? Um, shit, uh, I don't know what season I'm at, but I just got past the part where um, the lady get the, the 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 main lady like gets the apartment complex um, with the chick who needed her help. Remember the chick needed yeah. her help. She was getting like uh, beat up and uh, because her pops owed all that money. Um, and they're using like that them three apartment buildings that have the courtyard in the center to push their dope. And someone destroys the Virgin Mary, so she goes on buys the new statue. You remember that part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like there. Yeah. You probably do, yeah. yeah. Trying to think of what else was going on at that point. Was uh that was uh Patricia still with the weeks? Was she was Patricia still developing the uh bringing the messages for the the boss and that the father? I can't remember. Oh, okay. Um. Hold on, hold on. Uh, no, okay, no, no, no. He 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 came up out of there, and now he's like, um, ah, shit. Did he come out? Of that? I don't know. I th I think he came out of there. He's putting together his own little family again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, got, I, think I think I know where you're after. Yeah, I haven't watched it for like a month or something. Yeah, kind of a blur at the moment. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So I remember, yeah, I think that's where like, last time I spoke to you. All right, cool. No, I won't say I won't give away nothing. I think I know where. I think last time that's where you're up to. Or exactly where I'm at. So you're probably not far past when she burned that tattoo off her and that. Like when we're talking about that. Yeah, no, I'm not that far past there. Yeah, nah, okay. Yeah, 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 there you go. Nah, nah, I won't say anything. I was oh, going to start real, real. Man, that's yeah, gonna... so tough. I thought you might have been well past it. I was nearly about to ruin it for you. <laughs> <laughs> No. What the fuck? Oh, here we go. Oh, you got like a few more seasons even left. Like, oh, I'm on fucking season two, episode eight. All right, I think there's like I haven't finished. Oh, it myself. okay. I know where I'm at. Fucking homeboy. Um, homeboy. Uh, just got his. He sent his dad. He sent his dad off. Uh. Uh, the, the dad that Patricio was doing the messages for his son, the fucking dummy who got all crazy, um, sent all right. off, and he just came back from like getting shot down, you know. Yeah. And him and uh, him and the main character are like trying to fucking set up an alliance. Oh yeah, you got to watch the end of that season too, lad. Fuck yeah, see, I mean, so I'm, in, I'm in the middle of season two. Yeah, I, pretty, I think. Probably got a couple more episodes of that, like because I think there's like ten each season. Yeah, yeah finish that season two off right, like it's 12. fucking epic. yeah, twelve. Yeah, oh, just twelve. Like... Awesome. How good is Canelo Alvarez? Man, I need to do one of them videos and show you actually how good he is. <laughs> The king of Rhode Island. <laughs> Look at this fucker. Like, he's the king of anything. Who's it, sir? This fucking dirtball. He's the king of Rhode Island. Huh? This, this fucking YouTube channel is so corny. Oh, I've seen this, lad. He's like a, um, he's like a skater who did a bit of time. And, you know, yeah, he's so fucking corny, man. Tries to pretend like he's all fucking some gangster. But meanwhile... He went through a fucking medium security and turned fucking Christian instantly. Remember how we talked about them guys? You know? Yeah. The, yeah. Like if you, yeah, he reminds me. He's probably like a skater BMX type lad. And he, yeah, um, well, you can turn Christian inside, but you can't ride Christian inside. Because you're just admitting you're too fucking pussy to hang. That's all that means. No one ever will ride Christian unless they are terrified. That's it. And he did that, so it's like, yeah, yeah. I've seen him but once or twice before. Yeah, but that guy <laughs> looks like a fucking 
met him. The King of Rhode Island. <laughs> yeah. King of Rhode Island. Ain't that what that's like fucking New England? And the mob is fucking deep. Deep. You ain't the king of nothing, bro. You ain't the king of your block. Please, maybe the king of your trailer park. You fucking sell an eight ball metal. Yeah, Jack, he might be a Latin king. That's why you put that clickbait title in the thing, maybe. Maybe. I mean, maybe. But who cares? You ain't, that ain't the king of shit. Yeah, of course not. But he can get away with doing that clickbait. Oh, he's a Latin king. I just meant it by yeah. that. You know? That's probably what it is, actually. Man, I watched this video right here. This is creepy. I saw this a long time ago. Fucking interview with a sociopath. He's like, um, he was, he's really a psychopath because he was born this way. And um, he's, uh, you know, his parents got him into therapy and shit. And oh my God, he's trying to like, he's really trying to, you know, live a normal life while being a psychopath. But watching it, it's like, man. He the, he's empty. He's completely empty. Like I get it, being able to do some dirt and shit, like and like block it out. But like he he's empty, empty. There's nothing in him. He's a fucking husk. It's the weirdest thing, seeing someone with like out any soul. Just like fucking. It's a, it's a sociopath, narcissist. Yeah, he ain't a sociopath, okay? He's a psychopath. It's a bad title. Psychopath, but... I mean. That's what I mean. Fucking okay, nut. The ones that don't feel any feeling or empathy for other people. Yeah, oh, ever, ever. Like a sociopath, they can, um, you know, like, they do have empathy at times, but you know, and, uh, they do have Actually, empathy. Actually, yeah. For yeah. In, in certain situations, like, they can get... um. So what are the ones that have zero empathy at any point? Like, I don't care. This is out. You know, like if some, you know, it is what it is. What's that? What? So what's what are the ones that have zero empathy at any time? Like, is that a psychopath or a sociopath? It's That's psychopath. a psychopath. Uh, okay. yeah, so I was thinking about this the other day. I was at um, I was at a store, right? And this little kid come in with his parents, like from the hospital yeah. in a pram. And he had like, until he was really sick, they brought him up from the hospital to the, the, the place was near the hospital. He probably got an hour of time. Uh -huh. And, um, they just like, fuck, I couldn't shake the feeling of feeling like so bad for the kid, you know? Yeah. Like, it's so depressing, like being up close to like a sick child like that. So, oh, like, I just felt so bad for him. Yeah. And I was even, but the thought crossed my mind. I was like, these actual like, like scum of the earth maniacs who probably wouldn't even, they wouldn't even comprehend about, nope. like, they wouldn't even feel anything if they nope. saw that kid. He would look like an insect with like a bent leg. Yeah. Like they, they, or they wouldn't even notice he was in the store, you know. Yep, yep. yep. He'd be another person in the line. He's there. He's a bag of chips to him. Like nothing. Yeah. Nothing. See, like, I, like, I, like I was like, I couldn't even, like, I didn't even want to eat my food after. I was like, I felt yeah. that bad, kid, you know. And yeah. um, I was like, there's some people out there that probably wouldn't even have a single feeling for him, you know. Man, for sure. For sure. Socio, you'll know that you can remember the difference because, like, sociopath means, like, society made him that way. You know, so yeah. socio, society, um, you know, it's, again, it's more of, like, a tendency thing. You know, like, tendencies to lose empathy for certain people, certain situations. Psychopaths, born that way, never, ever, yeah feel anything that, that's maybe what we were talking about with the mexico a lot of them guys have become sociopath exactly sure yes 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 because their their surroundings unfortunately created no other you know 100 socios yep, yep yep man i had to see this um i was court ordered to see this counselor chick one time right and and I don't, I don't talk to them people. So I was just like, I always just like asked their questions and shit. <laughs> and um, I always found it like hard to, um, I was, when I first was doing my channel, first started my channel, I still had to go there and I'd just talk to her about boxing. <laughs> I'm not, I don't give my business up. You know, it's like, get the fuck up out of here. I don't know you. If I, if I'm cool with you or know you are comfortable, I could talk about it. But if I don't know you, I'm not telling you my fucking life story and shit. Like, fuck you wouldn't know what you were talking about. No, for no fuck no. It's like fuck out of here. But I asked her like, you ever had to deal with like, um, 
a psychopath, like psycho psychopath. And she goes, um, like memorable ones. And she goes, one that was very, it stuck with her forever, right? And uh, it was a fucking little kid, like a 14 year old, uh, 12 to 14, she was working with him. And um, parents brought him there because he was fucking psychopath, like threatening to um, stab his mom in her sleep and shit, like attempted to kill his mom. Like, dude, it was nuts. Yeah, she had all kinds of stories about him. And I was like, is he from around here? And she's like, yeah, he lives right around here. And I was like, you um, you ever think he might come for you? <laughs> I said, yeah, he knows you know about him. I said, you ever think he'll come for you? Thank you, uh, Julio. Thank you, Julio. God bless you, my man. Appreciate it. Caleb. Hunter Plant is the true king of New York. Wait, he ain't, he ain't from New York, is he? Ain't he from Tennessee? Nah. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just playing funny. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Making a funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, little fucking plant. Fucking bomb. Yeah, whenever we get off here, I gotta show it. Um, don't don't oh, leave. Cool. I'll yeah, show I won't leave. Text messages. <laughs> All right. I'll stay behind offline. Screenshot. I'll fucking yeah, just yeah. Show on the screen here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, whenever we whenever you get offline, I'll stay behind. All right. Yeah, it's fucking funny, dude. I look forward to it. Yeah. I'll tell you why offline as well. Why I brought like brought it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All That's right. Cool. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna laugh the other. I bet. I bet. I think I already know. <laughs> I really do. Uh, Let's see. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. What is that? Fucking eight hours, five in the morning. All right, I'm getting off here, fellas. Time to wrap it Thanks. up. Yeah. All right, so peace. <laughs> All right, fellas. Everybody out there. Shit, hold on. I got to piss real quick. Uh, well, anyway, hold on. I'll get. I'll finish this up. All right, peace, everybody. Um, I don't know when I'll be on next. Um, I'll be on for the Golovkin thing, man. Plant is fighting a Russian army with his bare hands. <laughs> He's slipping in missiles, counter-punching them right back, counter-slapping them. <laughs> he shouldn't even be counter-punches, counter-slaps. All right, guys. Uh, again, yeah. Um, I'll definitely be on for the Golovkin card. That card. Um, what's that? Like two, two mornings from now. And I'll probably do something tomorrow, Friday. Uh, well, yeah, probably. I don't know. Can't be sure, but I probably will. Um, probably earlier, like earlier in the daytime, since uh, um, BDA and them do the open lines thing. It's uh, Friday night, and I want to be up early Saturday morning, so it'll probably be like Friday. But all right, guys, God bless. Guerrero, Julio, John Apollo, Anderson, Jed, but you'll stick around for a moment. All right, guys. God bless. Boom, boom, bam. Peace out, Guerrero. God bless, my man. <clears throat> all right, guys. Have a good one. See you soon. Peace.